Welcome to the Clash of Clans World Warm Up. It is now the playoff stage. I'm Carbon Finn, joined by my fellow amazing co casters, Itsu and Coco. Itsu, let's start off with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Looking forward to see who can triple the fastest today and see what those teams have in store for us. What are our strategies, bases, and everything? Coco, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm super excited to be here. We have an amazing show for you guys today. Make sure to have your popcorn ready because these teams are stacked and these teams have put in a lot of effort to be here today. Carbon, why don't you tell us what these teams had to do to be here today? Indeed. Let's go and learn how these teams are competing where we have the top eight teams in the world here in the playoff stage. Well, it started off in a qualifiers. This format is broken into three different stages with the qualifiers being times two, meaning it happened twice where the top four teams were able to then qualify to the group stage where we then got eight teams and then eight more came in from the world championship. And if we didn't have the consistent teams from last year, then more got invited from the qualifiers where the group stage consisted of playing each team twice, the top two advancing to the playoffs where we now have the top eight competing in a double elimination for an amazing prize pool here at Itsu, where it, these teams really want to be winning first place. That's right. We have the prize pool of overall $30,000, but this is getting spread between the top eight teams then with the first seed getting the $10,000 prize money, which is a lot of money those teams are fighting for in this tournament. They have made it all the way through all of those different stages now to the playoff stage where it all matters. Offense, defense has to be on point to make this work. But which teams are we talking about, Coco? Yeah, there's a lot on the line. And look at the teams that we have here. They're ready to fight. There's Psycho Esports versus Tribe Gaming will be the first match of the day. We've got Early Attacks versus VA Esports, Navi versus Emporium Titans, and VM Legacy versus Synchronic. We have some fan favorites in there. There's lots of action and a lot of Root Riders to be expected. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to kick this off. Indeed. Root Riders, Valkyries, E-Dragons, anything that is going to speed up your attacks. Because at this level, Perfect Wars, that's a given where you know that you're going to be having to come in with 15 Star Wars. It's all coming down to the smallest details. Can you get your attacks to about a minute? Because there are some teams that are close to that mark or even have surpassed it. So how have these teams prepared? Itsu, do you have any insights maybe? Or do you think these teams could hit that 60 second mark? I mean, we have to wait and see if we have some different approaches from the group stage now to the playoff stage. I think one thing yeah. which we have not really seen that much during the group stage was the Fireball, one of the newest equipment now in the game. Maybe because people have not leveled them up, maybe people were not really sure about how much value this equipment really has, because with the big radius, with all of the damage, it obviously yeah. has that maybe less power compared to like an aura or something. But yeah. those top teams, as you said it, they're looking for time. and. Having such a big power of the base, taking so much damage, even hitting defensive clan has, clan has troops like Ice Golems, you can one-shot them, which is a lot of time, which is then getting removed. So it has the potential to speed things up quite a bit, but maybe makes the attack a little bit weaker in some other cases. But that's just a speculation on my part, but <laughs> looking forward to then what the teams can actually bring to the table, Coco. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot to have. To, there's a lot on the board, a lot of toys to play with, and you can see that every time that something new has been added, these pro players, they are finding new ways to get every damage that they can, and every second matters in this tournament. It used to be all, every single building, every percentage matters, which still plays a big role, because at this moment, it does play a big role who plays and who messes up first, unfortunately. It does indeed. And today is day one of the playoffs. We do have day two tomorrow, which will be crowning the champion tomorrow. So it will be this whole weekend here. There's going to be eight matches that's going to be occurring here today in the upper bracket. Plus, we're going to be finding out some lower bracket teams that do get sent home. So a lot is on the line. And like you said, Itsu, with time being a factor, we're going to probably see a lot of ice golems because it does play a role. But if you have a high enough fireball, it could one shot them, take them out, and you don't get slowed down. 
Well, I know we what we definitely won't be seeing is Warden Walks because that is definitely way too slow in this meta for sure. Because if you're taking that whole time, then you're pretty much not going to have a chance to win if it comes down to a tiebreaker scenario. But with the first match that we have, Psycho Esports take it on Tribe Gaming. Tribe, I mean, I don't want to. Well, you know, is can you jinx them? Because it's they, too late. <laughs> it's too late. They have not failed a single attack. Okay, it's probably. I think I just jinxed them, maybe. But they went thirty for thirty in their group stage. Now the question is, can they keep that up? Which means that Psycho is going to have to perfect them back. That's going to be difficult to do. Yeah, I think based on stats, we have the team which is performing the best on offense with Tribe with zero fails so far um, versus a team which has so far been struggling a little bit out of the teams, which in, had not always the 15 scores, which we're taking a look at at some of the other teams, as you highlighted, 15 stars being for most of the teams and most of the matches a given. But there's always small things which can go wrong, especially because I mean, that's an obvious case. If they go always for time, there is some things which in power can be missing. As we have said, for example, the Fireball has the really optimal option of decreasing time quite a bit with all of the damage, but then maybe it makes your attack weaker on some other points as well. So this is always like the trade-off. And with that, there could be always some fails happening. And that's something we have to look out for. But we have to look out for this one as well, because we have the first attacker alive. Kronos is in. We have talked about it, the Root Riders. And they're adding it with Vagaries and the Overgrowth spell in already the first attack. Yeah, for you guys at home who don't know, the Overgrowth spell is the new spell in the game. And it freezes, stuns all of these defense that will be under the power of this spell. So all of these troops will ignore it and go for the other defenses. Now he's got the funding created on the south hand side and on the left with the queen and the siege and everything's powering through already into the heart of this base. Now the overgrowth spell is on the town hall so the root riders will be pathing a little bit into this compartment but also all the way around it. Yes, but the military was hit by this spell as well, which means it is not shooting whatsoever. And something you will take a look at if you're looking at the time is how the troops are spreading inside the base. You want to have a, like a huge wave overtaking the base in total. And that's exactly what is happening right now for Kronos. The heroes at the bottom side, the core has been taken care of with the root riders. The top side is as well taken care of with root riders and a Tessa farm. I think we see at the top side, hopefully the spectator could show us i think there was a troll tesla farm up there to cause some time fails but it did not work out five tesla up there and you talked about it earlier already time is so far always on the side of tribe they are insanely quick with those three stars yeah, they are definitely setting a challenge here for Psycho Esports. They are known for their quick attacks and they're going in already with really, really rapid ones. And it was really nice. As you mentioned, the Eagle Artillery being stunned there means a lot of damage was uh, relieved off of those troops, which were allowed to do some extra damage. If you lose a few, that's an extra few damage that is missing on the attack. Yeah, I would have loved to know what the equipments were for that last attack, um, because this is well another thing, right? Like we know the most common equipment combination for the Barbarian King. I think I have not really seen a single time another combination for the pros is the epic equipment, the gauntlet with the Rage Vial. It just fits so perfectly that the splash damage of the giant gauntlet is getting then buffed up with the Rage Vial effect. So it's just crazy damage, which is obviously really good in a, in a time meta. For the Queen, I think we have mainly seen three different equipments. It's the Invisibility Vial. We have seen the Frozen Arrow as a really popular combination, or the Invisibility Vial with the Heater um, Puppet. Both of those are working great together and having so far a lot of success. But the Warden and the Royal Champion, those are typically the heroes where we see a bit more variety. And it depends as well on how much the pros have invested into those ores to upgrade all of those equipments. Yeah, it is quite pricey to level them up. So when you do see maxed equipment, I know how much effort has gone into getting those maxed. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, they do see quite a variety. Sometimes we have the Rage Gem with the Warden, which means everything's doing some extra damage. It just depends what the player likes to do to the way that they specifically play to get as much damage down as possible, because that's the that's the name of the game in the moment. And they kicked it off with a really, really quick one. We have to wait and see if Psycho can do the same. I think Psycho, they are a little bit slower 
Uh, they have been from the stats that we saw. So let's see if they've upped their game since the group stage. Yeah, and especially now with the pressure which Tribe is putting on them with not only a three-star, but as well a really quick one, we have to see how good they can perform star-wise because their average is like 13 um, stars, a little bit above that. So they're not even, most of the time, hitting those 15 stars. So can they now do it in this important match versus Tribe? They're starting off with the root rise as well. The deployment is not as quick, which feels strange to mention, but I guess you have to at this point with the Root Riders, and they're not pushing in. Um, would be amazing if we could see the equipments on the heroes now. And the first Rage is already in, the Ward ability will be used close to the core, I guess. And then we uh, can figure out if he can make it all the way, but so far the spread of the troops is not looking that good, I think. Yeah, everything's bunched up here in the middle of this base from Rakirez. They were a little bit slowed down by those Clan Castle troops. The Triple Ice Golem is a favorite at the moment because they do freeze all of those troops and hold them in place of the damage. Now he's healing up all of these troops as they approach the Town Hall, raging them up there as well. The Tornado Trap will be slowing them down. A bunch of more traps in there, but there is the Invisibility Spell Tower going off in there, making the Town Hall invisible. So the Town Hall's still standing in the moment. That's right, but there's a couple of root riders which were raged up, taking it down. So just by the looks of it, I guess we have the classic combination on the Barbarian King. So we just do now the work. We Oh, we actually saw the Royal Champion Shield and the Haste Bell. So we know all of the equipment now. Barbarian King, Epic Gauntlet with the Rage Fire. Queen was the Healer Puppet with the Invisibility. Warden had the Eternal Tome and the Healing um, Tom as well, and the Royal Champion with that Seeking Shield and the Haste Vial. This is another thing, right? Like with the Haste Vial and Seeking Shield together, um, there's a lot of damage output as well. This is something where the pros are like doing different combinations because the Royal Champion has the option of choose and pick between a lot of different really, really strong equipments, which all affecting the time. We have the Haste Vial, I think, being the most used overall out of the, all of the equipments, but then the combinations are like different. So we have the Seeking Shield, Dealing a lot of damage quickly. We have the Royal Gem, which has the passive stats with the with the bonus damage, or the Hog Rider Puppet, which can spawn the hogs. Some protection, some bacon, but as well some damage of the hog as well, which is then adding up. Yeah, it does depend on the base. It depends on what's present. You don't want to be using those uh, additional hogs if there's a lot of splash damage where the Royal Champion will be going. But if you can pick a good corner that does have a lot of single point, those hogs can be very valuable. will also help keep the Royal Champion alive longer because that means these defenses are going to be distracted by the hogs and they won't be targeting the Royal Champion. Yeah, especially the merged cannon, like the Ricochet cannon. If that thing is going to attack your Royal Champ and it's then it's going to bounce to your Fox, that's like the biggest nightmare. So have the Hawk Riders in front of that Fox uh, to make sure that you're saving the hit, the hit points of the Fox and the Royal Champ can get turned invisible and invisible and again invisible. Like it is non-stop DPS, which is then provided by that hero, which is super crucial. But so far, both of those, uh, both teams with the first three stars. The time though is on side of Tribe and that's by quite a bit, I think. Yes, yeah, so it was definitely a bit quicker on the Tribe Gaming side. Let's see if Psycho have... I know, I know they have some base builders on the team, so let's see if they brought in some tricks to slow them down. But they were very fierce so far. Very, I think they had the quickest attacks overall, some of the quickest attacks that we've even seen outside of this tournament. So they're definitely one to fear, that's for sure. That's right. On the other side, though, the Tribe defense has not been the greatest, though. But you have to as well say that some of the teams did not play the qualifiers, they just joined with the group stage, which means there were better teams in there now, which is then like, well, messing up the stats a little bit because for the other teams, it's like group stage or qualifier and the group stage together. Um, so we have to see if now Tribe can get a few more defenses in. But for now, I think they're up next attacking and it's Rikiris time and he is still going with a Lalo. And so far, Rikiris is on tunnel 16 still perfect with this account which means he has not failed yet i hope i'm not doing the carbon and like jinxing or anything <laughs> but let's see what he can do with lalo and how quick he is because lalo at this point is not about just the classic three starring and everything it's about multitasking because you need to do quick three stars Yes, you used to see a lot of queen charges with Lalo's now. We don't have time for that. So a good 
alternative is to do those zap quakes. Now we cleared off the enemy queen and the monolith, a few nearby buildings in there as well, so getting some nice value. And he's got the Lalo coming in already with the Warden. We're probably going to use that aura, uh, the Warden Eternal Tome, to get the blimp towards the heart of the base, get that town hall down, whilst all these loons will continue to the nearby compartments. We've got some Yetis with the Rage. We'll secure the town hall in the middle of Ghost's base and the second portion of the Lalo in from the 12 o'clock side. That's right. The loons are coming in. We have, again, common combination. The healer puppet is getting activated. So the healers are spawning. They're switching to the queen or staying on the queen with the loons now engaging towards the last inferno tower. The time is looking good if the last couple of defenses can go down. The queen cannot reach, so she has to go through the wall, which takes some extra time. But minions are everywhere, and this is going to be indeed a three-star with a really good and solid time yet again. Yeah, another quick one on the board. Rikira is getting it done with uh, Zap, Quake, Lalo. These, I think these two strategies are the favorites at the moment. The Zap, Quake, Lalo, and specifically the Root Riders. So... We'll be definitely seeing a lot of those. We'll just have to see where the value can come in. And as you can see, getting that monolith down the enemy queen, that is huge because she can pick off a lot of those loons from the sky. Yeah, especially like from knowing the old meta where you had typically like the hero dive, heroes going down. Then the really good Lalo attackers were already starting. Kinda where the heroes were somewhat alive. At this point, Rikiris is just starting as he's deploying the heroes. And this is then why in the end it's looking kind of closer when in regard of how many loons are left but that's mainly because he has to speed things up because of time otherwise i think he could have probably done a lot of swagging but it's about time and this is where then the pros are not doing swag uh, challenges anymore um and instead really trying to optimize their attacks yeah, I mean, Rikiris is known, he does really nice attacks and he did perform that well. At the moment, it is a lot about multitasking, as you said. He's doing things at the same time, not as you usually would with the hero dive or the queen charge first. So leaving some extra defenses up whilst the heroes are taking them down will do some damage at the same time to those loons. But he's able to manage it correctly to make sure that he does have sufficient loons up towards the end to make sure every single building goes down. Because that's where I think a lot of some of these attacks fall short is because everything's going in at the same time sometimes they take too much damage and then you lose a lot of those troops and then there's not enough to power through yeah and especially there's always a difference between having multiple stages at the same time and what the pros are doing right now they're having those different stages at different places so typically you have for example the hero dive and right next to it the lado part which means it's starting at the same time but it's splitting up the damage of defenses which are located in that area but with what they are doing is they're having like the hero dive on one side of the base and then doing the lalo on the other side which means the same time hero or defense split damage thing is not really the case anymore they're not really taking advantage of that because they have to do it from different sides to really make sure the time is on their side in the end and i think especially with lalo attacks you can really see the true skill of some of those players um with now the next attack in, we have the Root Riders again, if I look correctly, with quite some bakeries. And it's a box base, it's a different style of base, which were quite popular in the beginning versus the Root Riders in Legends until people have figured out how to approach them now instead. And well, let's take a look at that. We have the Healing Tome with the Eternal Tome on the Warden, and you will use that probably really soon. Yeah, we had some zap quakes on the left hand side. Now, Burger Boss is bringing in quite a few super barbarians, so that will help clear out some of the outskirts of the base. I think we got that siege barracks on the north, which is clearing everything out and hopefully get some troops in towards that town hall compartment. Now, everything's quite slow at the moment, powering in towards the heart of the base. Now, I think we had some ice golem CCs maybe freezing them. Now we're finally on that Eagle Artillery, getting that down. It did quite a bit of damage. No more heal spells or the Warden Healing Tome to help get some additional health back to these Root Riders as well. They're getting picked off by some of these defenses on that left-hand side. Yeah, adding the Royal Team at the bottom side because he's convinced that the King can get the tunnel, which is exactly the case. Take a look at that. If you have not unlocked the Gaunter just yet, do it. It is just so, <laughs> so strong. On the Barbarian King, it's insane. Getting the Town Hall through the wall with that Barbarian King, it's going to be the 3-star for him. The Royal Champion with her equipment 
speeding through the base, and it's exactly one minute and I think 29 seconds on this one, getting that three star. In the end, it looked kind of slow, as you said. I think the ice golems especially stalled the attack in the middle part. The siege barracks did not work as planned. I think the troops were skipping the tunnel for quite some time. But hey, the splash of that giant gauntlet equipment, getting the town hall through the walls pretty much, made a huge difference. Yeah, that the, that king ability is one of the best in the game. If you're not using it, as you mentioned, make sure to put that on and level that up because it really can be the difference between getting that town hall down or not. As you said, he sent that world champion in on the south to clear up some more of those defenses because he knew the king could get it done on his own. Yeah, and especially we have to as well talk about the there may be some tips for the ores for some of those equipments because some of the equipments are actually really good when you just level them a little bit. For example, the gauntlet obviously gets stronger with every couple of ores you put actually into it, but you can already use it on a quite low level compared to some of the other equipments, even if you have them high, highly leveled because the base ability already with like increasing in size, taking less damage and just having the splash is already just so strong that you don't really need it on like level 27 or something, which costs insane amount of ore. So already, if you have it on a level five, nine, whatever, like other lower level in general, it's already good to you. So don't worry about that. If you compare to maybe level 15 barbarian puppet or something, it is just so, so strong that you don't even have to invest that many ores into it compared to then some other equipments. We have talked about the fireball where you really have to put the ores in to make it useful to one shot those defenses with one or even two earthquakes. Otherwise, before that, it's not that useful compared to something like the Barbarian King Gauntlet. Yeah, there are a few that are like that. Of course, every level that it, you increase, it does do some extra damage. But yes, the, the Gauntlet is strong very early on. A few others are very well known in there as well. I mean, the Queen, the Frozen Arrow is a favorite at the moment because I think that just slows down as much damage. So not a lot of damage comes in on the Queen. Helps keep some of those Root Riders alive if she's coming in next to them as well. Yeah, I think overall the top three have to be for sure for the Queen with the Healer Puppet as well, which you have seen the latest attack. But now Exorcist is in. Can he keep up the time of his team? That's the major question. We have the Rubens again. We have again the Healing Tome with the Eternal Tome on the Warden to keep those troops alive. The early activation, because remember, the healing effect of the Warden is lasting 25 seconds. That's a lot of time. Otherwise, completely classic combinations of the equipments on the heroes while the overgrowth spell is then on that town hall covering it and making sure there's no damage in return whatsoever and the royal champion with the seeky shield again for more joint damage output yeah everything's pathing around that town hall now because of the overgrowth spell that exorcist used now the eagle artillery is still doing some damage on these root riders but they're still looking good the king still has his ability there as well we have the royal champion with the queen, uh, the queen clearing up on the left hand side the enemy king is still going to try and defend slow down a little bit on the south hand side but this one was again <laughs> a quick one this one just over a minute from Exorcist, another triple on the board for tribe gaming that is crazy how quick they are there was even a lecture dragon in there which was nice for funneling and already dealing some damage. And this is like the thing that pick, trying to pick the most high damage troops, I guess, next to the Root Riders with the splice of the Vagrus, they're really solid. The Root Riders itself, they do crazy amount of damage if you combine them. And then the Electric Dragon, which has a really high DPS as well. Um, trying to take advantage of maybe like outside storages or some nice chain value overall. So really nicely done. And that's another three star for the tribe. And the time is really on their side, I think. Yeah, it, I mean, I don't know the exact stats of the time, but they have been seem to be a little bit in Tribe's favor there on the speed of their attacks. Um, it is nice to see those. You mentioned those Valkyries in the mix there. Valkyries have not been in the meta for quite a while now, though. Yeah, but I feel like some of the troops are just getting highlighted so much or getting, I don't know, buffed so much with the Root Riders close by because their weaknesses of not getting through walls or something is just so, so beneficial to those troops. The same thing for the heroes. I feel like the heroes are playing a big part in the strength of the Root Riders because the heroes, if used correctly and used correctly with the right equipment, can just have so much impact. And 
if those troops or like those heroes more like do not really have to worry about any walls that's a huge game changer and that's exactly what's happening for the pros right now with it, with this troop combination yeah the root rat is just storming the base they don't even mind what level that those walls are they're just taking them down nothing can stop them only those ice golems in those clan castle troops can slow them down but pretty much they don't stop them so it is quite tough at the moment specifically for the base builders so when we do get a defense or when we do get a slower attack at this rate at this level it does show that they put some extra work in to make sure that they can do as much damage as possible and as much uh slowing down as possible as well that's right and well we have hopefully the next attack then happening really soon this time again for psycho esports and they have to stay close i mean not only three star wise that's the obvious one at this point it's more about the time because i feel like so far tribe is literally running them uh running ahead of them with with the time and they have to go to do some really quick attacks to stay close and that's always something in the current meta especially with attacking first i feel like so far in most of the metas it was always like attacking second you had a bit more control because you could always react to whatever the opponent is doing but right now if you're having a team which is just like doing so good on offense like tribe is with like really solid times it can put so much pressure on you and it can force some mistakes as well because you have to do some crazy risks to actually speed up your attacks even more and that's kind of could possibly happen on this one we have again another root rider attack with the i would speculate again classic combination when it comes into equipment that's exactly the case and they're using the healer puppet again which is a little bit slower compared to some other uh, some other options and we have the royal gem and the haste vial on the royal gem Yes, indeed. And now we've got the Root Riders coming in already on the 130 side. They're going in towards this multi-inferno compartment. Now, he does see that the enemy queen is standing there on Kronos' base. Sends a few headhunters in to get her down. Whilst that Warden Eternal Tome is going in as well as the Healing Tome. So any damage that these Root Riders took, they are regaining it before pathing towards some more of these defenses. That's right, the MSB tower going off, the queen taking a lot of damage and going down. She did not get that town hall because of the invisible tower behind the town hall. And now it's all about the root rides and they're in a lot of damage right now. The Roy Gem trying to help, but the town hall is really far on the back and he's relying now on the strength of the equipment of the Barbarian King tanking and dealing the damage. Yeah, he's taking down that monolith. He will be taking quite a bit of damage still from those town hall beams. And because he can't reach over these walls at the moment, he just has to wait and be patient. He has to go through. There is still a scatter shot there on the right hand side doing some damage. He goes to revive. The royal champion is still present with her ability, which will be nice because that will speed her up, do Ooh. as much damage as possible. Does the invisibility <laughs> spell tower go off in time? Unfortunately not. Royal champion gets it done. Cleanup is due. 1 minute 20. This is a little bit on the slower side, though. Oh, the raw champion went down, though. Wait a second. The Warden is running ahead, and this could actually be a defense for a tribe. We have the Valkyries trying their best, but the Warden is going down. There is the Tesla protecting the Scatter, and indeed, we have the first defense. And this is for Kronos. I mean, it's a 98%, but the defense in this meta right now is already crazy enough so 98 percent i think anyone would take that with uh, being quite happy and the wizards are working together as a team yeah you can see that fox there right uh where that town hall was if the royal champion had the fox still alive it could have been what made the difference here those two buildings standing here on Kronos's base might be what sways the war completely over for tribe gaming in this one the fox is very valuable making that royal champion invisible she wouldn't have taken damage if she was invisible at the time she reached that scatter shot yep <laughs> they're working exactly at the same time with the wizard <laughs> shots but it's not going to be enough i mean they can get through the wall at the same time but it's not going to be get uh to be the three star it is the defense instead so tribe now has the lead on stars and on time and this is exactly what i was talking about with putting up the pressure on the other team kind of forcing them to do those mistakes because they have to do quicker attacks and quicker attacks or they just have to stay close to the first attacking team and well 
that was uh, something to see here. They were not able to somehow manage the pressure, and now it's all up to try. Yeah, definitely. As you can see in the stats, nine stars to eight. Percentage is very close because it was just those two buildings. Heartbreaking to see it just be two buildings standing there. But it is two very important ones. But even if they did manage to clutch it up at the very end there, it would have been a really slow attack in Tribe. They've been flying through these bases at the moment. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And this is always something which can surprise anyone because... The pros make things look easy. Yes, I know, Mass Root Rider seems to be like not maybe the hardest attack to execute, but if you're progressing through Legends, for example, there is a clear difference right now between something like close to 6,000 trophies, someone who's doing this attack, and someone at like 5,500 trophies. It's insane how big the difference can be. And now we see Tribe yet again with their attack and their equipment combination, the classic one. The overgrowth spell yet again. They really like to do this combination for the town and the back end. I think he missed the monolith. That's why he's trying to freeze it now. But, well, now it's all about the Root Riders and their pathing with the Roy Champion approaching from the left side. Yeah, hey. Yo-Yo's Root Riders, they made it into that Town Hall compartment really, really quickly. The good thing is that he did also have, as you mentioned, that Monolith is still standing on the left. He had the Skeleton spell to try and distract. Now, the Enemy King is also present on the left-hand side, which might be a bit problematic. Royal Champion does have some Headhunters for support, and with a Rage spell, we'll be trying to get as much down as possible. The Royal Champion ability goes to the Seeking Shield, the Haste Vial going off there as well, the final frozen spell here coming in to freeze the scatter shot and the town hall and yo-yo gets it done pretty much all of his root riders still up there they did lose a bit of health but yo-yo gets another triple on the board so even if psycho triple it up on the next one they will still have the advantage that's right at this point it feels really not the nicest position to be in uh, for psycho esports because uh well there's behind on so many things stars as we have mentioned the time as well obviously the percentage because of stars but well all they can do is just hope for a miracle and maybe a fail from tribe the first fail in this tournament i think we have tried now everything possible in our power uh for for jinxes and stuff uh to give them the chance of a comeback but nothing more we can do at this point yeah, it's tough. I mean, they've showed that they can be very consistent in getting those triples down and getting them down quickly. So I don't know if we're going to see one. If your jinx is strong enough, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if we have some people here that jinx, then they need to show themselves if they want Psycho to win at the moment because Trap, they've just been so strong. They're very consistent and they're probably one of the best teams out there. And they just have a little bit of an edge. You can see that even though that all these pro players are doing really quick attacks, they just have the edge on all of them. Their attacks are just even faster than a lot of these other people out there. Yeah, that's for sure. And especially if you look at the attack of Yo-Yo, it kind of looks like he put just everything in one corner. And somehow, compared to then the other attacks, which we just have seen before, where the attack failed, it kind of looks the same. And then you just have to take a look at the spell usage and placement, which uh, is quite important on this one. And sounds obvious, or it might sound obvious, but this is going to be then, in the end, be the difference maker between a fast attack the three-star attack in general, or just even a two or one-star. Yeah, it's all about supporting the Root Riders at the end of the day. I mean, when I was watching that beginning of the attack, I don't know how, but his Root Riders, they just took them a few seconds and they were already in the middle of the base. So it's all about getting the push that they need to go to as many defenses as possible and the overgrowth spell is pretty nice to stop that damage as well to make sure that they can clear up all of the defenses which sometimes can be scary to leave that town hall up for later on in the attack because back in the day or like even last season when we watched uh everybody play in like the last championship you wouldn't want to leave the town hall for the last building yeah i feel like maybe because the town hall explosion more like the town of poison is one of the biggest enemies because the root riders are stacking up so much so that could be one of the reasons but hey let's take a look at this next one which looks um this base looks really interesting with a double invis tower around the town hall okay okay what is going on here but we have the is it a hero die for the chat no okay there goes the root riders but they're already 15 seconds late which uh well it could be a difference maker 
Yeah, that could be the difference on this one. But Anthony had that log launch. As you mentioned, those double invisibility towers could be problematic. But the way to counter that is by using these logs that are thrown forward, which will activate them. And as you can see, the root riders, they don't have a problem with them, making them pretty much void at this moment. The Warden Eternal Tome and uh, will help protect them further on to the attack, help get some additional health back. We have a little bit of a split, or a few of them going for the Eagle Artillery, but the main portion is going for that scatter shot on the right-hand side. That's right. The healing effect is still ongoing from the Warden, and now it's all about the back end. There's three key defenses, which all target single, um, or like can really do a lot of damage to single troops with them all with the single inferno towers but there's a skeleton spell and that's like the weird thing right like such strong defenses and they just get countered by the small little skeleton spell and they cannot really do that much anymore skeleton spell though running out and this now is the question if this really weird looking base can defend yeah, the good thing is he has the Royal Champion in from that north-hand side. One final freeze, which he does use on the single Inferno since that Monolith is about to go down. Diggy is also still up, which will be able to stun some of those defenses. Royal Champion, she's on cleanup around the outside with the Fox. Queen still has her ability. Now we are already approaching that one-minute mark. I think it should be enough. The enemy Queen is still down here. Now we've got the Queen ability going off, giving some additional healers, and they power through these last few defenses and the enemy Queen pretty nicely. It is a slower attack, but at the moment, Psycho Esports, there's still those two buildings and that one star behind. So getting a triple on the board is what matters the most, and they have to hope for a defense. That's right. They have to hope for a defense, even though I feel like the attacks so far of Tribe have not really looked like they know what a defense or a non-three star is. But, well, they just have to hope for it. Psycho has to hope for this non three star of Tribe. But I guess they will just keep going with the Root Rider approach and keep combining with the Overgrowth spell, which has been so successful. I think creating this pathing, avoiding the Town Explosion and the Poison early and having it on the back end, for them so far, has been a really good success story. Yeah, it's been really good for them at the moment. And as we mentioned, I mean, we talked about the hero abilities already. I want to briefly mention some of the pets for some people who don't know. The Fox is the newest pet in the game, which is very, very strong for the Royal Champion because it keeps her invisible, makes her invisible over and over again. Now, the Diggy is also a favorite, but she, wore, she we have transitioned from the Diggy to the Fox at the moment, but the Diggy is always strong to have in your army comp, especially with all those single point defenses at the moment. Yeah, that's right. You can combine it now with different heroes, for example, in the main push of the Root Riders. So combine it, for example, with the Warden, it's always a, a nice, grop, uh, nice option to do so. Then you have some other pets still for the other heroes, like the Phoenix is a really solid combination for the Baron King, Unicorn, and Queen, I think has been a dream combination since the Unicorn has been released. Um, so I, I'm not sure if this is going to ever change. I feel like people were expecting, including myself, that this could possibly switch with the, um, like new defenses, the splash damage and everything, but it has not really changed. So it's still staying with that combination. And we have the Root Rider again versus this type of base versus the, um, ring base with the quarter town hall and the vulnerability has been used early on again. Yeah, the deployment on this one reminds me a lot of like Electro Dragons with the early Warden ability and then also the double Rage coming in, making sure that all of these Root Riders are getting as much damage down on the board as possible. We've got cleanup on the north and on the right, which helps with funneling a little bit to make sure that all these Root Riders go in to clear out these defenses. Now, again, they're bypassing the Town Hall. There is a Tornado Trap holding them in place. The uh, spell will alleviate all of these defenses soon and they shall return. Hopefully in time, those Root Riders can then return back and get that Town Hall down. But he's missing the Town Hall with the freeze, but he has the Barbarian King ability still left, which he's going to activate to take down the core. And it's going to be indeed the next three star with the Royal Champion ability still there as well. Using it to activate the haste vial to have even more attack speed. The Queen with her heater puppet as well in there. And indeed it's going to be another three star yet again below the 1 minute and 30 second mark. Which is crazy. Tribe is just, they just keep getting those three stars below the 1 minute 30 second mark. And it seems like nothing is holding them back. 
Yeah, they just keep bringing it in triple after triple, but they're just so fast and they make it look so easy. Honestly, at this point, we need to remove a hero from them or something. They're just too good at the moment and they just keep showing us in every single attack that they do. That's right. Getting the support of the Root Riders for, for their heroes and just pushing through, especially as well with the Overgrowth spell. I feel like we have highlighted it already a lot, but I feel like this is such a key thing. So if you're playing Root Riders yourself, this is for sure something you might look uh, want to look into if you have leveled it up. Or I think even already on level 1, it should be kind of solid of just taking away the damage off the core. I think especially with those core um, town of bases, it can be really helpful. And if you're taking like other style of bases, you can really nicely like move around of how the root rides are pathing with turning something invisible, obviously freezing it up, like everything what the overgrowth spell does and really having more control in your attacks. And otherwise an attack which seems kind of uncontrollable, I guess, with how many root rides are going everywhere and doing whatever they want. So that's for sure a really good spell to pick up. Yeah, definitely. And you can see how all these players are also learning from each other. I'm not sure who did it first, but we didn't initially have the Overgrowth spell in combination with uh, the Root Riders. And some people were saying, oh, I don't think we'll be seeing it that much. It's very specific, but at the moment, it is a very popular spell to combine with those Root Riders, depending on what base that they're attacking. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I think for other strategies, I'm not sure how much use, uh, use cases it would have for those. Um, like comparing it, you already said it with the, like Elect Dragons. I think we don't see it really often with that strategy, for example. Uh, Queen Charges, I mean, those attack strategies still exist. They just don't get played so much anymore in the pro scene. I think for those, it can be used, but maybe not as useful. It's, it's I guess time will tell. It's like a, one of those type of spells, which is... People have to figure it out. As you said, like in the beginning, not that many people have used it. And now people have slowly figured out how to use it with the Root Riders. And I guess the same thing has to happen with other strategies. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Supercell keep giving us new toys and these pro players are still finding out really nice ways to combine them. And as you can see, that it, there's, there's just one way of just combining them, but also they seeing how that they can take the advantage. And right now with these quick attacks, they just that few second difference by using some spells here and there can be the game changer. So... We'll see what happens in the next attack coming in. Ghost is up. More Root Riders. No Valkyries on this one, but we're heavy on the uh, Super Barbarians. And a Skeleton Donut, which is nice to watch. Really nice, but it's low. You have to, you have to think about that as well. We have the Skeletons taking out the Client Castle. Everything going to plan. The March defense, the Ricochet Cannon going down as well. And now we have this push starting going in with the root riders all from the top side trying to push them in from over there the queen is on her way on the far right side and we have this time the royal gem combination of the haze vial and the hog rider puppet yeah, there's a lot of headhunters in here as well to help with the enemy heroes we've got the queen already going to ability here now those additional healers will help her continue towards that right hand side ghost has already opened up those walls so she can continue but she's taking so much damage and goes down pretty early on that right hand side he really wanted her to go in and get that scatter shot down yes the scatter shot is going down but the same is happening to his queen she went down as well even with the support of those healers town hall luckily went down early on not luckily but like went down early on which means well those root riders are gone. I mean, they are tanky. They are doing pretty much everything you could ask for in the game. But they were not tanky enough somehow for this attack. Ah, oh, this is going to be problematic here. Now, he does still have that king ability going off on the left-hand side. World Champion still has uh, her ability as well as she's going through the defenses on the right-hand side. The double... Uh, skeleton spell to try and distract the defenses. The headhunters as well are actually getting some damage on. The king is not going to be enough to get it down. World Champion uses her ability, gains some additional hogs. The bomb tower is going to be devastating here. The world champion will go down alongside with all of those hogs trying to support her. It's all about cleanup. As many buildings, as much as he possibly can get. But unfortunately, with the advantage that Tribe Gaming already have, they're already at 15 stars. This one falling short again. Unfortunately, they were not even able to catch up if this was going to be a triple. But nice try from Ghost. 
That's right. Nice try with the skeleton donut, but not working out in the end. Not having enough power to get through this course somehow with the Root Riders. Tribe winning this one with a 15 star and an incredible, incredible time. I think we'll take a look at the uh, time set as well in just a second uh, and, and see what their final average time was actually in this match. I mean, Tribe Gaming, they've been dominating so far in the tournament. They went 30 out of 30, and they're just continuing their streak here now as well. They're doing so good, and I think they're definitely one to fear in the upper bracket. They will stand strong now as they continue through. I mean, 15 stars to 13. They defended twice here. Now, at the end, it didn't really matter with if that played a role or not in Ghost's choice and what he was going to play. I'm not sure, um, but... Yeah, it was nice to see a bit of variety at the very end. That's for sure. This getting donut, which was so popular on Tunnel 15 back then. Um, so seeing that again was was quite nice, even though the root riders it didn't really help them apparently. But let's take a look at the stats now. We have uh, quite a couple of fast attack, but the fastest one was Spiz on this one with one minute and twenty eight seconds, followed by Burger Boss with one minute twenty nine seconds which were the quickest times, and uh, well, then, unfortunately, the two fails. Now, let's take a look at <laughs> tribe stats. Now, look how quick all of these are. 1 minute 15, 1 minute 19, 10, 20, and 15. They know how to get it done and how to get it done fast as well. They're doing so good, and triple after triple on the board. Nibrox, you really have to step it up. 1 minute 20, it's, I mean, come on, you, you can do quicker than that. Okay, I'm obviously kidding, but just incredible <laughs> sets of Tribe. Um, their slowest member was faster than the fastest member of Team Cycle. That was impressive. But Carbon, how did, uh, like, what do you think about this match? Oh my, what a match for Tribe and how fast they are. That's really just what the meta is. It's all about speed. And well, we saw they got it continuing their perfect wars. They are now perfect through the group stage, including now into the playoffs. They have yet to fail. And it doesn't even look like they're coming close to failing because their attacks are not just a matter of getting the triples, but it's really under a minute and 30 seconds for each one of the attacks and faster so their opponents know that they're gonna have to be bringing this and if they're paying any attention they're seeing the overgrowth spell being used in the town hall i'm sure they're like okay this is bringing very fast times we're gonna have to bring it as well so many more attacks are probably going to be similar to that i don't know how you can really start to get sub average 60 seconds that's just going to be insane it's I mean, we have to wait for that one. Um, I, have, I have heard rumors that some of the teams had some really quick attacks in their testing. So, well, maybe we have some teams beating the, uh, the time of Tribe, but so far they are for sure the, the champions of time um, over yeah. the group stage and now the first match of this tournament. But I mean, we have still so many more matches uh, to come later today with the, well, all of the teams trying to stay in the upper bracket as that's what just Tribe did. Yeah, it's double elimination, so that means that one loss is not going to send you home, but two might be just it. So if your favorite team is playing and they do happen to lose, they do still have that safety net of the lower bracket. Maybe we'll be able to have a quick look and see what teams will be up next. Indeed, yeah, these teams are going to be fighting for their chance at a prize. First place of 10 thousand dollars which will be given away tomorrow so we have eight matches total today seven more now since we just concluded match number one and then the rest of them will be going on tomorrow so we'll have everything this weekend for the world's warm-up this is there's no golden ticket there's nothing on the line that will be reflecting for the later end of the year this is all about just the prize money that is what they're going for and it's all about who can be tripling the fastest when it comes down to these pro teams because they are all so good. Yeah, that's for sure. And as well, putting like tripling under the pressure because we have already said it, a lot of fails are coming then from like trying to get the fastest or like trying to somehow get the fastest attacks overall. We have seen earlier mm -hmm. from Rikiris, for example, that the attack, attack looked close with like only a couple of loons left, but that was mainly because he was trying to like do the multitasking craziness, which he is typically known for with those Lado attacks. And the 
magical thing then is that they always still three star and this then is really showing their true skill Yes, I mean, some do get close. I think, as we mentioned before, the favorites at the moment are definitely Root Riders. Zap Lolas are also fun. We did see that Skelly Donut that you mentioned from Ghost, which is a little bit slower, which you don't tend to see as much at the moment. But as you said, it could just be because it was a final attack. He knew even if he got the triple down, he won't be able to do it. So maybe went with one of his favorites since he does do quite a lot of Skelly Donuts. Yeah, we saw the Skelly Donut, which you mentioned it to during the attack, that it could be pretty slow. And I was surprised to be thinking like, wait, why aren't you having the Root Riders and everything already down? And then Skelly Donut as that is happening, because time will be playing a factor in these attacks. So we're seeing sometimes that their pros are coming in with the heroes down at first and then even lightning after the fact. But here we go with early attacks taking on VA Esports. And we've got Max, who has been a very fast attacker. He's also bringing in an overgrowth here, probably to be overgrowthing the town hall to get as fast as possible. Yes, trying to get this attack as quickly as possible within again the early warning ability to push the troops inside and try to take advantage of the overall 25 seconds healing of that healing tome ability. Yeah, as that town hall is overgrowth, they're going to completely walk right around it, continuing his way through with six more super barbs to deploy on the backside of this base with that king ability. And we always know you cannot be taking of anything other than the giant gauntlet. So if you haven't unlocked it, make sure to go get it in the shop. It'll be 1,500 gems. Totally worth it. It will be making a huge difference in your attacks. As now here comes some more troops into the core. Still, ha there's the ability going off. As now he just has a finish on that town hall. Yeah, but he's just knowing that his root rides are strong enough and have enough health left of making sure that the last building of the Ooh. town hall is still going down and this was as well a quite nice quick attack from max versus achilles from early attacks and early attacks was actually one of the teams with the best defensive rate um over the stages of the tournament so far mm -hmm. so the question is then as well if they could pick one or even maybe two or already one defense would be quite impressive at this stage but see if they can follow the steps of tribe of defending actually versus the root riders well, Max just came in with a 1 minute, 15 second attack. And that's where Tribe was with, with each one of their attacks. The question is, can the rest of the players here for VA Esports continue with the very quick attacks? It All it takes is one thing to mess it up. A Troll Tesla in the corner can cost you seconds and cost you a match here. And early attacks, they have also been putting up perfect force. VA Esports as well. So this one... I think we'll be definitely coming down to a 15-15 and whoever is quicker will be winning this one here. Is it the Jinx? Is it the Jinx? No, we, we it's, will see, it's we will possible. See. <laughs> I it's, can't. it's possible no. for sure. I mean, I, I tried it as well during the, um, during the group stage saying like, okay, guys, everything is coming down to time. And then yeah. I have not able like I wasn't able to stream a single 15-15 match. I, I don't know what was going on there, but hey, mm -hmm. Let's hope that I can finally get the 15-15 score here with this match going on right now and then see who can put up the fastest time and get that victory then in the end to stay in the upper bracket. Indeed, yeah, because these teams know that a Troll Tesla, a small little trap, who knows, can help cause the heroes to just walk outside the wrong way. We know they'll come back and end up finishing it off and get it, but it'll just take some more time. And Max is definitely one of the quicker attackers on this team, so the rest of the players are going to have to definitely bring it. But I'm definitely interested to see if... Like you mentioned before, will one of these players be bringing a fireball maybe, you know, to pop that warning ability to hit something, get some more value or even a giant arrow of the queen to help with some speed up as an arrow flies across the base. As now Achilles is coming in here and we are moving in with the root riders as we do not have an overgrowth that we've been seeing recently now or usually this town hall, but he's just continuing his way through the core to then burn this warden ability to protect everything. Yeah, we actually have a couple of heaters on that queen, so it's kind of like a somewhat queen walk um, combined with the root riders while they take down the core of the base. We have the queen taking care of the outside buildings. Royal Gym at the top side, 
um, to take down the Town Hall eventually. But those right shot defense behind the Town Hall, they are hitting hard and he's not hitting that, uh, well, that Ricochet Cannon with the Freeze. Yeah. No! Oh, that one mistake could cause... Okay, the Jinx. Wait, hold, hold, hold. <laughs> There's no way. Well, oh, man, you know, he, that the outside just needed to be frozen there, you know? I just wanted to make the attack a little bit more difficult, right? As he continues to move through this base, the Lava Hound will distract this queen. The Royal Champion still has her ability. Pops it, and here comes the Hog Riders on the outside. And he's going to move through with this queen ability intact. But the question is... A minute 15, that's the mark that Max set in his previous attack. And this mark has been already surpassed, so we will have the lead on time for now for the A Esports. And Max is defending and attacking already early on. Nice job for him. We have to take a look then now on the other side and see who is getting those quicker attacks in. Um, but so far, yeah. we have the small lead on time yep. uh, for a VA Esports. Yeah, the difference is 20 seconds. That is this time differential. We have VA Esports with a minute 15, while we have early attacks with a minute 35. So that 20 seconds is total time, and we'll be keeping you updated, up to date with the time here throughout this match. If they continue to bring three stars, and if that is ends up being the tiebreaker, because we know that is if it is a completely perfect war, but one fail and time pretty much is thrown out the window. You don't have to worry about that. But not only is this Root Rider Valkyrie attack so strong in terms of getting like uh, fast triples, it's also just so strong that they really don't need to worry about bringing any other attack to triple because this one is just will almost triple with them just sending all the troops in and it'll just wrap around. You don't have to worry about the town hall anymore. Yeah, and I mean... At this point, it's more about like how you deploy the troops when it comes down to creating this wave we have talked about earlier, which means trying to like take down the entire base over the entire distance uh, of the mm -hmm. entire, well, base length kind of, um, to make sure that the time is as optimal as possible because then yeah. troops do not have to backtrack, as you said, for like draw tests and stuff like that. They just can move forward as a huge wave overrolling the base. And that's then mm -hmm. where you can get th get those insanely quick times as what we have yeah. seen from Tribe so far. What was the quickest time you've ever seen? Uh, because I know we've saw, heard, what was it? Exorcist was under yeah. 60 seconds recently. Was there anyone faster that uh, I don't you've seen? I think that was the quickest attack I've heard of. It was like 59, okay. 58 seconds, right? Like wow. something like those in th that area. So it was barely below the one minute mark, which is crazy to yeah. think about. Like not even one minute. Um, but I think it was so far, I guess, uh, the, the record, maybe, maybe chat can tell us, but, uh, for now we have the next attack in with the root rider combination and the overgrowth spell again, making sure that they can just push into the core. Don't worry about the town hall, just pass it and then take it down on the last kind of like building. Yeah. As the King still has his ability. Queen going through this Tassa farm that pops up right in front of her with Valkyries coming out. And remember, with that new level of the Siege Barracks, you do get an extra P.E.K.K.A. So two P.E.K.K.A.s come out. And if you weren't re uh, aware, the P.E.K.K.A. that comes out of your Siege Barracks is the current P.E.K.K.A. that you have unlocked. So if you unlock towards the max P.E.K.K.A., that will be the level that comes out of the Siege Barracks. So upgrading your P.E.K.K.A. is pretty important for your attacks if you ever do have a Siege Barracks. We still have the King ability now just going off, wrapping his way back to the Town Hall. The Queen does not have her ability anymore. And the Town Hall is still up here for Dobbs. And the Monolith is right next to it. Um, Uh-oh. Wait a second. Um, wait a second. No. Um, he has the Phoenix on there. Is it a one star, actually? I mean, I told you, I somehow I cannot stream 15-15 matches. Like, trust me, when I'm not, not casting the not next match, when I'm not casting the next match, you will see a 15-15. Like, it's impossible for me to cast those 15-15 matches. I have tried it on my own during the group stage. It's not work. It's not happening. It's not happening. And this is yet again another defense. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not here. but I'm not here. It's <laughs> my fault. Is that call? Did a great I job. Say, I didn't say anything. What is there's no proof, right? Uh, no one clipped it. No one no one uh recorded that, right? I said no such thing. Uh what I don't even know what jinxing means. I 
uh, it's weird it's weird but uh it, it seems like uh yeah a one star now in this meta really uh, you you know that you don't really stand a chance after that because the teams at that point don't have to worry about time they don't even have to worry about at least tripling every single one of their attacks at the moment because even if they just get a two star one of their attacks they are perfectly fine and perfectly okay to advance even though just the one star is crazy yeah you don't expect that here but you know what happens it's it's not my fault that's all i have to say i didn't do nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, chat, do your thing, clip it and ship it, and do everything <laughs> you can. But I mean, you said it; it's for sure um, mm. not the optimal thing to do in the current meta. But as well, we yeah. have seen that you apparently cannot just copy the style of attacking of tribe and just replicate yeah. it on every base if you don't have the training in with this approach, because it is risky. You are kind of relying on your root riders having enough health pushing through the base because they're like pushing past the town hall and then coming back having the town hall as the last building which yeah. is really time efficient but it can result in fails like we have just seen because the town hall is literally the last building you're trying to avoid the town hall explosion avoiding the town hall poison to use that early warn ability mm -hmm. but town on the back end can be risky and this is what we have just <clears throat> seen and then on the other side now now I, I'm just hoping for some non root rider attacks because early attacks they can just play it safe. So if yeah. we see like I don't know someone playing it safe with like Lalo or something, uh, would mm -hmm. be highly appreciated to to see because mm -hmm. well time is not the factor anymore. And okay, it's it's something different. Okay, I'm happy yes. with this one. It's super dragons now, but typically they are really quick as well. Yeah, as the queen is going to work through this defensive king toward the bottom side. Eagle is exposed down here, able to reach it pretty quickly. And you don't have to worry about time now at this point. It's not going to play a factor as Super Dragons are down with the Grand Warden to move through the queen. And this is typically where we'll see a blimp to fly across the base to help make its way to the town hall. But notice he has a clone, so the blimp is not going to land on the town hall, but before it, so he can clone up the super minions to help get a lot of value. That's right, the blimp is flying. No trap so far. It seems like to be no red mine, so this blimp is getting all the value he needs. He's turning the monolith invisible, trying to now not... Yep, not going to hit it. This time the monolith is going down. The Rocket Dune is coming off the Clan Castle, no other troops should be there left anymore. All of the Super Dragons, though, went to the far left side. So the heroes now have to worry and fight versus this bottom part of the base with the Rage Tower. Yeah, as that King ability has gone off, freezing to help protect this Royal Champion, moving her way through with some Super Dragons to the top side just to continue their path as the Royal Champion does pop her ability, has one Balloon left, potentially drop to the air defense up top to protect some of the super dragons as the queen is getting hit by this ground expo so it is doing quite a bit of damage and the queen does go down and we have this three super dragons still trying to path their way through these final buildings Ooh, the final buildings with an air defense on the back end we have uh, no phoenix on that warden we have two super dragons and they have to hope that there is no more black mines otherwise this could be problematic he can tank the defense with the minions but otherwise i don't know he does do exactly that with the minions onto this air defense the warden snipes it one shot and takes that down for a three star with these super dragons and early attacks, you know, all they have to move through is three stars, and even they could afford a two star, and they will be taking this match because we did see, unfortunately, a one star that did come in from VA Esports. And in this meta, a one star really can spell the end just like that. I mean, VA Esports is hoping for something to go their way. You never know. It's technically never over until the final attack is completed. And we have seen two defenses from Tribe uh, earlier already. So mm -hmm. anything can happen. Anything can happen. It now depends on how um, early attacks maybe adapts with their with their strategies. Because, I mean, we have seen uh, fails, but most of the time people are saying that they're failed because of, well, they had to go for the quickest mm -hmm. attack possible and not for the safest. So now early attacks have to showcase that they can go for those safe three stars. 
and uh, make sure that they just completely ignore the fact of time and just concentrate on this triple in the end. On the other yeah. side, well, we need to make sure that the eSports, they're just ignoring what just happened, keep going, hoping for a miracle, and again, trying to end on a high, some high star for them from yeah. this current position, because remember, it's a double elimination, so they have to play at least once more, and for that, you don't want to finish with like, I don't know, not the best performance, let's put it that way. Yeah, and you've been in situations like this, well, not this meta before, but I mean, it, it's been a little bit. So in a competitive sense, what would you be doing in your team if something like that happened? I would rely on Maxi boosting everyone up uh, when it comes down to mood. And, and yes. like he would cheer people up and everyone would get <laughs> hyped and motivated and we would still feel like we could easily win everything so that's kind of like what it. i would do I like it <laughs> <laughs> that's the pro tip get a maxi in your team and you will be fine happy time uh, for yeah. everyone but absolutely we have the same approach <laughs> with the root riders and the overgrowth spell and now we hope that those root riders have enough power to actually get back to the town hall and take it down yeah with that overgrowth on the town hall completely ignoring it moving around valkyries coming to the left side tassels did pop up there as well well, they go down pretty quickly, but here comes the Town Hall. Now reusing the freeze on the Town Hall, but the King is still there and absolutely crushing the Town Hall, taking it down in just a few shots as continuing through, and we are going to have a three-star indeed. Now just take a look at the time. There's just about a minute left. This is a very quick attack here. Yes, this is for wow. sure an attack on the level of what we have seen Ooh. from Tribe. It was even a little bit faster than what we have seen from most of the tribe members there. That was an insanely quick attack and really yeah. nicely done. And it's just so unfortunate that they just had yeah. this, 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 well, massive one star earlier. Yeah. But at least this is exactly what they had to do. Like come back for them, cheer them up, have a great result in this specific attack, but then finish off with two more great attacks. And now it's up to early attacks. I mean, they have everything under their control. They're yeah. up to decide, okay, do we let them have a chance of a comeback or are we just going to finish strong and get out of the remaining attacks with three stars which is sometimes easier said than done even though yeah. even in the current meta yeah and this meta it's really you're just going to be having to bring the almost i mean jinxing i don't know what that is almost perfect wars and tribe hasn't failed yet so if you go up against them you're going to have to bring that and around a minute 30 second attacks it's crazy to think that if you have an attack that's two minutes, it's oh, you know, it's it's considered very slow for these pro players. Very, very slow. And if an attack comes in as a fail, then that usually means typically you almost took the whole time, right? And that really will add to the time in your attacks. And if it does come down to a tiebreaker scenario, in that case, usually it doesn't when it's not a perfect war there, but you're usually not gonna win. When it comes down to something like that but you never know as we still have plenty of attacks to come in here not only in this match but for the rest of today there's a total of eight matches this is match number two of day one of the playoffs where we'll be concluding tomorrow to see out who is going to be crowned the champion of the world's warm-up as now heroia is up with some zap lalo here okay yeah, and whenever I see those tunnel compartments, I'm more like the walls around the tunnel, I just have to like, it's kind of funny because those walls have like slowly came up during the time um, of the first, maybe second push season uh, of Tunnel 16 because people were first off always sending the king with the new epic equipment for the town hall and it always worked and you couldn't really do that much. Then people have started to put an invisibility tower behind the town hall. The important thing is that it actually was like touching the town hall because then the splash damage of the epic equipment actually, well, took down the invisibility tower and protected the town hall with that. And now people have started to do the little warring around the town hall that the king would need to walk behind the town hall and then to the town hall. So it's really hard to get the town hall just with the barbarian king, which was the meta for quite some time versus those box type bases. But this attack overall looks really solid, even though the king went to the outside, because the queen, take a look at that, there is literally no damage on her, why she can take down so many oh. defenses around that top side. But something that came out of here was that the Seeking Air might stop the blimp 
from landing on the town hall, which means you can then go with go sneaky goblins to help secure it. But the town hall has gone down as he is flying up and around this space. Still has the queen ability, has a haste, has a freeze, drops a freeze on the backside to help try to protect the queen. As the royal champion still has her ability, but is getting slowed up by these ice golems. That's right. The royal champion is getting activated with our ability the hogs are trying to push across and what is going on the attack is really close with more loons coming in but still there's a back end which i found out the rage tower is reloading the warning going down there was uh -oh. no phoenix on it and they just had to play it safe there, there was no time pressure whatsoever is it going to be enough though the phoenix is trying to tank the scatter and these balloons are trying to make their way through that ice golem was not used for anything finding some red air bombs the hound pops these balloons have been killed off and we have one balloon left and my wow this is going to be a defense here a straight up defense not even going to be a time fail because these defenses still remain and will take out the rest of his troops which means that va esports have a chance they have a chance for sure as we have said tribe earlier has defended twice um and this could happen again i mean this could happen again it is the best teams on offense but as well on defense and especially with the pressure on the line things can go wrong and it's not the highest percentage either so one more fail even to 99 could yep. possibly mean the comeback for VA esports, and this is exactly what needed to happen for them. I mean, wow. just being, I mean, right now they feel probably like they're in the lead, even though I mean, they are not, but the current with the, with the, on their own, the insanely quick three star, and then now a defense back to back. <sighs> they, the momentum is right now on their side, even though it yeah. might sound strange, but this is currently how it works. They for sure know they can win. They just have to keep tripling it out, which we have said it earlier, sounds easier than it is. This last attack was the proof. They had no time pressure whatsoever, but yeah. yet they still failed. And, well, anything can happen still. With that time right there is a huge differential because VA Esports, yes, they're down by a star. They do have the percentage because their one fail was a 97, while early attacks one fail was a 94. In terms of time, if it does come down to that time factor, Early attacks are currently at a total of 6 minutes and 40 seconds, total time for all their attacks combined, and VA Esports is currently at 4 minutes, 4 seconds. So from 4 minutes, 4 seconds to 6 minutes, 40 seconds, that is a big gap right there. So now we're going to have to see if VA Esports can triple their final two attacks, and if early attacks fails just one more, they'll lose because of percentage. Yes, that's right. Anything can happen. And, well, we, we have to wait what the next surges will look like. They have tried Lalo now on the early attack side. It has not yeah. worked. We have seen a once already with the Root Riders. And we see another core Town Hall base. And again with the Overgrowth spell. We have seen earlier exactly with this approach the one star. But can they make it work this time? Root Riders are in. The Ice Golem is getting Spring Trapped away actually. So they were predicting this entry with some spring traps to try to take down Valkyries early on and the queen yet again is pushing around the outside with the root riders and the warn ability pushing through the core yeah with that queen making her way up to the top she can pass her way into the eagle artillery to help take that down as he has overgrown so much value including the town hall the back end ricochet the monolith and some root riders are pathing the way to the left side and that king can help use his uh, giant gauntlet to help path the town hall once it comes back alive from the overgrowth still has four freezes to use in this attack here well there goes another freeze but this king the king is on the channel everything is fine the king is on the channel with the equipment with the epic um gauntlet it should be no problem taking that out the root riders are on the back and we have even the super hog riders um from the siege barracks on the back end as well the royal champion ability and that is going to be indeed a nice three star for leo on this one and a quick one as well va esports are not slowing down they're just trying to keep up their momentum and early attacks they have to get their next three star in and have to make sure that they are well three starring yeah they do they have to be sure that the three stars are coming in here and they cannot fail 
I mean, at this meta, and there's obviously less pressure in terms of, okay, I have to three star in terms of obviously to win, but it is easier to three star for these pro players than what that Tunnel 15 meta was last year. That was where you get a three star and that can make or break your war, be really obviously helping to advance. But in this one, it's really about if you fail, what went wrong? Did your hero go the wrong way? Was your plan just wrong from the start? And do they go with an attack that they've come through with, with for the years, or do they go with the attacks that are super strong in this meta? Yeah, that's always the, the things they have to decide. They have tried the Super Dragons now, which was really close. They have went with the Lalo, which did fail in the end for them. So are they going back to the Root Riders, which they have gotten the three star early on with, um, and keep their streak then or getting back to their wasn't never was like a two streak, I guess, or three stars. So like if they can get back to that streak and continue it with uh, their more three stars. Yeah, they just got to bring the three stars and they know they can win this match to advance in the upper bracket because this is double elimination. You lose one match. You're still in it. You still have a chance. But if you lose the very first one, then you're going to have to grind your way all the way back up, which is going to be a very difficult task. Because we're now seeing Riga Torres coming in with the E-Dragons. The E-Dragons, indeed. The Slammer early on, just on the flank to go for the air defense and funnel the Electro Dragons. Not a blimp or something towards the Town Hall. So the idea for the Town Hall with the Invisible Tower, not sure what that's going to be. Maybe the King delayed for the Town Hall, that could be possibly it. He's not sending the King in early on because he doesn't need to worry about the time. Electric Dragon to the far right side, having some nice chains, but the King now instead is with the Queen and the Town is just getting ignored for now. Yeah, with these Rages on these E-Dragons into the core, looking to get the chains as he throws the Mile of Town Hall and the Invisibility Spell and these E-Dragons in the core will get Zoo. Hang on. Wait, he still has heroes to run around. The Town Hall's gone invisible. But wait a second. These E-Dragons, they have completely gutted the core. We do have one Inferno that's still standing there. As the King ability goes off, two Wall Breakers to try to help this Queen, but she is pretty low health. She is low health. The Royal Gem has to come in to support that. The Town Hall did go down with the remaining Electric Dragons and the Warden itself. The King nicely tanking, but there's a lot of damage. Now, what is in that Royal Champ equipment-wise? Uh, we have the healers getting activated for the Queen. We'll have Fermin Tower scatter the Seeking Shield. And I think that should be enough with two more spells. The one freeze and now an invisibility spell still left. It looks close in the middle part yeah. of the attack. You have to say, with the Town Hall turning, getting turned invisible, the back end, the stacked area, but... Riga Taurus is going to get that three star. But oh my lord, th those attacks, they do not really look that convincing to me. <laughs> I have to say it. So I think, who's the last attacker for early attacks? Is it is it Yata? Yata. It's Yata. Yeah, yep. and he is so mm -hmm. far perfect, right? Like, he's so far perfect yeah. on 16 with Rikir as one of the only players um, so far left out there who is well, perfect on Tano 16. We're not talking about this tournament. We're talking, I think, overall Tano 16 duration. And that's yeah. just madness and it is well having him as a last attacker is giving you a lot of safety i guess it is for sure yada who has really loved to use bowlers in the previous years but will he be using bowlers or is he going to be going in with the meta he's definitely a pro and knowing how to get those smash attacks through the core and getting so much value but we have a final attack coming in from each side in this match and time is totally on VA Esports' side, but that's not a factor in this match as it's just about stars and percentage, where if Jesus, who's got the final attack for VA Esports, if he triples, then we'll have to see early attacks must triple in order to win. A 99% from Yada would spell a defeat even after VA Esports came in with a one star from Dobbs earlier in this match. But anything can happen. You have to focus on your final attacks here to try to win and advance in the upper bracket here in the world's warm up. That's right, for sure. I mean, you want to stay in this upper bracket to have the best chance to really get to the finals as quickly, but as well, like not having to play that many matches, expose that many bases, and so on, which is always an important factor. 
but we have the next attack on our way, and there we have it. We have a Lalo attack for Jesus, and it's going to be a Zap one with uh, quite a few lightnings. The classic hero combination, it seems like, with the Queen with her heal equipment and the Invisibility Vial. I think then the... Oh, wait, that's something interesting. Typically, we see with Lalo attacks, a lot of pros are going with the um, Life Gem. Yeah. But on this one, we have the Eternal Heal, like the Healing Tome. Yes. And I was actually just going to ask you the question because I know Jesus, he loves bringing the Healing Tome with his Lalos, and he's not bringing the Life Gem. I personally haven't maxed out or really leveled up my Healing Tome really that much, which it can be really useful for Root Rider attacks. But we're seeing the use here of the Healing Tome to help heal these balloons up. And a million air skellies popping up here. But the Town Hall has gone down as these balloons are just being uh, sprinkled around the space to try to help overwhelm it. As the Royal Champion is now down, then sent to the bottom side. That's right, with the Royal Champ around the, around the back end of the space. But wait a uh -oh. second, the balloons just disappeared. Wait. Wow. Royal Champion with her ability. She's having, I think it was the Royal Gem with the Haste Vial, yeah. right? She has to turn invisible again to not get targeted by the Singer Phone Tower. The Queen is oh. keep pushing for it. She has her ability, but this back end, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, and I don't think so. No, with the Defensive King still there, that Queen's ability has gone off. He's got a freeze and a fail is a fail here in this one which really means that early attacks all they have to get is a two star to win their war here and unfortunately with a freeze left this queen is trying her absolute best to stay alive but no more unicorn on her mm -hmm. hang on we do have a grand war and altar queen uses a freeze so that the archer doesn't <laughs> kill this queen Super Barbarian down on the bottom side. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. This queen can get healed back up. Wait, do we speak too soon? The minion I mean, is working on the clan castle. The queen should stay away from the wall, which yeah. means the warden should be out of range, right? So yep. as long as she's not... That would be so... Poo oh, she's oh, in range! Oh, no! She is in oh. range! Queen! Step a little to the left. What are you doing? No way, and it's going to be the fail. I mean, the minion is going to make it, a, I guess, 99 if the minion has enough time, but it's not going to take down that warden, and it's going to be 12 stars for the eSports versus early attacks. We have said earlier, early attacks had the best defense coming uh, coming into this, this group stage. They had the best defense of all the teams, and they're proving it yet again with holding back VA eSports to 12 stars. Wow. 12 stars here in this meta is really unheard of with these pro players. So you're holding a team to that and you're almost guaranteeing your spot to advance with that. So unfortunately not able to get a victory for VA Esports because they know that early attack just has to get a two stars to be able to advance and win this match. But VA Esports will still have a chance in the lower bracket unless something happens early attacks in this next attack here but they could just go for the safe two star do you bring in overgrowth on the town hall and then troops run around it or you just go right on through the town hall get it get the 50 percent, and you're good to go yeah i feel like we're back on town 15 get the safe <laughs> two star you're going to look great it's it's amazing but no we're actually on town 16. but yeah. Seems like history has not changed still. Two stars win wars uh, yeah. on this one. Getting that then for them, the victory. But I guess they want to go for the obvious three stars because as we have said, most of the teams have to play multiple matches, not only today, but as well tomorrow. We will yes. have the entire thing finishing off this weekend to crown our champion for this warm-up tournament. And, well, they want to finish this match on a high, getting that next three star. And especially, I think, Yada. Do not want to risk his perfect streak so far on Town Hall 16. I think the late, the last time I checked um, was like 39 out of 39 or something crazy. Uh, oh, wow. Red White. I think Rikiris was back then when I checked the, the screenshot. It was like 33, 35-ish, something in that range. Uh, Chat, if you know, like the 
if I did something wrong with the stats, let me know. But that was the last time when I checked with the with the screenshot there, which is either way, it's incredible. Like going that in pro matches is just super impressive. Even a meta like Town of 16. Um, there's not many people out there anymore which are completely perfect. There is fails from time to time. We're seeing it already in the first two matches of these uh, playoffs. And going perfect is really impressive. Yeah, it's all about going perfect with this meta. So let's see if we will see Yada coming in with a three star. He's got the Root Riders not bringing his bowlers as the lightning spell does come off right away as we have a baby dragon off to the left side as we're seeing a healing tome going to be used on this warden which is typical coming in with the root riders and now also going to pair it in with the hog puppet on the royal champ and the root riders are down and here's the rest of his troops there we go, going with the lock launcher because he wants to trigger that invisible tower early on. The single fern tower, I think, already took down one of the root riders. The king is going in closer to the town direction, which I think is good for him. The queen going in there as well. And warden ability has been not used so far. I think he had already lost a few of the root riders, but they're just so, so tanky that if he's now using the warden ability, they're getting healed back up and they have again just so many hit points. Yeah, with well, this king can use his ability to try to path his way to the town hall. All you need is a second star. No matter what, it will be a victory as the queen's going to path her way to the town hall with a freeze being used. There is the warden and eternal tome being used later, which is not typical with a lot of these pros using the warden ability really, really early to help try to help protect as many troops as possible. As the queen ability goes off, town hall is going down. And the second star has now just been confirmed. There's still a lot of defense on the back end. I mean, the Royal Champ and the King ability will have a really high chance of making quick work of that. He's using the King ability early, surprisingly. I thought he would wait to actually take down all of the tests on the back end. The King being smarter than the Queen, going around the corner and to the outside of the base, tanking for all of his troops. And the Royal Champ coming in with another rage. Corbin, I think he is keeping his streak. There come the <laughs> the spring chips. <laughs> but Super Barons were still there. They were part of the party. And another three star is in. Early attacks confirms the victory. And getting the or getting to the next step in the in the upper bracket. Well done to you, early attacks. Getting it done. And we have now seen them put up 14 stars, but. I mean, they're going to be advancing and putting up 14 stars against a team, let's say against Tribe, that would not be enough because Tribe is a completely perfect through the group stage and they went perfect in the very first match. And VA Sports coming in with 12 stars and unfortunately 12 stars is not going to be anywhere close to be winning in a meta like this. But great effort as we did see triples coming in from Leto, Leo, Hades and Max. Yeah, and that attack from Hades and from Leo, both of them were super quick. On the other side, from early attacks, imagine if that first one shot would have not happened. I'm not sure if that would have done anything different from their yeah. latest attacks, but they were all quite slow. 2 minute 13, 2 minute 10, 1 minute 53, uh, the 2 star obviously with like 2 minute 52. So overall, quite surprising. Only the first attack when kind of the pressure was on. After that, the pressure was kind of off. You said one star typically means that you have a pretty much free win in the current meta, but they made it close. They made it look close in the end. And uh, I hope they can step it up then for the next upper bracket match, because as I said already earlier, we still have a big, big gap between them, maybe the top four, top six teams, and then the remaining teams. So if they want to stay in their top spot, they have to do so. Coco, you're back. How did you enjoy that last match? It was up and down. <laughs> Well, you said that you don't see perfect wars, <laughs> but if I remember correctly, we have a big jinxer in here. What? Who? Who is that? <laughs> Who are you referring to? It, it's not me. It's, <laughs> I didn't do no such thing. What are you talking about, Coco? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, my. But what a match indeed we had there for uh, VA Sports with only 12 stars. So they're going to look to try to bounce back in the lower bracket as they will have a second opportunity. Maybe we're able to bring up the bracket if we do have it. And we do indeed. So let's go and update everyone on where we currently stand and take a look at that. 
my friends. Tribe is going to take out early attacks in the second round. And the next match that we're going to have is Navi taking out Emporium Titans. And Navi's going to look to try to continue their run at time, being very, very quick. And Emporium Titans, they've gotten some perfect wars, but then they've also ha had a handful of fails in terms of attacks. So I think out of all of Navi's attacks, so Tribe, they went perfect through the group stage. And Navi had two fails. So, you know, they still have a chance at failing, but Navi's really looking up to put up a perfect war, just like what Tribe did earlier, it seems. Yeah, I'm kind of convinced that we have a really good chance of seeing a 15-15 score with that next match because uh, you guys are going to cast that. And <laughs> as I said earlier, I, I, I wasn't able to get a 15-15 score so far yet. I tried to do it for a YouTube video to kind of like, <laughs> like show that the current meta right now in the pro scene yeah. is really heavy on the three-star side, but it did not happen. I don't know. I, I don't know what I did wrong, but I, I just, uh, well, hope for, for a nice match with uh, a lot of stars with the next one with uh, the Navi one and yeah. uh, hopefully a lot of nice attacks then with some different strategies and not only root riders. Indeed. Yeah. And yeah, and absolutely we can't wait, but we're going to throw it to a quick break here as we're getting ready for this next match between Navi and Emporium Titans.
And welcome back here as we're getting ready for a match number three here between Navi and Emporium Titans. We've had a perfect war that we saw from Tribe in match number one. And match number two, we saw a one star that has come in from VA Esports and they were not able to get the victory against Early Attack. So we already know the first match in round two, Tribe versus Early Attack, that's going to be a great one. But this is going to be a fantastic one between Navi and Emporium Titans here. Yes, indeed. This is one for the books. We have some fan favorites playing, but also we mentioned before, we have some streaks ongoing in a few different clans, and this is one of them. I think if I'm correct, yeah. Gaku across all tournaments is at a win streak, well, win streak, a triple streak of 33 triples in a row. It, will he be able to keep it up in this one? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And in this one, you said it in the chat already, like about jinxing. I can't jinx. So I'm going to say this statement right here. You ready? Take take your time. Here we go. Navi is going to go perfect in this war. 100% guarantee it. So you can, you can write it up right there. Yes, Navi's not going to fail. Navi is going to jinx. go... I, I can't jinx. It's impossible. No, you, you heard it right here. There's no way Navi can fail the attack. All right, now, what are you going to do with that information? Hmm? So watch, watch. This is the biggest <laughs> jinx ever. Because no. not only, watch, they're not going to go perfect. Imagine Gaku fails. And because you jinxed, he's going to mess up the, oh. <laughs> the perfect wall and his triple streak. Well, it just won't happen. I, I know that can't happen from Navi, right? And so... But here we go with the very first attack from Navi. As it looks like if I'm looking at Emporium Titans, they do have an attack already there. And it looks to be three. So uh, Pikachu is going to have to triple here with a Lalo attack. As we've got the queen off to the left side. Super Barbarian's being used around this queen as she's going to push her way through. And Pikachu loves to have a healer puppet on his queen to help potentially turn it into a little mini queen charge. Yeah, the king's doing some heavy damage here on the south hand side. Is a skeleton spell which P. Castro used to help get some additional value, distract some of those defenses, and he's coming in hot. We've got the Lalo kicking off on that right hand side with the Warden Eternal Tome securing the safe blimp towards the town hall with a rage will secure an additional star on the board. Now those clan castle troops are still to be feared. They are pulled from those yetis that were in range of the town hall area. Yeah, with balloons coming up and around this base, he's at just about a minute left and at crushing here. Remember, it's all about speed. So the first attack, the triple that we did see on the on the right side of the screen where it says three stars from Perim Times, that actually was a two minute and 10 second attack. So that was relatively very slow as we're gonna see Picasso coming in, finishing it off with four balloons left to try to get this clean up. And it is indeed a three star here going to the storage, taking it down. And P. Castro finishes one minute and 27 seconds here. Yeah, that will be tying it even after the first two attacks. Three stars each on yeah. the board. And I think this one was just a little bit quicker in favor of the P. Castro's attack there as well. Yeah, indeed. So P. Castro, a minute 27, while Embarian Titans had two minutes, 10 seconds. So that is a huge lead. So I don't know if you can make up a differential in that big of a gap. I guess if you have one attack that fails but we know that that can't happen from navi right that we, we there's no jinxing involved here um but we will have plenty more attacks to come and if you win this match you'll be advancing in the upper bracket as this is match number three here of the world's warm-up but let's take a recap of the very first attack that we were not able to catch so let's go into emporium's uh titan's attack here which ended up coming with some e-dragons coco yeah, E-Dragons is known to be a quick attack. I think we've seen the quickest attack, I think, from Dobbs, which was an Electro Dragon, which was a 57-second attack. Let's see what this one was. I think this one was over two minutes. 
We've got the Rages in, which will be probably used nice and early. There's a bunch of them in here as well as freezes to help stop the amount of damage coming in on his dragons. Now, he had a bit of funneling with that baby dragon and an additional one on the left. And the main portion powering in from the left-hand side. Eternal Tome protecting them and as well as getting the blimp under the wooden ability as well. Yeah, as that blimp will be looking to go for that town hall as it did remove it as these e dragons will then have to loop around this space still has that king he's gonna make his way through but the question is about the time what slowed this attack down because e dragons really are a pretty quick attack as a test farm did pop up to the top side and it looks like that is where maybe some of these e dragons got picked off yeah, the heroes are doing some work on that right-hand side. They're still looking healthy. A lot of hero abilities still remaining, but as you, as you mentioned, the, the Electro Dragons, they took so much damage on the left, only leaving one left. The hidden test, the farm is picking off even more damage, even taking that Warden down. Does have a revive, actually, which we usually see on the King, so it's interesting to see that that combination is on this one as well. We do occasionally see it, which means he can pick off a few more defenses on the left. World Champion still going strong. Queen still has her ability. She can reach over these walls and get them down, which did secure him the triple at the end of the day. Yeah, he did, as that Queen's ability ended up helping secure this, as that Queen had the healers that did pop up from the ability running through. Remember, the multi-target Inferno, it has a lot of beams, obviously, but the damage output is relatively low. So if the Queen has plenty of health, then she's able to stay alive and really push through. And look at this. It, this is the reason why it took so long is because the queen ended up having to go through this wall. And this was almost a defense for P. Castro. Yeah, queen is the best wall breaker in the game. We're going to speed <laughs> this one up and get this one down so we don't miss the next attack. Queen does finally break through, gets the triple on the board which did put the pressure on a little bit for Na'Vi to make sure that they did have to triple it yeah. in the first attack, but they came in clutch, two hits in, and it's even. But time did sway, as we mentioned, for Na'Vi. Yeah, Na'Vi's got the time advantage by quite a bit at the moment. With important times again, their attack was 2 minutes 10 seconds, while P. Castro's attack was 1 minute 27 seconds, where... At this meta, you really want to start to be under a minute 30 against the top teams. As we're seeing now with the Root Riders with the Scouts and Spells. No overgrowth here as the Queen is down. Siege Barracks with two Packas coming out to the top side. Root Riders, Belks. And are we going to see some Spring Traps kind of towards the edge? The Root Riders won't get sprung, but those could be end up used for Valkyries like Itsu mentioned before. That can really kind of stall up an attack if you do clip the Velks. Yeah, the poison spell tower going off. Make sure that actually there's a lot of damage coming in on these root riders, and he's holding on to his warden ability, which means I think we might even lose a few of these root riders. There goes that warden ability. We got the eternal tome and the healing tome. So all of these root riders that did take a lot of damage will be regaining it. But the town hall compartment has another giga poison from the town hall, as well as the second poison spell tower. With this queen continuing her way to the bottom side has her ability there's the king's giant gauntlet getting right on through that monolith with the skeleton spell the root rider as now he's just moving his way towards the back side one freeze in the back drops it now okay there it is he actually had two there queen's ability going off still has the royal champion ability as he has passed the minute mark and now starting to rack up a little bit more time you know that will play a role in this match here as you want to try to get fast as possible taking every single building down yeah it's definitely faster than their previous attack but we're nearing that one minute 30 mark just a slightly over it but rocky ball coming in with another triple now from emporium titans now navi have to triple yet again yeah. so will they get it down i mean they have that time advantage but at this point at these teams they are hoping to get that first defense down, especially Emporium Titans now that they are a bit behind on time. Yeah, a little bit behind on time, but that's not what they have to focus on just in the moment because we saw other teams, they tried to be quick and it cost them stars. So you have to focus on getting the three star first and then try to see some ways to speed that up. And 
a lot of times there's some matches where the players are trying to be very quick and it actually backfires and they mess up the attack due to being trying to be quick. Just the small mistake could cause you the fail in these matches. Yeah, I think that's why sometimes when we do see some defenses, they can be quite low. So sometimes we see them around like the 70s, oh. maybe even 80s. Wait, what? Oh, but look at this base that we've got here. And we're going to bring in this a would... Zapquake Lalo. Sign me up, stars. I, I, this is perfect. This is perfect for my forward and fireball. If I hit this town hall, everything is gone. Uh, yes, it is a slow attack. But oh my goodness, look at the core of this base. As we're seeing lightning spells being used right away. But imagine a war and fireball hitting that town hall. Bye bye to so much stuff in the middle. Woo. Yeah, that would be really cool to see the fireball hit all of those <laughs> defenses in the middle of the base. However, he's already got his king and the queen on the north hand side. Warden's coming in with the Lalo on the left, Stone Slammer on the south, Raw Champion on the right. He's approaching this base from all sides, which is going to actually help force these loons in towards the middle of the base because the heroes on the north cleared out all of those defenses. Now, here goes the loons into. The heart oh. of this base, there is an invisibility spell tower, but because he's cleared out all oh of my. the defenses from the ring, uh, everything's just meeting in the middle holy. to get the triple done. What? Is he going to be under a minute? Wait a second. Look at that. He's at <gasps> 50, 61 seconds. Stars. Are you serious? Look at that. That base was perfectly set up to take everything out around the edge. Just completely overwhelm the core. And this is definitely what you do not go. Do not use that type of base against these pros. They will absolutely <laughs> smash it. And not only just three star it, but going for the world record time. Wow. Yeah, definitely. The time, I, that's one of the fastest attacks I've ever seen. I don't think it is the fastest, but it's definitely on the record board. That's for sure. Especially with a Lalo as well. Yeah. He made, he planned it so perfectly to make sure that all of the defenses around the outside were cleared because he knew that the loons will go directly for the defenses in the middle. Now, there was an invisibility spell tower, but it didn't even slow it down. It was a really well executed attack. Yeah, stars absolutely took everything down. Lightning spells got some fantastic value as he just moved his way through and was able to just clean up the edges and he didn't have to worry about the tunnel. Yes, there was an invisibility spell, but he just completely overpowered it and got that done. I think Emporium Times was hoping that something caused them to mess up with the tunnel and all that stuff in the core, but that's not the case. Not only did they not mess up, but they went for a super quick triple. As we're now seeing, Stars' base has those little bit of walls. And I feel like we saw this base or something very similar in a previous match as the lightning spell is coming down with a Zap Lalo. Yeah, Zap Quake on the right hand side. Get some good value there for the multi inferno and i think the enemy queen went down there on the right hand side and he's already clearing out some funding because he's already got the walls open to that compartment there for his king but also the queen for the town hall compartment so he's multitasking his hero dive at the moment with an ice golem which will give some nice freeze value in there town hall's not active but it will slow down some of those clan castle troops and the expo to help push that queen a little bit further and the queen does slow the expo down a little bit with her frozen arrow, clearing some of these archers. Her ability can then go for the town hall, which will probably lure out the rest of the clan castle of maybe ice golems here. As the king's ability has gone off. And no, it's a lot of archers and super minions. So he goes with a freeze because that queen, remember, you don't get too much health recovery from a frozen arrow as the ability goes off and the town hall has been secured. Yeah, good thing he had a poison in here as well. He gets the clan castle troops down. Those super minions could do some really heavy damage on those loons if he didn't. Now, the Lalo's going to scout the, those hounds first for the loons that are approaching these defenses. Now, he doesn't have too many freezes to stop this splash damage. We do have the Warden Eternal Tome, though, to help protect them through because there are two multi-infernos remaining as well as that scatter shot. And I believe his Warden is on ground. They forgot to change it off to air as he's trying to continue to fly around. It's not looking like it's doing any difference because it doesn't look like there's any ground expo that's really focused on the Warden as he's just continuing his way through. But the Eagle Artillery remains standing. The Multi's in the core. Tesla's off to the far right side and 
It's looking like this is going to be a whole... Wait, no, he still has the Royal Champion in our ability, which will be Clutch, to try to move through the defensive King. The Spare Fox has now just gone down to that multi-archer tower. There's the RC ability. Hog's coming through as he has oh. to get through a defensive King as well. Oh, I was unfortunate that we couldn't get the multi-inferno down with those clan castle troops. So that would have been huge to help push those hogs a little bit further. But you can see the damage that came through there. We had some traps as well. And the eagle artillery staying up until the very end meant it could just do some damage throughout the entire attack. And unfortunately for Emporium Titans, they'll be falling short on Stars' base here. Yeah, not using Root Riders and coming in with a Zap Lalo. And it's not even going to be a time fail. It's a fail fail where he did not able to have any troops staying alive here in stars comes in with a uh, basically almost a 60 second attack and then the very next one coming in with a very strong defense a single defense here in this meta really means that you have a really great opportunity to win the match as stars has done his job here and now he's just re relying on the rest of his teammates here for navi to just get their triples Yes, indeed. Now, I wonder what's going to happen with the remainder of the attacks, though, because they do have a huge advantage, not just only by gaining that extra star, but also time and percentage is all in Na'Vi's favor. So we could be seeing some fun stuff. Hopefully we do. Now, Gaku is up. Now, he's on a win streak with his triples. I think he's at 33 triples in a row across a variety of different tournaments. Let's see if he can keep it up at the moment. We've got the Root Riders coming in on the left hand side early warn ability and everything's frozen in place here from those ice golems coming out of Recky Bull's clan castle with double oh he does use the overgrowth but one poison does get launched here i was gonna say he might have wanted to have the other poison spell being hit by the overgrowth but unfortunately he is getting slowed down as he's trying to avoid this core which also includes the town hall as he does still have the King ability, a Rage, and a Skeleton spell to use as this Queen is making her way on the complete outside of the space. Yeah, Queen will have to go to ability soon if she takes more damage from that Expo, which will make her invisible. The Unicorn's taking the damage from the Expo, though, and not a lot of healing will come back in. Now, the Town Hall is still up. We need these Root Riders to path forwards, open up these walls for the King to get in here. The double single Inferno looking scary on this side, but they do get it down. A lot of troops still remain in the Root Riders and the Hog Riders. Now, the Giga Poison's gonna do some damage here, though. We have one skeleton spell trying to do distract the expo on the left but the giga poison is picking off a lot of health oh boy the royal champion she's going down the king's going down two <gasps> expos still remain coco no you overpowered my jinx wait what what you said it right <laughs> okay it's not it's not my fault i didn't do it i might have said something in the beginning but coco you said it at the beginning of the attack so um I guess. Yeah, but no you said for it was gonna be a perfect war, oh. and I said, "Watch, this is gonna be this is gonna be Gaku's oh. streak down." What? Oh, oh my! Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, I don't know what to say here, but um, are we? Do we have? Is is Jinxing really real? Like, what's going on? I am so what? How did? <laughs> How did that happen? Gaku? Well, I sincerely apologize on behalf of both of us <laughs> to Gaku for ruining his triple streak here. Now they do have the advantage still. This is rocking up as much percentage as possible. 92%. Okay. The hey, Phoenix is getting low, though. How about this? And if, ooh, how oh, about it this? doesn't get the expo down. I'll guarantee now that Navi won't fail another attack. There we go. Okay, now it's oh. safe. Now, now, now Navi's good. Shh, they're gonna. There, there's no way. There's no way. And so, <laughs> wow, that was Gaku falling short. But it can't happen again, right? It can't happen again. There's no of way. Of course not. It Twice could never. in one war. Nah. 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 I guess you just have to stay tuned to find out in this match to see if what happens. But Porium Titans, they are going to have to get the triples. And we have a fail that was an 88% from Imperium Titans, while Gaku got a 92%. So the percentage is close. So at this point, 
time is out the window. Now it's all about getting three stars and hoping that you can pull in a defense to still win this match here, Coco. Yes, indeed. Stars are even. Percentage is what is swaying it at the moment. We have NYU from Uport and Emporium Titans coming in next. More Root Riders and everything is deployed already very quickly. Now, we've got the Siege clearing up around the right. A few Root Riders on the north. Now, they're taking a bit of damage here because we've got some Hidden Testers popping up as well as the Scatter Shot, the Multi Inferno, or the Clan Castle troops are emerging here as well. Poison Spell is deployed to try and get those down before those Root Riders path into the heart of the base. Yeah, with the freeze down the Monolith, the pack as the Root Riders coming across here as he's trying to now open up the core. And there's a heal here that we're seeing for the King as the Queen will step into there. The Warden's ability does go off as he's pathing his way through as he wants to push through this Town Hall. And there's the freeze that will clip the Town Hall and an Inferno Tower. The Royal Champion has been deployed to the bottom side, running her way through with a Skeleton Spell out in front. Yeah, King goes to ability. They will get that town hall down. Queen is pathing directly behind the King. She's looking good. She's got all health still remaining as well as her ability. Now that skeleton spell is going to come very handy, but it's going to wear off here now. The world champion will face off the enemy world champion in here. She does have the fox still on her though, which will make sure that she's protected and made invisible from the world champion and the remaining defenses. She goes to ability here as well, and she's super speedy going from defense to defense. Queen is now going to be busy with those walls and world champion can clean out those last few huts and we've got a triple on the board from emporium titans which means navi after triple again now and i hope they don't fall short they're gonna get uh, they're gonna pass the lead over to emporium titans yeah with the minute and 12 left that's not how fast the attack took that's how much time was left which means that it was a relatively slower attack from what the pros are kind of keeping themselves of kind of hit those marks of a minute 30 is the closer you get to 60 seconds that is crazy fast and that really will help you win wars but this match is not going to come down to time this match is going to come down to the three stars and if there's any more fails can't fail yet again each these teams do have one fail so perfect wars out the window here now, if Navi triple the remaining attacks, they will win this match because they have just a little bit of percentage lead, which the one fail that we had Gaku was the 92, while the one fail from Apparent Titans was an 88. So there's a little bit of the differential, so giving the Navi that lead here is now. Navi is up with Kazuma coming in. More Root Riders with the Barbarians and the Valkyries on this one as well. Looks like we have the Frozen Arrow double book on the Warden. And we've got the Hog Rider puppet there on the Royal Champion as well. I think that's because there are there is a single Inferno next to that Town Hall. We'll see how uh, we deal with that. We've got the funnel already set with the Siege and early Warden ability, as you mentioned in previous attacks. A lot of these pro players are protecting all of these Root Riders very early on, letting them take a little bit of damage though, so that we can still get the value from the Healing Tome, but then that early Warden ability will protect them from a lot of the early damage. Yeah, as the King still has his ability, going to run his way through Skeleton Spells out in front of the bottom side to help distract that single target Inferno. So he can continue to move his way through his Root Riders. are going to path their way near this Town Hall as it is now activated and they get targeted. So he drops the freeze. The Town Hall is going down super quick as the Queen is making her way up top with her ability still intact. Barbarians, Valkyries are running around, but the Wizard Tower is still up to the bottom side. Maybe drop a couple Super Barbs to help take that down as the troops will still have to path their way back down to the bottom side there. Now, Kazuma does have a lot of ability still left. He used every single one of them here. King, Queen, and the World Champion still going on that right-hand side. The last few defenses going down. This is such an overkill. His hero is still up. Root Rider is there as well. And we have another triple on the board, which means Navi will still be holding their lead. 11 stars to 11, and it's 78 to, I think, 77% now. Yep, 78.4 to a 77.6. So just a little bit of an advantage there to Navi. And of course, we're seeing lots of Root Riders, lots of Valkyries, because it is so strong in this meta. If you're looking to be getting a three-star just in your attacks, and if you're struggling to get it, take a look at these pros, copy their armies, and you're able to use them in your matches. 
the thing that these pros do is pay attention. A lot of these Root Rat attacks have the Healing Tome, and they're popping the Warden ability very early. They're not waiting for when the Town Hall explodes to pop their Warden ability. The reason for that is so that they can protect as many troops as possible in early part of the attack so you could push your way through and then you could kind of just overwhelm the backside so popping that warden ability early seems to be a trend here with the pro players so that they can really make their initial push and then the healers can kind of kind of make up the difference as you get deeper into the core of the base yeah, we have made quite a transition. We used to see a lot of these pro players in previous Town Halls. They used to hold their ability, the Warden ability specifically for the Town Hall because the poison from the Town Hall can do a lot of damage. Now, with the heroes being strong as well, they can clear out the remaining of some of these compartments pretty nicely, even if some of these Root Riders go down. Now we've got more Root Riders coming in, this time on Klaus's base from our side here with a Flame Flinger though, interestingly enough. Yeah, Flame Flinger is being used to help go for that multi-arch tower as we're a skeleton spell out in front of the mile to the top side as Root Riders are down. Queen as well off to the right and Valkyries. Warden, and let's see if he does an early Warden ability to really protect them as the Eagle Shots have landed. Kings and Elf try to go for the Monolith here. Poison spell getting launched as he's continuing his way towards this tunnel as Rackaloons and some Ice Golems getting lured out of the CC. I think he had a heal spell in there as well, just to help counter that. Uh, looks like a Giga Poison from the Poison the spell tower went off there. World Champion on the right-hand side, and the Flame Flinger is still continuing through that left-hand side. Warden ability active just as he approaches the Town Hall. The Multi-Infernos are on these Root Riders. He's freezing the Town Hall and the Multi-Inferno, because there was a Tornado Trap in here, which is slowing everything down. As the town hall's about to go down here, as he continues through, the Warden does have the Diggy, still has the King ability as he's going through the Ricochet Cannon. Now it's activated as the Sink, oh no, that is a multi -tar target Inferno down on the Royal Champion as she is continuing her way through the bottom, has her ability, a Freeze and a Skeleton spell to use. Dropping that final Skeleton spell, and now it's just a matter of pushing his way around with the Royal Champion, hasting your way to the bottom. And we have a three star here, which means that Navi and Klaus must triple their final attack to win this war. Yes, the pressure is on. Triple to stay in the upper bracket. Now, it is double elimination, so whoever does fall short on this wall will not be going home just yet. We will have them jump down to the lower bracket. So if your favorite team does go down here, they will still stick around just a little bit longer. But another triple on the board here, as you mentioned, means Klaus has to triple again now to end it off here for Navi. Oh, yes. Only one fail that we saw, which was from Gaku earlier, a 92% two-star. And I don't know if anyone jinxed it, said it right in the middle of the very beginning of the attack, saying Gaku had like 30 triples in a row. And of course, the moment someone says that, it failed, which is... Uh, it doesn't have any correlation, right? There's, there's no way. But we're going to see Klaus looking to close it off with a three-star, and Klaus is such a good attacker and i mean can he push stars to try to beat his time which was like 61 seconds because of the base that he chose and it was a very odd base everything in the core and i'm really curious to see if we end up will be seeing a sub 60 second attack in the world's warm-up this weekend I mean, we're close to that 60 second mark. That's for yeah. sure. We just need a few seconds to beat it. The thing is with those ring bases as well, it's all you have to go all in. If something goes wrong with that town hall in the middle, it can be problematic. So yeah. the fact that he crushed it and he crushed it so quickly was really nice to see. Klaus is now up with the final attack now. We've got the healer puppet, uh, the archer puppet on the queen. Double book on the warden. And we've got the hog rider with the haste file on the world champion. As root riders are down, king, queen, warden all being placed together. Going straight into this town hall here. Not can't just be a two star. It's got to be the triple three or nothing. And to take the victory as we have a freeze coming down straight on towards the invisibility spell tower so that he could help secure the town hall as the warden ability now is activated. 
World Champions coming in with the Siege Troops. We got some Hogs coming in here as well. So not only does the Royal Champion have her Hogs, but there's some additional ones coming out of that clank. Are those Super Hogs? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's the first time we've seen them in the tournament so far. We got the King coming through with his ability through the heart of the base. The Root Riders are still present and they're looking healthy. There's a lot of health still on them. He's freezing that single point damage so he can keep as many of these Root Riders alive and keep the Royal Champion healthy towards the back end. And to be honest, with the final freeze, he can get some nice value by freezing the scatter shot or help a little bit on the south hand side, which he does opt for. And he's got the Queen and he has the Royal Champion ability still available. Yeah, with the RC ability, can haste her way around. Still has the Queen ability, making their way through as Hogs come through with that RC ability. The Hog Puppet spawns and Klaus getting the three star. And only one fail from each one of these teams in this match. And the 92% was enough for Gaku to get the victory. 14 to 14 in Purim Titans. Great effort, but unfortunately, the one fail. You had a chance to try to defeat Navi, but unfortunately, we're not able to do it. And I mean, perfect wars here in this competition seems like if you get a perfect war, you really have a good chance at winning because the opponents are messing up one attack, which is costing them the matches. Yeah, well, we had that one fail here, as you mentioned. The two-star 88 from Mazio here. Very unfortunate that fell short. That could have been their window of opportunity as they had the little frame that we had from Gaku, but unfortunately was not enough. As you can see here, Gaku came through with a 92%, wow. but triples all across the board. And look at stars. Three-star with 101, Carbon. 61 second triple. And I feel like that can be improved right i really want to see if maybe someone can take a screenshot of that base that stars hit builds it and now we can have a competition to see if we can lower that time because if someone's got a fireball and tries to really like uh break the base down you can really get quicker than 60 seconds incredible stuff but let's welcome back itsu here now to the team itsu what did you think of that match um, I was expecting a 15-50 because I did not cast, but then you guys <laughs> happened. And, um, well, great jinxing on this one, I guess. But overall, yeah, so far, no 15-15, uh, which yeah. a lot of us were expecting coming into this. But I guess as well, best attackers, best base builders, I guess, as well, is somehow yeah. making it possible for some of the defenses to happen. And uh, we're still waiting for the... First 1550 Mad Tribe so far was the only team actually to get 15 scores overall um, yeah. today, but we have still plenty of more matches to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tribe have been perfect throughout the entire tournament completely, not just today. So their performance is definitely above everybody else's, but will they be able to keep it up is the real question because these teams have definitely prepared for this because there is a lot on the line. We have $30,000 on the line. So I'm sure that these teams put in a lot of effort to try and slow down some of these attacks and maybe try and even get a defense on a few of them. And the thing about these this meta is it's all about Root Riders, and Valkyries and base builders know this so they now try to trap for this so Itsu do you have any insights do you maybe know what base builders can do to try to trap and slow this attack down is there like do they even have a chance of doing it or is it really just comes down to the attacker messing up I feel like we have seen now especially some spring traps really far to the outside to like at least take care of some of the Valkyries early on mm -hmm. um I think that was the most common thing we have seen so far with the base builders and as well uh, with the current style of having a lot of core town hall uh, compartments and setups mm -hmm. where the root riders are typically going into the town of poison, taking some of the damage because you have to then either use the warden ability early, what mm -hmm. most people do right now, but then take the town hall damage or other way around, delay the warden, but then you can only prevent the town hall damage and not the damage before. The overgrowth spell now is kind of counteracting that, but we have already seen the one star today though, because it turns those ring bases where the town typically is in the middle of the base into like town hall last building, which is yeah. with some risk in there as well. So let's see what happens uh, next base building wise with the next couple of matches and as well attacking wise, because so far most people opted into the root riders. We have seen a lot of fails already with Lalo, especially I think. Um, 
So maybe people just go with even more root riders. Yeah, Root Riders does seem to be the safe option at the moment. Even when some teams did have the advantage, they were still opting to go for those Root Riders and even try and still get as quickly as the, uh, the attacks as possible. You could see the deployment and very early, the setup was nice and quick. As you mentioned in previous attacks that we've seen, that even just the few seconds in the beginning, slowing down the deployment in the beginning yeah. could be what sways the match by even just a few seconds. We've seen it on the stats from the previous stages of this tournament. And so that's the thing about the competition. We've talked about time, we've talked about Perfect Wars, but that has yet to be playing a factor in these matches. It's playing a, a factor in terms of the mindset and what the players are doing of, okay, I gotta be quick with my attack because it may be the difference maker in the end, but we have yet to see that the war come down to an exact draw, exact tie, and then the average attack duration being the difference maker probably will we still have plenty more matches to come throughout this weekend today and tomorrow as this was match number three and we have eight matches total today so five more today and then the rest of them will be all tomorrow we'll be crowning first place who is winning ten thousand dollars here in the world's warm-up tomorrow to see who can be the very first team to win a clash of clans esports tournament this year it's soon yeah, but I think as well regarding the meta that even with the current uh, meta, which is for sure offense heavy, you mm -hmm. can see the difference between like even the top one, top two, top three teams. Mm -hmm. And it's really quickly then going down on hit rate as, yeah. as soon as they're crossing this top 10 team mark with some of mm -hmm. the teams in the group stage, not even getting 15 star ones. So mm -hmm. it's like there's a crazy skill gap already this high up in the competition. So it's getting even bigger and bigger as you're progressing down. And I mean, we mainly show those uh, top teams, right? And I think yeah. as soon as we're progressing in the tournament, so even like top three, top four teams, we will see eventually uh, <laughs> Jinx power not really activated, but we will see eventually, yeah. I guess, those, those 15 stars from multiple teams. But uh, so far, while we are within the top eight, you can still see that some teams are not like being able to put up or somehow perform under the pressure uh, of such a tournament or overall the pressure which the other team is putting on them and yeah. this has been the story so far of the matches we have seen so far with only one team getting the 15 score uh overall and other, other all the other matches not coming down to time as carbon just said coco cool. Yeah, definitely later. I mean, earlier on, I watched a lot of the qualifiers and we did see quite a few of those perfect wars. I'm wondering if it's got a lot to do with the preparation as well.
Hey, we're back. We're back. And I hope, uh, I don't know, Chad told me that I've won the weirdest face competition, which is something <laughs> I do not want to win. But hey, at least winning something, right? But we have the next match on our hands. The first tag already happened. And Chronic did get that three star. And um, it was a quick one, Coco, right? Yeah, it definitely was a quick one. We have our stats on our other monitor, and it seemed to be that it was only one minute and nine seconds. So hopefully we get to replay that at some point. But the next attack that we will see will be the next one coming in from VM Legacy. Now, they have to triple it as well. Otherwise, they'll be giving the lead over to Synchronic very early on. That's right. I, I hope Carmen is getting his trivia question ready, which he tried to... <laughs> try to ask us during uh during the break but hey we wait uh for the next attack happen that we can then see and that we can then enjoy and figure out what the attack strategy looks like because there were rumors overall that uh synchronic found a way of somehow competing versus the time of tribes attacks which tribe right now we have seen the stats was the team to beat when it comes down to average time so I would love to see their attack and what they came out, came in with and what the strategy was. Um, I think we're having a little bit of some technical issues. So we'll have to keep an eye on our stats at the moment, see if we can keep an eye on what's happening with the next attack. Um, unfortunately, we're having some trouble, but I think Carbon has our back. He did prep a trivia question, so maybe he can drop that in the oh, chat no. and we can have a little quick chit chat about that whilst we wait to see what the stats are happening. Or yes, let's get it going. Ninja's attack is in. What did we have here? More Root Riders. Town Hall is still uh -oh. standing, though, in the middle of this base. I have flashbacks of a certain attack, which looked kind of similar. But hey, let's hope that he has enough Root Riders to go all the way back now towards the Town Hall and get that three star. The Town Hall is going to explode. He's going to distract the Monolith, which is working semi-decent i guess with the multi inferno tower right the, the multi inferno beam of the town hall taking those skeletons out the root riders are opening the compartment for the king and it should be a three star but it's not even close to the quick attack of synchronic which means they will have to lead after one attack each Yes, three stars from both of these teams, VM, Legacy, and Synchronic, both going perfect so far. But as you said, the one from Synchronic was faster. We'll have to wait and see if we are able to rewatch that at some point. We have to make sure that everything is smooth and we have to make sure we don't miss the beginning of the next attack. So make, thank you for being patient with us. But yes, Synchronic have the lead at the moment by a few seconds there on the board. That's right, a few seconds indeed. And I'm still waiting like eagerly to see what the strategy is uh, from that team, which uh, maybe, I mean, so far, time-wise, they have one of the fastest attacks of the day. I think so far, the only attack which was quicker, you can correct me, was Stars with like 61 seconds. I think otherwise, this attack from Synchronic with 69 seconds is like the second fastest, right? I think Tribe had some quick ones, but I think 110 might have been the quickest one. So I think you're right. This might be the second fastest one. Tribe are definitely close behind there. If not, if we are, uh, if we have missed a stat on there. So we have these quick attackers coming in, which are the ones to look out for. That's uh, for sure. Um, waiting then for the next attack to happen, or maybe giving us a, a quick replay of what just happened with the first attack uh, in the synchronic, uh, from the synchronic side. But if we want to speculate on what exactly they're doing, do you, th do you think they're doing something similar or do you think it's a new way of playing Root Riders or is it a completely different strategy? Well, I'm sure that a lot of these players have done a lot of experimenting. And I feel like a lot of the experimenting has not been quicker or we might have seen it, unless there's a hidden strategy in there that some of these players have figured out and they're keeping secrets so that nobody else knows. Because the main thing is if you have found a way to up the time or lower the time, I guess, for your team, then you want to keep that secret. Because if they had time to practice and get and perfect the strategy, you might be giving away your own strategies and then losing to them. 
That's right. I mean, we could be sneaky and like actually visit a few of those uh, stats website or like um, progression websites and check what type of equipments they have leveled up. But we have actually a new and next attack. And it seems to be like just the root riders, but with lightnings instead of the overgrowth spell. And well, let's take a look at how this is going to work for him. Yeah, this does clear off some of the uh, splash damage. I think we got the Ricochet Cannon and the Multi Archer Tower, some new defenses that are available at Town Hall 16, which is mainly, I think, for funneling purposes at this moment because we're pathing towards the left-hand side with those Root Riders. They're just going to power through those walls before going for the Eagle Artillery and into the Town Hall compartment. The Warden ability protecting them, but also regaining all of their health back before they start to take down the Town Hall in the middle of this base. Yeah, but to compare it to the Overgrowth option, this time all of the troops in the core are taking the Town Explosion damage and the Poison damage right after. But Root Riders are quite tanky, so this might be not the biggest problem for them. As the Royal Champion, everything is pushing through, and right now he has crossed the one minute mark with quite a few defenses on the back end, so this one is not going to be as quick as maybe some of the others. Yeah, a lot of the single points here, the single Inferno there, charging up, doing quite a bit of damage there as well. Some of these uh, Root Riders are pretty low. 1 minute 40 on the board. Queen goes to ability, gains some healers, but she will clean up pretty nicely. We're around that 1 minute 30 mark, which seems pretty average at the moment based off of the previous matches that we've seen. Not the quickest attack, but yet another triple on the board, this time from Philip. Yeah, and this is like the, the good thing for them that they have put up this incredible time in the first attack, which is then putting up the pressure uh, on the other team that they have to somehow take the risk, take maybe some little extra steps to somehow have an even quicker time, which could result in either worse times or at the same time, which we have seen already plenty of times in, uh, in this stage of the competition so far, result in some fails, either one or two stars. And this is then always a crazy swing in the momentum of that match. But this means so far Synchronic, two out of two with a really solid time. Now we have to take a look what the other team can somehow do against this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at this point, we want to make sure that they're not falling short, though, as we've seen before, that when you do try and go all in and it does go wrong, we can get some fails coming in. So the main thing is that we make sure to get those stars on the board, if possible, try and get them down as quickly as possible, because there have been some really quick ones in this one, as well as the other tournaments so far. That's right. Viva Legacy should attack next with their... Uh... Well, whatever strategy they want to go for. They had some incredible times as well during the group stages, for example. I think especially Ninja is a player to highlight here who had an, I think, 1 minute 11 seconds attack as well. So really quick attacks as well from their side. So I think Super Dragons was their choice uh, with Super Minion Bloom, for example. So as well, different approaches and different teams have like d figured out different ways with all of those different strategies to get the fastest time. Most people or most teams are opting into the Root Riders. Some teams have went with the dra uh, Super Dragons and they were really quick as well. Yeah, I think there's multiple different ways of getting quick attacks down. It just depends on the each individual preferred strategy. Like, I think a lot of people who did also use like Electro Titans, a lot of them have been using Root Riders, for example, now. Now, Electro Titans are out of the board, though, because they are pretty slow. They're a nice combination sometimes to help with Clan Castle troops or potential traps, but we don't see them as often anymore now. Darkstar coming in, and he's already got that Warden ability early because the single Inferno is doing a lot of damage already. I'm not sure if we lost one, and he's also combining it here in the middle with the Overgrowth spell. Did not get the Monolith in or the Eagle Artillery. Yeah, he, has a, he had a lot of troops going around the outside. That's why the Warden completely went to the side. So the healing effect, which all of those players are always looking for on the Root Riders, was not really happening, which means now he has lost a lot of troops. The Queen did go inside on the other side, though, which is really solid for him. There goes the Rage Towers now. Is it going to be enough power? I think it looks really solid for him with the Royal Champion, with the Queen, everything in the core, and some incredible, nicely placed freezes. 
Yeah, the beautiful freeze, getting as much value as possible, freezing the scatter shot and the town hall simultaneously. This monolith has gone down finally. Few hidden testers trying to slow down on that back end, but we're just over the minute mark, getting those last few buildings down. And we've got another triple on the board. This was, again, another quicker one. One minute, 20 seconds around that time from Darkstar here for VM Legacy. That's right. And I think we can take a look at the stats as well in just a second. But for now, we should take a look at the replay, which happened in the beginning with the 69 seconds or one minute and nine seconds from the um, Synchronic side and what they did there. They went in with the Root Riders as well, but nothing too fancy otherwise. Like no overgrowth spell. Instead, just a couple of skeleton spells. Yeah, the skeleton spells will be nice to distract some of the defenses because I can see two single Infernos and the Monolith. So they can do quite a bit of damage. He's actually using that first one here already, distracting the single Inferno and some all other defenses. He's got the jump spell, which will connect these compartments for the King to go in for the Eagle Artillery and the Monolith, which will be nice because these Root Riders will not take that much damage from the Eagle Artillery later on in the attack. Yes, there is a jump spell for the Baron. Like, I think that's the cool thing, or like the important thing for this one, is to get your troops separate, and especially the king. I mean, the king behind the root riders is mainly because you have the root riders opening the entire compartments for the Barbarian king, and I feel like the Barbarian king is such a key thing regarding time. Like with the splash, with just the epic gauntlet, he is such a game changer. And on this attack, it was. Perfect with the jump getting him into their own compartment. That's the root riders, the queen on the outside. So the split of those troops was really nicely planned, and this resulted then in this really quick time. Yeah, and it was very funny to see when you look at the attack and you see 50 60 percent still remaining, and then you see that the clock has 30 seconds left, and that you know that the player cleared out the rest of the base in 30 seconds. I think is crazy to me. Yeah, you only had those, those vibes like with Lalo typically after like your Queen Judge or something when like pros were able to like Lalo, I don't know, 40% or something in 30 seconds. That was always really, really impressive to watch as well. But those Root Riders are trying to push towards some crazy records at the moment with uh, getting those three stars in. But now we're back to Synchronic again with their next life attack to see what time they can put up. And if I take a look at the numbers quickly, we have right now the average time for VM Legacy being 1 minute and 27 seconds and Synchronic being 1 minute and 18 seconds. Um, at least this is what it looks like. So on average, we have the 9 second difference with only 2 attacks time. Yeah, that's not too much to be fair. We can easily be swayed with one attack being slower. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Six stars each, two attacks in, and we've got the next one in from Einstein. And we've got the OG, we've got the gauntlet what? abilities, double book on the warden. Did we have the healer puppet on the queen as well? That can be nice for like a mini queen charge. Th that's the same base again, which we just watched the replay on. Does VM oh, yes. Legacy use the same base multiple times? I'm just confused. Like, did it This one work has in three tests? single infernos though. The last one had multi inferno towers. Is that the only difference? I think there was one multi inferno next to the clan castle, if I'm correct. So more splash. Well, there's an extra um, skeleton spell as well to help counter that, maybe. Well, let, let's see if it's going to work again, as in the first one, which has worked great for for Synchronic. They had an incredible time there. We see the Root Riders pushing into the shop side. The skeleton spells are distracting all of those key defenses. The single inferno towers. The new merge defense the um the the cannon the ricochet cannon channel should go down soon the king is just obliterating this monolith and eagle compartment and they're pushing through yeah he's trying to replicate the quick attack that we saw which was one minute nine seconds it is a little bit slower though from these root riders they're slowly thinking out as they approach the back end here now We're approaching that one minute mark king gets a revive is going for the scattershot royal champion gets the single inferno now it is sl almost the same i'm pretty sure it was really close on time we'll have to go and take a closer look at which one was faster but this might not be what vm 
M Legacy were hoping for by running the same base twice and getting such a quick attack down on it two times in a row. And just checking the stats, it was actually three seconds quicker than the first <laughs> attack. The first attack was one minute and nine seconds, and now we have one minute and six seconds. I hope that they're not happy with the decision of running this base twice. I really hope for them that they don't have this activated yet again. Otherwise, <laughs> oh, they oh, might no. be in trouble. I mean, if they really were convinced that that base is looking great for them and holding good in, the, like, in their tests, well, it does not do that versus Synchronic. Maybe, but that's again like the personal preference of all of those teams with how they play the Root Riders. Maybe they defended really well versus the Overgrowth spell. And that was then the decision of why they're running the space. But with this jump approach, which is not that common for the most of those uh, teams with the Root Riders, since they're just relying on the King going with Root Riders into the core, well, maybe they did not expect this jump spell. And with that one, they just have this really massive advantage of taking down the space already now twice with this good time. Yeah, the shock that they must have had. The first attack going in, and then the first attack absolutely demolished the base in one minute, nine seconds. I'm sure that they knew what was coming if they knew that they spun the same base twice. Now, they're not going to be happy about that. That's for sure. We're at nine stars to six. VM Legacy have to make sure that they get a triple on. And hopefully, it's a quick one. Because if time does end up being the decider of this match, Synchronic are looking very strong at the moment. Yes, and I mean, looking forward to maybe our first 15-15 score. I mean, we You've been waiting for it. <laughs> we want to we want to make it happen. So far, it did not happen. So looking forward if DM Legacy and Synchronic can be the first two teams to make this work. VM Legacy are up next. They have still some incredible attackers, and Ariam is this person to go for, deploying everything as quickly as he can to push everything into that middle part. He is using the Overgrowth spell again, which means the Town Hall is probably going to be one of the last buildings to go down. Indeed, we've got the Root Riders. They might be splitting a little bit. One's going to go path with the King and the Warden's actually going to be pulled into that middle part of the base. The other Root Riders are going towards the Eagle Artillery. Queen's reaching over these walls into this compartment. And as you said, the Overgrowth coming in hot, slowing down how much damage is coming in on the Town Hall and the Monolith at the moment. They will bypass it and then return back into this compartment to finally get it down. We have the troops really splitting away from their Town Hall. They have to be healthy enough to push through all of the remaining defense to then come back to the Town Hall. The King ability has been already used. And well, now the Town Hall is literally the last building. They have to somehow power all the way through. He has one Rage left, but no other spells. There goes the Rage. The Root Riders are already down, which means the King cannot get into the last couple of compartments. He's relying on the Royal Champion. She has her ability, but she has to get that Town Hall. Oh, she uses her ability. Seeking Shield does go off, gets quite a bit of damage down, but she's Ooh. taking so much damage. The Town Hall beams are melting the remaining health away, and the Queen's health is slowly getting picked off as well. Just a few Packers and the Phoenix remaining on the south hand side. Arium has to still get the Town Hall down, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And that is the crazy thing. If you're picking up those strategies, those approaches of the other teams, and you might have not the same routine with those approaches, it can result in this one-star type. We have seen this already now twice with the Overgrowth spell. This attack might be quick if it works, but it might backfire. It's Then it's really, really bad. Can the P.E.K.K.A. somehow get through this wall and still take down the Town Hall? I'm not really sure how many hit points the Town Hall has left. I think around like... 75 percent ish oh, oh no it's 50. Half. It's actually half this how might be possible the for the pekka, pekka have i wonder how much health does the pekka have how much Wait, damage it did it take? oh he's with, so with a low explosion? No. no the pekka was too low that was so unfortunate 98 percent one star this is where it really shows that leaving that town hall up in the end can just be so risky can be for sure it has the potential to be one of the quickest times but as well if you do not have this i guess you have to really call it routine with having attacked already with the with this approach plenty of times and you don't know how much power your root riders have left it can result in really really bad fails which have the potential of like swinging this match completely at this point it looks like it i mean 
both teams with three attacks in. Seven to nine now, and that is a massive lead. You know, you just asked, you were like, oh, this might be the perfect war Don't that I was it. waiting for. <laughs> nope. And the next I have attack... not said that. <laughs> I, I mean, um, we're still waiting for the first 15 15 score. That's all what I'm trying to repeat. Um, <laughs> Synchronic looking good so far, being able to be the second team to get 15 stars uh, in total. Not the perfect match, but hey, maybe the perfect team for this one. And they're up next to maybe keep their streak going. Yeah, I mean, they have the advantage now. Seven stars for Rian Legacy, and they have nine stars. Two-star lead. Percentage, as we said, was close because the previous attack, it was just the Town Hall and the Clan Castle still left, pretty much. So it's rough to see that. It's heartbreaking to see the Town Hall being left up. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. General X is up with the next attack. More Root Riders. And we've started off with the heroes on to the right-hand side. Now he's deployed that queen with the king already. And look, they're bringing in that jump spell yet again to get some more access to these deeper compartments with the king. Yeah, it really feels like that this was the, the idea they had. And I think so far it's paying off massively. It does not, or it seems to not have the same risk involved as the overgrowth method, method of tribe. And instead, with having this king jumping to the core like that, as well, I think another thing is triggering and doing out the clan castle and making sure it's not stuck on the root riders. It's a massive thing. The queen on the other side with the heaters now turning into a little queen charge is really strong as well. And this attack looks really solid. Yeah, he prepped that beautifully. King cleared out very nicely as well. Helped clear out some of those defenses in preparation for his mini queen charge. With those walls open, she got the scatter shot down. She is taking quite a bit of damage here by the Expo, which he did have a skeleton spell to distract. Ooh, the super dragon. And the Root Riders are still going strong. There is a Super Dragon still up, though, which is going to do quite a bit of damage because it also splashes on all of these Root Riders. They have the walls open. They're on the Monolith. Those Super Minions in here as well, trying to pick off the Super Dragon. I don't think it's going to be enough, though, to get a defense, though. General X with yet another triple on the board for Synchronic. Yeah, the Super Dragon was a great idea, but it did not pay off in the end. It was a really, really, um, well, close one when it comes down to the health of the Root Riders. But remember, there's other things involved in the strategy as well. And that is, for example, heroes, which are a little bit powerful right now, if you if you want to, want to say so. With the new equipment, they are just so, so powerful because you can adjust them perfectly to whatever you're playing right now, which makes them even stronger than they already were on the previous talent level. Yeah, if you take care of your heroes, honestly, they can get pretty much half of the base down on their own. Like, if your troops die out, if you don't panic and make sure to protect your heroes, you can still get some heavy damage down and maybe even clutch it up at the very end, even if your troops fail their portion of the attack. That's right. I want to quickly double check. The time on this one was 1 minute and 23 seconds. So their average time right now is 1 minute and 16 seconds. <laughs> Which is, is crazy. as well insane. I mean, that's really, really <laughs> impressive. Do you by any chance remember what the average time was of Tribe in their match? Um, I'm not sure. Pretty much they were all around the 110. I think the lo the longest time was 120, I think, from Nebrox, followed by 119 from Exocysts. So they must have been around a similar average time as well. So I wonder if we'll get a matchup between these two. That is definitely going to be spicy to see who will have the quicker attacks. Well, we have Flaxian now with his next attack, and it's going to be the Root Riders again. This one is no jump, but it's an overgrowth spell again. But he is going into the town all this time, which is a different approach than we have seen because it's more like a box space style and not the core town hall, which we have seen from so many other teams. Yeah, now he's fro well frozen. He's frozen and made invisible by using that overgrowth spell on the um, Eagle Artillery, as you mentioned many times before. This does help with the amount of damage that these Root Riders are taking. There is a bit of a split as well, which helps with the heroes because the Royal Champion's on the left. And at the moment, the Expo's being distracted. So she stays pretty much almost at full health. And these other heroes, they're powering through that right-hand side. One healer does follow these Root Riders and King into the Eagle Artillery compartment. The main thing is that we have to backtrack into that Monolith area and get that down as well. Yes, turning around, taking that building out and getting that three star. 
And this one is going to be in the around 1 minute 30 seconds, which for some teams apparently is quite slow. We already said it's around the average. Oh no! Oh. Wait, they have to walk all the way to the elixir <laughs> storage. No chance! Yeah, that's going to eat up a lot of time. One archer would have been able to get that down, save him a few seconds. They do still have that two stars that they're handing over, though, to Synchronic. But every second is important to make well to make sure that they get it on the board. Because if they do get a defense, imagine we get another one-star defense. Because it's happened. It's happened a few times before. When we have a look at the stats from the entire tournament, it is not the first time that we've seen a one-star. Yeah, I think um, of all of the eight teams, we had three one stars so far in the tournament. And we already, with just the first couple of matches, are already matching this just today. Um, but on the other side, so I think all of the one stars so far only happened because of the overgrowth spell method of like everything passing the town hall, then having to come back to the town hall. And that resulted in one stars. And so far, Synchronic did not use this, this overgrowth method. So maybe they're safe. <laughs> But I think so far, two star is going to give them the victory. And I don't think that they're going to risk it with an overgrowth attack. No, it seems like they're very consistent with that jump spell. It seems like that's where they're comfortable getting that extra value as well. I think splitting up the heroes, as you mentioned, is really valuable. Because that way you're doing damage to more buildings at the same time, which means you're getting more buildings down. So that means that, that that's why their attacks are much quicker than the others at the moment. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Getting this damage spread is a huge key thing. But wait a second. Actually, they're going in with regular dragons. I felt like that out of the different dragons we have, which means like super dragons, we have the elected dragons, we have obviously the regular dragons. Out of those three, I felt like the regular dragons were the weakest. Um, but apparently, Mark is saying, I got this. We're fine. I would just go in with the regular dragons and hopefully first off triple, but as well, get a nice tag time just for the momentum for our next matches then in this tournament yeah i mean dragons he doesn't have to worry about time you can see that he's already eaten up for the most part of a minute as well now and the blimp is under that ability went to the town hall compartment now the giga poison from the spell tower also did a bit of damage on some of his troops as well we're pathing towards that left hand side now he still has a bunch of freezes and skeleton spells and the reason for this is that there are a bunch of single infernos on the right hand side of synthes base we got that first one coming in as well for the royal champion second one as well as the freeze coming in to help protect everything that's on that right hand side Healers are getting slowly picked off by that multi-inferno tower, the royal champion, losing her fox, I believe. And now the king has to power through the back end with this queen together. The queen getting targeted, no ability left. And I think this might result into... Okay, never mind. Uh -oh. There is a great freeze. Yes, the royal champion ability. He should be fine, right? Right? Oh, don't say that too soon. There's a bunch of skeleton traps popping up. Now, the Royal Champion ability is very valuable because she will regain some health. The Phoenix is still alive, which will help distract some of those shots from the multi-archer tower. She's pathing towards the left-hand side. The second archer tower starting to lock onto her as well as the wizard tower. It's getting close. Her health is ticking down and she will go down and leaves the wizard tower up here as well. I feel like, as I said, she has her ability, she used it, but I'm not sure what was the ability on that one because she barely rec uh, recovered any hit points whatsoever. And this is going to be the fail, but I guess they were just fine with a safe two-star, right? I mean, just the approach overall looked like a really safe two-star approach. So I guess I would not really say, okay, that was a, a crazy defense or anything. It was more like, okay, they just want to play it safe. They wanted to go for the, for the safe approach and get that... Uh, victory to stay in the upper bracket because this is all what they had to do they just had to get this two star and then get into the upper bracket and have an extra tournament life yeah definitely i mean the safe two stars all they needed there they had that one star defense which did come in clutch for them We're trying to get as much percentage in as possible on this one but unfortunately the headhunter will step in range of this archer tower four buildings stay up here on synthes base which is going to be the first defense for vm legacy but it's not going to be enough 14 stars for synchronic and they will be standing strong in the upper bracket this match is not over just yet we do have a final attack 
from VM Legacy to watch though. Yes, but this means Tribe is still being the only team with 15 stars in this mm -hmm. playoff bracket um, in the matches we have seen so far. And now with VM Legacy next, I hope that they can claim another three star because it might not happen or like might not really be important for this specific match because they have already lost. But going to the next match with a really solid attack can be a nice momentum shift. And uh, that could be a big, big, uh, well, thing for there for the next match. Because remember, it's double elimination. So whenever a team loses here in the upper bracket, they still have a second chance. Don't worry, you don't have to like only watch one match of those teams. They're all so, so good. And we can witness their, their magic with playing the game at least twice. Yeah. Synthe is up <laughs> with the final attack and look what he has brought for us. We are in for a treat. We have Zapquake Mass Hogs. Now, Synthe is known to be doing some really cool hog attacks. Let's see what he brings on this one. Well, um, I've seen this attack get crazy overkills and I've seen this attack fail miserably. But so far, with the, the attacks where it failed, it was most of the time because of like raged up multi inferno towers. The good news on this one is there are no multi inferno towers on this top side, and that's why he's starting right away with those hogs. The town hall has not even went down yet. Yeah, he used that warden ability very early as well because there's a lot of splash damage on that left hand side as well as the enemy queen. So I used that warden ability to protect the headhunters as well. And now since those hogs took a bit of damage, he's using some heal spells to heal them up. Now the multi inferno is present as well as that poison spell tower slowing down these hogs whilst doing some damage. And those clan castle troops are still up. He also had the arrow on the queen. I don't think it got any value though. Well, that's pretty nice summary of that equipment. <laughs> you don't get value out of that one, except if you want to use it um, and you have only invested ores into that one, then I guess you have to use it. But otherwise, this is going to be a nice story stuff for Cynthia. The plan overall was great. The lightnings worked out amazing. And single front towers are not the best defense versus those hog rider attacks. So really great job with the plan by Cynthia and a nice story stuff for them wasn't the quickest but i think they can be happy with this one moving then into the lower bracket um and then having the match over there with the final score of 13 to 14 for this match yes yeah, synchronic sending strong at the end of that match taking the victory and they'll be staying in the upper bracket definitely one of the teams to look out for with that interesting strategy that they had with the jump spell not commonly used so i love to see that they are still investing their time to try and find new tips and tricks to find extra ways to get that quicker down on the board yeah so we see the stats again for vm legacy we had some Weak attacks, but as well, area I'm falling short with the overgrowth method with the root riders. But I think even if he three star, comparing with the time, well, if he three star, it would have been a 15 score, right? So they would have won. But the question then is if Mark would have went in with the dragon attack, which he did in the end. Otherwise, take a look at those times of the three stars off synchronic. They, those were quite impressive. One minute 27 being the slowest, one minute six seconds being the fastest, which is really, really solid from them. Yeah, it was really good, especially that double hit on that one base where they figure out how to get that attack in very quickly. And then they were able to repeat it. But not only that, you can see Einstein has the advantage with a few seconds over Simon. So that means he upped the attack and was able to even improve it by a few seconds. What did you think about that, Carbon? Well, what a match from a one star. Literally, if you get those two buildings down, you win the town hall. Unfortunately, the P.E.K.K.A. not able to do just that. And hey, that's all it takes. And that's what determines this match. And using the overgrowth spell can be risky. And we're going to see Synchronic advance. But we're going to still see VM Legacy going down to the lower bracket and still have an opportunity in a double elimination area too. That's right. And maybe we can bring up the bracket really quick. Exactly that. Production was reading my mind because we have now the first round of attacks done. So we see the upper bracket matches. Tribe versus early attacks. That should be a really fun one. The same with Navi versus Synchronic. But that's where the lower bracket is stacked with VA Esports versus Psycho Esports and VM Legacy versus Emporium Titans. 
Yeah, this bracket is definitely looking feisty. Upper bracket and lower bracket, they're both tough brackets to make their way through. The lower bracket just means that there are a few more wars to power through to get to the very end there. Now, I'm wondering what's going to happen in that upper bracket because Tribe had some really quick attacks, but so did Synchronic. So if we get that matchup, that's going to be a very interesting one. Navi are also very consistent as a team as a whole. So I wonder if that one's going to be as close as well. Yeah, with Sokranic, they were just about 7 minutes, 5 seconds for their total time in their... Actually, no, not 7 minutes, 5 seconds. 7 minutes, 56 seconds. So that's that's quite a bit of difference there. And Tribe was quite a bit lower than that. So if they're going to be trying to compete with what Tribe's been doing of Perfect Wars, that's just the baseline where you have to start if you're going up against Tribe. And all these teams know it since they've gone perfect through the group stage and now in the playoffs. But now we have a, the lower bracket matches, and if you lose those, you are eliminated. So even more pressure is on. But VA Esports taking on, uh, going down in the lower bracket against Psycho Esports. And unfortunately, Psycho, they had some fails, and we've had some fails from both of these sides. But you can't mess up. You've got to still go for the perfect war to keep your hopes alive, and you've got a long way to go through in the bottom bracket. Yeah, that's right. They had one of the lowest scores, unfortunately, going into this playoff bracket on average, um, mm -hmm. collecting over the first couple of stages of this tournament with only a little bit above 13 stars. But, well, one good match is all what it takes, and especially right now with it getting close to like 14 stars or like 14 stars in general with like solid percentage. Mm -hmm. Seems to be already for most of those teams enough to win their matches. So 15 stars obviously is nice and everything. But it seems yeah. so far in the tournament that 14 stars seems already to be the score you need to actually win those matches. Yeah, we keep talking about time. And early on, it really does make a difference because we do keep comparing it because a lot of the early attacks have been triples. But it, as you mentioned, it has not come down to time just yet. So the main thing is to focus on getting those three stars on the board before you mess up one of your attacks because you're trying to do it quickly. Yeah, overgrowth, is that going to cause these players to fail some more attacks, get some more one stars? Because I think we've actually now getting almost, it feels like, more one stars in this competition when people are like, oh, the meta is the easiest ever, right? Perfect, perfect. But I think there's more one stars now than we've like had one stars last year in the competition. Great, because yes, it was way harder, but they were still obviously trying their best to get at least the two stars because we didn't see too many one stars then, but now it's because of this overgrowth that they're wrapping around, trying to be fast, which you hate to see happen, but it's just, the, it's the risks that it can be here at Sue. Yeah, and I feel like especially with maybe teams picking up a strategy, which they see work really great for other teams, and they haven't really enough time to practice it. I know, yes, Mass Root Riders looks really simple, and I guess for the basic level, it's not really that hard, but especially on a strategy which has so many risks involved as the overgrowth approach, you have to have some routine with it. You have to attack a ton of different bases with it to make sure that you know how much power the root riders have left, you know what mm -hmm. the limit testing is looking like. And limit testing in a tournament like this, as some of the attackers did, is getting them uh, or getting the other team more like some great defenses, which hopefully is not going to happen again. Um, but this is take, like this is the risk which is involved with copying then the approach of other teams where they see the success of them. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these pro players, they've been testing a lot, as you mentioned, but also the new toys that they've been given. This is, I think, what differentiates the even the semi-pros to the pros, the, the new little toys that we've been getting. They are finding these really cool, even if it's just something so small as just using an extra spell here and there, they're gaining an extra few seconds advantage or making sure that they keep even more troops alive to make sure that their triple is on the board. And I think that is really where the difference shows in terms of the pros and semi-pros and definitely the casuals there as well. I'm curious here, and we talked about before, like the giant arrow, It's you mentioned like... We saw Synthi coming with a giant arrow, but it's not really used too much. So I'm curious, Itsu, how many abilities do you not have maxed out? Or do you just have a few? What's I, I mean, I, I'm curious because you also had, I mean, you have the fireball all maxed out, but uh, how are your abilities looking like? 
do you try to call me out and like <laughs> have like a dirty jammer on my face or something? I mean, I'm curious, let's you that, know. Let's put it that way. Uh, Supercell unfortunately stopped developing Clash Mini, <laughs> and I did quite a few videos on that, and maybe put some money into that game uh, as well and uh, you can then redirect the money to other super cell games I which I did. So going. maybe okay, i have okay. some gems there maybe oh. i have not spent out of the gems for future gemming videos like for Three. example in today's okay. video i actually maxed the hawk rider puppet um ah. so let's see where this is going so all but of them so are back for you huh <laughs> but so far <laughs> don't stop but so far um I'm, I have most of the abilities max, but I feel like mm. most people don't really use. I think for most people, it's more about like that they want to have everything max, but they wouldn't really use everything, right? Yeah. Um, and I think this should be the goal for most people first. This is something I like to talk about overall is don't try to optimize your equipment too much about like, okay, the pros are using this, so I'm having to upgrade that, whatever. It's like really only about a couple of small seconds maybe for the pros. Go with the equipments you have already on a decent level and upgrade those and have one set of really solid upgraded equipment and you will be fine i see a lot of comments always like oh i don't have this equipment max or that equipment max i cannot three star yeah. i mean that's just wrong right you just yeah. have to concentrate on the, the set of equipments and then you're already looking good not taking away off the point that there is not that many ores in the game right now that's i guess a mm -hmm. different talking point but still mm -hmm. um you have the chance of committing to one set and triple wise i think you are not really put at a hu uh, huge difference um disadvantage or anything like that yeah you mentioned earlier as well that there are some abilities as well that you don't need to have max to get a huge advantage of as well and the king gauntlet is one of the favorites as well and to be honest there are a few that they get a lot of value like for example the the earthquake boots they break walls very early on you don't need to level that up to get yeah. as much value as later on when you level it up yeah so no, I mean, do you have any max, Coco? What, how is your how's your equipment? Um, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> let's let, let's uh, let's get back onto the okay, game. Okay, all we? right. Well, I guess we're going to the game. One day we'll, we'll get the answer from Coco. She's sneaking around us here. We we need to figure this out. But either way, it's you. Let's see what Achilles can do with the awarded ability going straight off here to protect, and it's the overgrowth. That's right. The overgrowth. Is it going to work for early attacks? Is it going to work for Achilles on this one with the attack going in quick versus those first couple of defenses? The thing though is I feel like the overgrowth, I'm not sure how much value it has because it should run out really soon. So I'm not sure if he gained all the value he was looking for or not because the overgrowth now is gone. Yeah, with this town hall being completely frozen, and he's now pushing it in through. Does still have that king ability to help get to the town hall. Queen ability does go off. Taking out the bomb tower. Going to be able to reach and go for that multi-target inferno. As these super barbarians are coming down to the bottom side. But the eagle is still raining shots on down. Yes, the eagle is getting some shots in. But I feel like it's... Or is it too late? The royal champion is going down. She has no ability left anymore. The barbarian king is dropping low from the expo the hog riders are trying their uh -oh. best but they just died as well can oh, the wow. king tank that's not the question can the king tank for the hogs no the expo is going to retarget and this means the air defense that's something really key to go down because of the phoenix no the invisibility like the we see another defense what's going on mm, wow so these top teams here are having an answer against Root Riders. You know, when you, everyone talks about, oh, there's no bases that can defend, but it's the tiniest of details that we would need to literally do an interview with Stefan and the builders of Tribe to say, what are you guys doing to stop this attack that other people are not realizing it is is it the location of a tornado trap is it the location of your spring traps that we can't see unless it's activated whereas some other defenses you can see obviously just from the layout of the base as achilles unfortunately is falling short with a 94 percent and not even time fail it falls short straight up and that is a huge defense here for tribe and they haven't failed a single attack. Uh, now I'm now I'm now realizing as I'm <laughs> saying it, they haven't failed a single attack in the group stage or even in the first match here today in the playoffs. So 
good luck now trying to win against a tribe that's been perfect every hit here so far. I mean, I have, I have to laugh so bad because <laughs> as soon as you started your sentence, you notice where you're heading and you try to like turn Whoops. it around, but it didn't work anymore. But hey, no. I mean, I don't know. So far, we're not able to jinx stripes. They were just too good uh, on offense. Defense as well, you said. Um, what about asking the base bidders right there? Uh, for example, from Stefan. Typically, he's quite humble. So he's like saying probably something like, yeah, we're not testing that much. It's just <laughs> like, I don't know, it's just happening. I mean, obviously, it's not the case, but um their de bases are defending great today he's as well right yeah. now really high up on legends which i guess really helps to understand what type of different root rider attacks there are because mm -hmm. i mean everyone who is right now legend knows root riders are everywhere it's really crazy and um i think it might be a little on the stronger side <laughs> so that's yeah. the reason being high on legend is really beneficial because you see how others are attacking you see what things are working or what people are struggling against and I think so far Tribe has done a great job like transitioning that over into those pro matches. And now we have Kronos in, but again with the root uh, with the overgrowth spell, but it's not a ring base or a core tunnel base, it's a box base. Yeah, with those root riders coming across, we have the warden that can help protect everything into the town hall straight up as the queen will make her way all the way to the top side, run around as we have a super dragon coming out of the clan castle. Remember, the clan castle and the defensive heroes are the only things that do not get affected by the overgrowth spell, as that king is gonna go right on by, and then we'll have to somehow come back and deal with the town hall later, as the warden ability did go off, protected as he's making his way into the defensive king. Super minions did come out of the siege barracks now as the king ability goes off, and he needs to loop his way back all the way to this town hall. Okay, I was expecting them using the overgrowth spell for the back end or for the tunnel compartment. But I think most of the rulers are gone, right? I mean, mm -hmm. wait. Uh, I, I'm not expert with the strategy, I have to say, so I'm not really sure how happy he is right now. I guess the unicorn doing a great job of keeping the queen alive. Has to freeze the town hall now. The ability is still there. I think he's fine. He can reach the town hall. The royal champion coming over, but there's still some key defenses left behind. There are the multi arch towers and the ground expos, and no, I, I, it's not my fault, guys. This is not. <laughs> we still got Pekka's. He still got a. Oh no, the Pekka's very low health. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. I just said in the okay. set the tribe is unjinxable. Ladies and I, I mean, we, we did the quadruple jinx. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, there seems to be a little bit of a, a something. Um, yeah, no, that's not my fault. I, I didn't. No. Kronos failing at 95%. There's something wrong with I need a, I think I need my glasses. There, that can't that can't happen. After all, what, 35 attacks or so in a row, it seems like, or maybe it was 30. Yeah, I think it was 35 in a row. They finally fail in their 36th attack, which now means that this war is all tied up. But the average for, well, the percentage does go in tribes' favor. So they got the lead just by that much, just by a little bit. And that's, wow, a 14-star war from Tribe now is, that's surprising. That's right. They have the one building or more like 1% lead right now. It's back to early attacks. Can they three-star now? They're not bringing the overgrowth spell anymore. They had enough. They are just going in without it. Instead, they're bringing the, is it five? I think it's a ton of skeleton spells to distract all of those things. Inferno Towers, equipment-wise, we're going in with the pretty much same combination for um, King, Queen, and Warden, which we have seen over the day. And the Royal Champion, that's where we have the most, I guess, like, dif difference in decisions regarding the equipment. This time it's Haze Vile with the Hawk Rider equipment. Yeah, as Ice Golems have now come out of the defensive clan castle, Queen's making her way through the defensive king to the top side as he continues his way into the town hall. No overgrowth here, so he's gonna power through the town hall. And gonna be able to help try to push through the town hall poison as a poison spell is launched near the town hall. So he's got to go through the poison spell first, and then the town, hall, the town hall poison as well, which is gonna take a lot of damage. As the royal champion is also trying to move through this base as well, but two single target infernos are waiting here as the RC's ability has already gone off. What is happening right now? I mean, it's like this is the upper bracket. Um. And both of those teams are one match away of <laughs> qualifying for the finals. And both teams are just not 3 star right now. I, I'm, I'm just surprised 
Um, with how many defense we see right now, especially with the Root Riders. We have yeah. more troops on the back end trying to pick up some percentage, but it's another defense. Viroya, unfortunately today, is not having his best day. Two fails um, in this in this playoff stage, and it's going to be a 91% two-star. Well, they're going for speed here, and unfortunately, not even getting a triple. So I, I would never have guessed this in a million years. A 10 all 16 meta here. Fail? Fail, fail. Three attacks coming in back to back to back. Not a single triple between the two teams of Tribe Gaming and early attacks. Wait, is this is this the title 15? This doesn't seem right. What is happening here? But okay, here's the ultimate test. You ready? Hold on. I gotta I gotta stretch for this one. You ready? Okay. Tribe will 100% oh, no. get a three star in their next attack. There you go. They, they, there's no way. There's no way. That they could, there could be four fails in a row. It just can't. It can't. So, okay. There we go. I'm going to test it out. Can you call the strategy as well? If you, like, ask your, your <laughs> clients or, your, like, I don't know. What is the strategy? Mm, the strategy. Ooh, that's a great question. Mm, I'm going to go Root Riders. I'm going to go Valkyries. Oh. Um, that, that's I, unexpected. I, I, uh, very yeah. unexpected. Yeah, very unexpected. And I'm going to go with some crazy here. There's going to be... He's gonna. He's gonna also go overgrowth as well. You know, it's gonna. No. It's, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, okay. I can, now I now, you, now you're making things up. I think that's <laughs> that's way too crazy. Um, but mm -hmm. whatever they're bringing, they should for now go for a safe three stars. No ex like. Oh no! Oh oh! Hmm. Carbon, okay. you, you're a magician, so we know at uh, this point already that already it's know. going to be guaranteed a three star because you put <laughs> yeah. everything correct at this point. No, but yeah, I, yeah. without without joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have Yo-Yo coming in. He was really quick with his latest uh, attack in the first match they had. The freezes are in. And I'm wondering, are they using the overgrowth now on the back end? Or mm. what exactly is going to plan on this one? Is he going to use it again for the tunnel? Because it seems like so far, he is not. Oh, yeah. The tunnel is going to go down with the Warden ability. Down it goes. He's going to path his way to the Eagle in about 28 seconds or less. Because you got to wait for the time of the overgrowth to disappear. As they're wrapping around, Super Hogs are coming out of that Siege Barracks. As he is continuing to power on through as the Queen is making her way to the top side. Still has her ability. Yeah, the ability for sure can be helpful for the back end. Now the Rage Tower is going off, and take a look at that. Everything is stacked around the Rage Tower. He has to use Freezers now to somehow overpower this Rage area. Rage Towers are still insanely, insanely strong if set up correctly, which is just an absurd amount of damage. The Royal Champion with her ability has another Freeze, which he can use, but Karin, I think you were right. Tribe is not fading back to back. This is going Maybe. to be a 3-star. And... um. Yeah, the Queen Frozen Arrow and everything is still, it's still on there. Royal Champion cruising through with her speedy add-on. And that's going to be a nice three-star. And you thought I was going to jinx. <laughs> no way. I, there was no way there was going to be four fails in a row of a match of this caliber here. Well, Yo-Yo comes in and gets the first triple of this match here. Which, now, I don't know what's going to happen after the first few attacks. So this could literally go in any direction. I mean, early attacks, they know they got to triple out because they have the two back-to-back -back fails on their own side. So the best they can get is the 13 stars. And Tribe, they're shooting for 14. Obviously, they can't get the perfect war now. But time is no longer a factor in this match. As it's still Root Riders and Valkyries is the meta of what they're bringing. And they're probably going to continue it. Yeah, I think, I mean, let's let's face it. Root Riders are not just used because of time. I mean, that's like a mm -hmm. nice side effect of them getting used. It's as well about mm -hmm. power because, yeah. let's face it, Root Riders are insanely strong. That That's <laughs> that's the only thing you can, you can name it. They are really, really powerful. Um, and it's really hard to defend them. And we, we see this over the day because overall we have a lot of three stars. Even though people know that those strategies and those troops are going to... Uh, attack their villages and not that much can be done so now we have the next attack early warning abilities yet again but the troops so far are splitting i think not really optimally to get towards the core right yeah that with the overgrowth on the core is basically turning this base into a ring base to move his troops all the way around and then come back 
and finish on the town hall. It's risky. We've seen it turn into one star several times here today as these root riders will continue to try to stay protected, but the queen has completely bailed from the warden and the root riders, and she's gone to, her, the, to the top side where if the barbarians and Valks open the wall, which they do, she technically now has access to grab the town hall. Yeah, she should be able to do so with her ability especially. Roy Champion with her ability as well and Carbon. There is no jinxing in this world that this attack would not 3 star. It's going to be a quick one as well. I mean, it doesn't matter, we already said it, but a really nice, a really, really nice attack. Very indeed, very nice triple time as well on your side. It's obviously, like you mentioned, we're not focused on that anymore since we've had multiple fails from one side early attacks, we did have a fail that came in from Kronos in their very first attack for Tribe Gaming, which was a 95% two-star. And then Yo-Yo did get that triple to help give them the advantage if Tribe does get a three-star in their next attack. But if they fall short, now this match starts to become back to even, and then it's anyone's game. Yeah, that's that's for sure the, the possibility. I mean, so far, both... Uh... Teams did not start that great. Tribe had a good recovery um, for sure. But, well, we have seen surprises today. Nothing really happened as expected, I would say, going into this into this day with having the top eight teams then of the world currently in this competition. Mm -hmm. A lot of us were expecting a lot of 15 scores. A lot of us were expecting a lot of um, perfect matches like from both sides. Nothing of that really happened so far. So I feel like anything can really happen in those matches yeah. still. And there could be always a twist. We have seen plenty of one stars. And this means no team is safe until the match is really over. The one player that I believe we're not going to see Riders is, is from Rikiras. Because I remember oh, yeah. <laughs> back... Does Rikiras even have the Root Riders unlocked? Because I remember at one point, like, he didn't even have them unlocked. Because he was like, he didn't want to use them. And so I'm pretty sure he probably did, but I mean, I don't know, maybe you and chat know, but yeah, we'll see. Probably a Lalo attack that will come in from Rikiras, because I, th I think at all costs, he doesn't want to use Root Riders, he wants to use his favorite attack, probably Lalo. I don't know if he's going to attack next, we'll have to see as Tribe is going to be up next. They're up next indeed, and well... That would be a great, a nice mm. thing to watch. Instead, it's Elected Dragons. I'm happy with that one as well because it's no Root Riders. So what is going to be the case? He's, I mean, this king combination is just unbeatable. I think, have you ever seen, like, by the pros, not in your Creative Master Series, okay, but, like, by the pros mm -hmm. in a really serious competition, have you seen yeah. anyone not using the gauntlet, the giant gauntlet, no. with the Rage Vial? Yeah, that's the most common that I'm seeing out of these pros. But, actually from a lot of the comments and like casual people that I've seen, they're actually using a vamp stash on their king and I'm very confused as to why. <laughs> and they just don't know the power of the, the pairing up the giant goal. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there uh, utilizing vamp stash, using it with uh, not even the giant gauntlet. And I'm telling you, giant gauntlet, rage vial, if you're not using it, you should be. Yeah, I see that as well a lot of times of like people calling it the like invincible barbarian king with the fox mm. together and then like vamp stash and everything, which I feel like is more like a meme attack. But people are really thinking it's it's re re really good for whatever reason. But hey, it, it it sounds fun. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's strong if you want to three star, and that's kind of showcase for all of those pros because ever we as we said we haven't really seen it as the troops are slowly going down for Nibrax. And there's still a little bit of a back end, but the Royal Champ is not even deployed yet. Yeah, the RC now just goes down. She's coming across the base from the right side. She can go straight into the Ricochet Cannon area. Oh, pulls some ground skeletons. Oh, uses a poison on top of her to help clear the skellies. As the RC did go invisible, but the Ricochet Cannon is getting some skips across. Pops their ability. More ground skeletons are there in front of the RC. Giant bomb as one E-Drag is still left alive. Inferno goes down. Pops Queen ability. And just like that, the base is gone. Three star from Nibrax, and Tribe will keep the lead. They keep the lead indeed. Nice three star for Nibrax, getting Tribe back on track. They failed once so far in this entire competition, um, which was earlier from Kronos, but they're now back on track and early attack. Still have to hope for a defense on the same side. They have yeah. to still get nonstop three stars because they so far 
have struggled in the beginning of this match. They have only claimed one out of three possible attacks, a three star, mm -hmm. which is kind of uncommon by them. Yeah, that's very, very, very uh, just not expected. Like we would expect them to be putting up at least 14, almost perfect war, especially when they know they're going up against Tribe, who obviously before this match haven't failed through the group stage. And you never know. It's just one little thing can cost you a match here, but there's still a few more attacks to come in. Anything can happen as we're seeing R Rigatorez coming in with a Queen Charge Lalo. Wait, is this is... Am I really... Do I have my glasses on? This is a Queen Charge Lalo, Itsu. This is, this is crazy we're seeing this. Hello? I mean... Let's say it how it is. The attack of Rigatoris earlier with the Electric Dragons was really close. And I mean, Rigatoris is known for his crazy Queen Charges now for years. So I guess he's going back to Comfort, where the time is not as relevant anymore. And it's just mm -hmm. going in with a Queen Charge, which I really enjoy. I think, I mean, come on. It's our first Queen Charge. I think I would have never thought even that I would say this. But this is the first Queen Charge we're seeing today in a pro match. I mean, that's this, wild is crazy typically queen shot always the most used strategy by far by pros and the only thing he has to be careful about i feel like with this queen charge or queen charge in general is the queen going down through ability with a frozen arrow otherwise frozen arrow is literally just god tier with those queen charges together because it's just so so strong but well, the one issue you do have to be keep in mind is if your queen goes to ability by being forced you may lose her because the Frozen Arrow doesn't give you a lot of health recovery when you burn the Queen ability. So she dies many, many times through ability for many players. So you just have to keep that in mind as it could be a side effect. And you have to keep that Queen nice and healthy charging on through. But take a look at that charge so far. This looks really, really great. The Mojo Arch Tower, though, is it going down since that thing can hurt a lot of quite a bit? I mean, it's not the strongest of those new merge defenses, but it can for sure be a difference maker. The Queen, though, he has to be careful. The queen, he has to pay attention. The queen ability has been used early, which is uh, really, really nicely um, multitasking by him. Different lot of groups are coming in, and this looks yep. really solid. Nice freeze on the poison spell. Scatter as he continues to loop his way around with two more freezes. And these balloons will path their way up. The queen does just go down with that defensive king there. But he's even got some back end balloons to make its way to the top side to help grab the mortar. And eventually move his way into the Grand Warden Altar. And this will be a three star here from Riga Torres. Getting another triple here for early attacks. But we still have for Tribe Gaming, Exorcist and Riquerez. And then early attacks, their final attacker is going to be Yada. Yeah, I'm just checking the time right now as well, because mm -hmm. this wasn't, it, it was not the fastest, don't get me wrong, but with like yeah. two minutes and 16 seconds, it wasn't even that slow uh, for mm -hmm. an attack. So really nice to see some other strategies coming in as well. The safer option, the safer approach for Rigatoris for sure, um, mm -hmm. comparing to the Electric Dragon attack he has done earlier. So great job to him. And now it's back to Tribe. I mean, they have everything in their hand for obvious reasons, but yeah. they can as well still fail and fall short with some of their attacks. I'm not really expecting them to, I don't know, switch their strategy up too much because they had great success for, so far with it. But yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And you said it as well, Riku Torres is still left and he is a master of Lalo. So we could see some more Lalo from him as well. He absolutely is. And they're just not worried about time. They're worried about getting those three stars here and the attacks and do they bring, well, I don't know. Rikiris doesn't bring queen charges. Yeah, he brings like Zap Lalos or kind of really the hero dives, getting some fantastic value into those Lalo type of attacks. And this is exactly what he is doing, the Zap Lalo. I remember Rikiras, he was playing in a match in the Grand Master Series and he was talking about, talking with Yo-Yo, and he was making a, a joke about his own wall breaking ability, using wall breakers in a base. And he was... Uh, making a joke that he is not skilled in that and so in terms of charging into the base with a queen charge so these are where he is really really good and he just absolutely crushes these types of bases here he's got three wall breakers to try to bring his heroes in towards the town hall and maybe he could grab the town hall with his heroes that is so much value that would be a lot of value indeed but i feel like as well it's like a huge understatement that uh, Rigo Torres, he, uh, Rikiris, um, who can arguably, I mean, 
you can easily say that that he is one of the best, if not even the best player in the world. Um, <laughs> that he can't really do his wall breaks. I think <laughs> he's really good with them. I think he knows exactly what he is doing. And so far, he is trying to push towards that multi front tower with the queen. The king is doing some quick work off that defensive clan castle, while the Lalo is starting with the blimp then for the town hall. Yeah, as this blimp can help grab the town, double rages are right into the core of this base, protecting and surrounding the town hall, the eagle artillery, the multi arch towers. As he drops that freeze as the town hall is going down with yetis. And the brilliant thing is you can go with yetis because you've already lured out the clan castle. So if you don't want to lure out the clan castle, then yetis would not necessarily be the great option because it would pull out any round thing uh, and like ice golems or lava hounds here but that's not going to matter in this one because rikiras is just overwhelming this base with these balloons absolutely crushing on through and this is going to be another three star here for tribe gaming and to me what the impressive thing is always with those lalo attacks especially from like players like rikiras or stars as well as someone who is like in the middle of the attack it kind of looks close and then you're looking back at the army scroll bar of them and you're noticing Wait a second, they have another hound and 10 more loons. And you're like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, never mind. It was never even close to begin with. So, really great attack by him, getting another three star. And I think this is his 39th three star in a row. One more three star, oh, he has 40 no. triple in a <laughs> row, um, which is insane. I think he has so far not failed with this account um, in, in on Tower 16, which is really, really crazy to just even think about it. The moment when you said it, you just had to say I it. Said it I, mean, I, I, I said it after I, I the mean, attack. I said it after the attack. But your your jinx power is so good that it'll just stay and last till tomorrow. You know, it lasts more than 24 nope. hours. And so, uh, Coco... It has cooldown. Co it doesn't have cooldown. You're absolutely not. There's no way. Coco took out Gaku. Like, Coco's power is so strong. Gaku couldn't even survive it. And I don't think Rikira is going to survive yours from tomorrow but well, i guess we'll have to find out make sure you guys are tuned in for tomorrow which is the final day of the world's warm-up playoff competition where first place whoever wins is getting ten thousand dollars with a thirty thousand dollar prize pool total overall between these teams and we have yada to come in with this final attack here and a triple would put them to 13 and tribe would have to get a two star to tie it but then they'll still be able to get percentage to still win so yada at this point knows he's got a triple and i really want to see his favorite attack what he loves to do which is super bowlers but odds of bringing super bowlers is probably not likely we'll have to see because obviously the root riders valks is just so strong yeah i'm just reading the chat as well and do you know what coco just said talking oh, about uh, jinx powers uh -huh. Do you know on what triple streak Yata is so far? Oh, no. On 45. Oh, I'm, okay. I, I'm just uh, reading what Coco is saying, okay? Like, oh, you Coco, cannot, you you cannot believe this. You cannot okay. blame me for this. Well, Yata is on 45 three stars. Rip to Yata. In a row. Can Yata is going to get hit tomorrow. Can Yata oh. somehow get another three star in and put himself to 46? Those players are just on a different level. It's, it's incredible. What? And I think they are even too good for us to do anything about jinxing. Even Coco's jinx power, I don't think, is enough. And he should attack, hopefully, really soon and as the next player for early attacks. Yeah, can they get to 50 in a row? There's so many clashers out there are just happy to get two in a row, you know? Maybe three in a row, that's like... If they ever get seven in a row in a CWL, like, they are rejoicing. But Yada is going for, what, 46 in a row here? Okay, well, here we go. It is indeed the Rue Riders, but do we have, yeah, we do have a handful of Velks and four Skeleton Spells. But you know what I'm happy about right now? We do not see the Overgrowth spell. So I think we already safe to say that's not going to be a one star. And as I'm saying that, everything's going to the flank. But I think that's that's fine because the Lock Launcher is opening up the core uh, for the Queen. She should be able to reach that town on no problem. And the entire Rue Rider entire group of root riders are completely avoiding the town explosion which is massive for him he's having the king though spinning to the outside which is not optimal typically and with that tunnel being secured he does find that trineo trap on the opposite side so that won't affect the rest of his troops as the rod champion burns her ability has hogs that are spawning up as his queen and king both have their abilities using some freezes as the king is now to the top side he's 
kind of on the outside. He had to beat through some walls in order to get on through as he freezes up the multi and the monolith with queen ability and a freeze still to go. Should be able to go through as his RC barely is going to be able to stay alive with that freeze spell. Yes, and this is going to be indeed the next three star for him. Again, oh, I was about to say below the 1 minute 30 mark, but the one storage was still alive. So it is a three star and meantime won't really matter anyways. But this is forcing Tribe to at least, well, get a two star with a solid percentage and three star to really safely win this match. Yeah, it's looking real easy here for Tribe to coast her way through with a two star. Let alone Exorcist is obviously going to be going for a three star to put them up to 14. As the percentage is at 97 that we have here from early attacks. And then Tribe is at a 79, but with a three star would put them to a 99. So, I mean, early attacks still putting up a very high percentage. But stars at the end of the day is what's going to be the difference maker. And these pros know that they need to be getting perfect wars to be winning. And in every single war here today, a perfect war would get you the victory. So it's not been a perfect perfect. We haven't seen that. And maybe are these teams going to be able to pull off any more perfects? I mean, we've seen one of them, but not too many after that. We have one more match after this one. So anything can still happen today. We can still see this magical unicorn which is a 15 15 uh match right so we it's mm -hmm. still possibly for us to, to see one of those but for now we have the tribe last attack and they're going in right now with the root riders again with the overgrowth spell i'm hoping for the best well 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 with the root riders and Velks, he's gonna move on through where he's gonna use that overgrowth early early warden ability is it gonna be on the town hall He's waiting. He's waiting as long as possible until that Warden ability disappears. And indeed, there is the Overgrowth to help make the Town Hall invisible and every, the Monolith as well, as he's going to path his way around the space. Yes, walking around that Overgrowth spell location. Everything is now splitting up. Ice Golem freezing things up yet again. Uh, King with the Royal Champion making the way towards the back end. And now the Overgrowth spell is gone. There goes the Rage. Do, yes, yeah, some of the Root Riders are going for the Town Hall. That would be amazing, but there is no spells left. The Digi of the Warden is starting the Town Hall, and the Town Hall should go down. Town Hall's been secured. He's got the two stars. King ability is used as well. RC, all the abilities. There's nothing else he can do. No spells to place, no abilities to hit, is just sitting back and watching his troops clearing this base. That king gets the model up as the royal champion will be able to jump. Oh no, I think it's RC. Yeah, RC grabs that final building. Queen comes around and Exorcist delivers a three star, putting Tribe Gaming to 14 stars overall and continuing their run in the upper brackets. And they will be our winners here today, sending early attacks down to the lower bracket where they still have a chance to try to make their way to try to get the revenge against Tribe if they make it to the grand finals. Or unless Tribe, if they lose a future match, get pushed to the lower bracket, then there's another chance down there. Yes, there's so many options for different pairings and different um, matchup combinations, that's for sure. As we see the stats of early attacks, again, we had some really quick attacks, but Tribe, they are just too quick. I think the images are a little bit off, but otherwise uh, the names are correct with the with the stars, but incredible quick attacks. But compared to the first match, they were slower, but they kind of knew early on that they don't have to go for time. Yeah, we have a few of the names that are off there on the images, but let's go ahead and welcome back Coco, or should I say the Jinxer? <laughs> almost, you know, almost got so some people there. But Coco, what did you uh, what did you think of that last match where Tribe was able to continue their domination of in the upper bracket here? I mean, they're looking strong. Jinx is though from my end. I love that you're trying to pass the blame onto me. I was not even on the caster desk right on that one. So mm. nice try, Coco. Uh. Nice try. No, they did really well. They did slow their attacks down though in comparison to the first match that we did yeah. see, but they still dominated all the way through. They got what they needed to do 
they got it done and they secured the victory and they're in the next round of the upper bracket so we'll have to wait and see yeah. who will be me team them yeah tribe is one match away from getting to the grand finals and remember if you make it from the upper bracket to the grand finals then you must lose two in a row up there in order to get eliminated because all you have to do is win one coming from the lower bracket is such a difficult task you have to win two in a row from the lower bracket to be crowned the champion since it is a double elimination which that is why it's a big advantage of coming from the upper bracket it's yeah, that's right. Like overall, coming in from the upper bracket in such tournaments is always a huge, huge advantage for those teams. Yeah. So staying in there can be a big game changer. And that's exactly what we're going to find out with the next match then. We're staying up in the upper bracket and who has to face then Tribe uh, later tomorrow since we will have the champion. We'll crown the champion on this weekend. So we yeah. uh, will have everything kind of compact and knowing who is going to make it then all the way. Yeah, I mean, upper and lower bracket, I said it before, there are amazing teams on both sides of the bracket, and I know that there are a lot of fan favorites in there. So if your fan favorite is in that lower bracket, they're not going home just yet. I can't wait to see, though, who's going to face Tribe in the next round, though. We'll have to just wait and see who wins the next match. Well, the next match we have is Navi taking on Sychronic, and Sychronic almost lost well because of we had the vm legacy getting a one star everything else all the other attacks were triples they would have won if arium didn't one star and getting a triple but unfortunately they lost so synchronic is taking on navi and that is going to be an absolutely amazing match and we'll have to see if they can now push for the 60 second mark this one is definitely gonna be about speed and three stars this time we might have a chance of seeing the first perfect perfect but as we've seen today maybe the base builders have some little bit of sneaky things up their sleeves at this point i'm not even sure <laughs> if we should say it like that that time is going to be the deciding factor because so far it was not the yeah. case on a single time but you're yeah. right i mean both of those teams had some incredible attacks um some quick attacks as well like from stars with the, uh, was it 60, 61 seconds, right? Yeah. Uh, versus the, the one legend type of base, I guess, with the double invisibility tower. But as well, on the other side, we have seen incredible attacks and quick attacks as well from Synchronical, uh, um, Synchronic with the one minute and six seconds from them was the fastest. Mm -hmm. But I think both teams have the shot for sure if like winning the match and then facing tomorrow tribe game in the upper bracket. Yeah, I mean, the previous attacks that we saw from Synchronic as well was very interesting. They brought that interesting, different approach with the jump spell so that they can get the king to go deeper into the base, do some damage whilst the queen's on the outside, but also continuing with those root riders nice and early. That was really quick. They also got very lucky that they managed to figure out a trick to get that down by, what was it, one minute, nine seconds, and then they were able yeah. to even improve that on the second base, which was the same, to one minute and 06, so... If they can get it down again, they're looking pretty good at some quick attacks as well. Yeah, they, uh, we talk about it all the time, right? Time. But I am just still curious how they can still just the smallest of details, even if they are using Rude Riders or Valks. We've been seeing it all day, and I'm sure we're going to continue to see it. And the question is, will we ever be seeing a uh, giant arrow, maybe to start an attack with, with maybe something like this to skip across, or even just saving that ability to the end to help with some cleanups, because that can help improve the time a little bit here when it comes to it. But Itsu, now we've talked about, we've seen a lot of Root Riders, but in terms of Legends, because I'm assuming you're in Legends right now, I don't know if you're pushing, but even if you are, what attack are you using? Are you using the Root Riders in Velks at the moment? No, I, I mean, I have no. never used the Root Rider with no? the Valkyrie strategy. Okay. I did use the uh, Queen Shards Root Riders uh, when, I, when I pushed in Legends. Uh -huh. But right now I'm using the Fireball Super Witch attack, which to me has to be one of the most fun attacks uh, to do. Um, in Clan Wars, I like to do the multiple healer charges as well with okay. the Fireball. So you, yeah. I think that's a cool thing, right? Like the Fireball, in my opinion, is such a cool equipment because mm -hmm. it changes the identity of the hero. And I think and yeah. I hope that we're seeing more of those type of... Um, 
equipment in the future. Maybe like, mm -hmm. for example, an equipment which is turning the queen into a tank or the king into like a glass cannon or something. I don't know, like mm -hmm. something to change the identity of the hero. And this is why I like the fireball. As well, another mm -hmm. thing is I like equipments where you actually see something that there is an ability, which means, for mm -hmm. example, for the Royal Champion, even though I don't think that the Hawk Rider Puppet might be the strongest equipment, it's not bad, but mm -hmm. at least something is happening on your screen compared to maybe the Royal Gem, where the Royal Gem is only strong because of the base stats. Nothing is really mm -hmm. happening visually, right? The same mm -hmm. thing with the Fireball. The Fireball, there's a huge explosion. While with <laughs> the Eternal Tome, the troops are turning into gold. Like, that's it. So it's like mm -hmm. visually less appealing. And I think this in the current meta where a lot of things are working, I prefer the fireball then because then something's happening on my screen and I can scream every single time. I'm like, yeah, it's fireball, let's go. <laughs> so that's at least something why I'm going for it. Okay. Well, I mean, it's nice. They've got a really good setup as well for all these different equipment. And especially mm -hmm. now with the meta being so offense heavy, I think it's really fun when they don't have to worry about time. Like we've said it many times that time has been the decider in previous matches. It has not been the decider today though, but it is definitely on the player's mind. But with the offense being so heavy and if time is not a worry, mm -hmm. you do see a lot of new things happening. A lot of players trying new things and changing it up. And I think that does allow for a bit of error as well with the offense being a bit heavier than uh, defense. So, Coco, what about you? Are you at any specific attack? Is it sneaky goblins for some farming, or is this a, is there a different attack? Because I remember whenever you're streaming and uh, whatever you're doing uh, doing some war attacks, I remember you're always so nervous. So, what what <laughs> what attack is your most comfortable at right now? Well, I think I transitioned pretty easily from Tunnel 15. So Tunnel 15, I love doing the Electro Titans. I thought okay. it was a lot of fun. I like doing a Warden Walk. Mm -hmm. Um, so that easily transitioned to me adding a few root riders into it in the oh, middle and then okay. slowly they just took uh -oh. over. <laughs> so I am playing a bit more root rider heavy at the moment, but with the recent event that we had, I had some super dragons, uh, which are also pretty strong. As you can see, they do have, you do hmm. see them in, uh, the comp matches as well. Okay. Yeah. I personally like it to love the fireball. So I've got that on my warden doing warden walks, fireballs with a lot of rocket loons. So I can get try to sneak that Warden Fireball deep into the core of the base or get some nice value destroying clan castles. But it is time. Now for Navi taking on Sekronic here. And of course, we've got ourselves the Root Rider Valkyries. Here, go, go. Now, we just said Synchronic like to bring a jump spell, and they're doing the exact opposite on this one. They're bringing that overgrowth spell. They're changing it up here on Kazuma's base. Now, I wonder if they're doing this because maybe they moved maybe any potential traps that might have changed it up for the way that the king would have been pathing if Na'Vi thought that that was the way that they were going to go. Now, the Root Riders are pathing in, of course, with the Warden. The Warden is going to protect them with his abilities in here coming in already to protect them against all of these multi-infernos. Now, take note that all of these multi-infernos are raged up from the enemy rage spell towers. And he does use the overgrowth now as he's trying to path his way towards the town hall. The poison did get launched, so he's going to have to fight through it, but he's trying to now, he won't go to the town hall. He has to loop around it as the Queen has taken out the top side the king still has his giant gauntlet to be able to use the ability as the royal champion is also down to the bottom side as he's trying to pick this base apart one at a time but time is a tick in here you know i mean every second matters as he uses a freeze onto the multi or onto the monolith as the tunnel has been crushed as the rc ability now has gone off as she's going to haste her way through the final set of buildings this was a pretty quick one as well. Again, Ooh. the overgrowth spell left the town hall up later on. Did not make a difference in getting it down. They backtracked, got it done, did the job well, and they did it pretty quickly. I'd have to double check to see how quick it actually was. A minute 13. That is how fast that attack was here for Sircronic. So Simon getting it done. So, you know, Navi, they're going to have to try to beat that pace. I mean, we have a player by stars who got a 61 second attack earlier against the base. So that's gonna be really the mark to hit. Try to get under or around 60 seconds. Minute 13, 
that's really really good for this team here these pro players want to be under a minute 30 but if you can't hit a minute 30 you definitely want to be getting that three star yeah that's mm -hmm. that's for sure three star first quick attacks second that's yeah. definitely the order to pay attention on now the pressure is on navi a little bit now because one minute 13 is fairly quick mm -hmm. i would say that's one of the quicker attacks even if we have seen quicker from them i think that is definitely going to put a little bit of pressure on them uh we'll see if that makes a difference or not in their performance though we'll have the next attack coming in any second now from navi and i'm assuming it's going to be p castro he really likes to attack mm -hmm. first for navi and he always brings the healer puppets for his queen he always likes to have that when he burns that queen ability to get some more healers to pop up. The only thing is, like, if I were to use the healer puppet, and whenever you burn the ability for the queen with that, the healers spawn all over the queen. Yes, that's great. It could, like, pull uh, to help, like, kind of protect her, but it also kind of pulls a lot of traps. So it's kind of, uh, you have to be very careful where you burn that queen ability if you have the choice. A lot of times, you don't have a choice. You have to burn it wherever it is to keep her alive and the healers though unfortunately may get picked off pretty quick so let's see what p castro does indeed it is root riders and valkyries as we're gonna have the queen with the healer puppet indeed yes you're right now we do see them on my stream they do burn pretty quickly i hope that it doesn't happen on this one because you can get really nice value as you mentioned by getting some additional health especially if you lose the unicorn, it's really nice to get some additional health back up on the queen because she's one of the strongest heroes in the game. Now, the overgrowth spell in already on the Town Hall Monolith and Eagle Artillery. Those Eagle Artillery shots are not going to be hitting hard on these Root Riders. Now, the spell does not stop the Clan Castle troops from emerging, though. As you can see, they were all slowed down here by those Ice Golems, but not a lot of defenses were still up to slow them down. With that king being placed to the, I believe, is he in the core with the troops? I think he's at the top side of the base. There's a few Root Riders are actually coming up there. Uh, the queen is actually making her way down to the bottom. And, oh no, the king is also down at the bottom as well with the queen. So they're making their way through there as giant bombs have popped from the bottom side. But the town hall is now back active. And we have an invisibility spell near this town hall. So that could be a problem as he's already deployed the royal champion. Yeah, we've seen it oh, before no. when it looks like this with the monolith there, the eagle artillery hitting hard as well. Oh, I'm getting nervous because there's a lot of major defenses. We are missing the multi inferno here as well. As you can see, that will take down the unicorn. So good thing he does actually have the healers. There we go. They do pop onto that queen there. One of them is in range of this multi inferno. It looks like it will be taking a bit of damage. We'll be pulling them even closer. Wow. Though, but look at how much health the queen is getting back. Look at that. These teams are fighting for speed and it's costing them the one stars potentially. Will this queen be able to get the town hall with the invisibility spell? I don't believe so. And the ego artillery is still raining fire down. That queen's going down and it is a one star. Not good for P Castro here of Navi. And like we said, if you just focus on getting three stars, that might just be winning you the war just by that. You are using the overgrowth, costing you to run around and costing so many one stars. This is the most amount of one stars we've ever seen because of this attack. It could be oh. a fast triple, yes, but it seems like it's almost at this point like 50-50. Let's use the overgrowth. Let's get a fast triple. But if it doesn't get a fast triple, it's a one. That's a huge yeah. risk. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely in the mind at the moment. That's where it is. The fact that they think that they have to get those triples down and triple fast is definitely costing it. Yeah. We've seen it not once, not twice, maybe even like four times now where it's fallen short like this. So maybe later on, maybe even tomorrow, we might see a whole switch. Maybe we won't be seeing these quick attacks. Maybe it'll be all about getting the safe triples on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would assume they're going to have to take this and really think about it like is it worth the risk of using that overgrowth on the town hall to avoid it to try to speed it up so what does that mean for everyone that's watching and just doing your regular war attacks i would say probably don't necessarily do that because it may result in a one star especially when it comes to your clan war league you don't want to leave your clan your uh, clan with a one star in the cwl that definitely won't be good but the root run uh, did you do that Coco. No, I would uh, never. Oh, no. All right. I mean, what? 
If there's anyone in chat that knows, I'm sure there are people. Let us know. Uh oh, it, could it be Coco <laughs> that one star is in her clan? And did you cost? Did you cost your clan a potential promotion? I would never. Coco? I would did never. You? What? What are these accusations? <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Well, I guess we'll have to see what Sakrana can do after a one star from Navi. Yeah, it's tough to recover from that, especially the mindset going into yeah. this match now with such an offense heavy meta knowing that you are two star behind when sometimes even just a few buildings and one star is the difference they have to make sure that their their game is on point and they have to get triple after triple and hope for a defense now synchronic are very comfortable at the moment mm -hmm. they just have to make sure that they are playing it safe getting those triples down and they don't have to stress about time at all at the moment with general x coming in with the root riders and we have queen down to the bottom side king as well well we're gonna go with a jump no overgrowth here okay definitely don't want to take the risky approach there as the jump is going to give king access to the rigisha cannon but unfortunately we have an ice golems that are going to slow this king down yeah king goes to ability will exactly as you said be slowed down in here in range of the monolith as well and general x sees that uses a freeze to stop that monolith from hitting his king to keep him alive a little bit further which then redirect onto the valkyries coming in from the right hand side with those root riders of course now no overgrowth spell as we said we've got that jump spell the king unfortunately doesn't make it all the way into the town hall compartment does but does clear out pretty nicely on the south hand side. With a freeze onto the town hall here, the queen's making her way to the left. Unfortunately, she was going down, but the rage brings her back up. And the mind lift, though, is locking out on the ward and taking him down. And what's going to go for this town hall here? A couple of riders have made their way there. Super minis coming out of the siege barracks, taking out the mind lift here as he continues his way around. Headhunters to the top side king as the town <gasps> hall. Wait, 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 wait. We still have RC ability. We're okay, right? We're okay. Wait for it. Queen no longer has her ability. A couple of super barbs can come in to go try to help the town hall. Two packers? He's fine. He's fine, right? Oh, there goes the royal champion ability. She regains some health. She's super speedy. Queen's not going to be able to help her out, though, in this compartment. Good thing she was made invisible. And Ooh. he's got the town hall down. I got nervous for a second there, but General X kept his cool and he got it done. He got another triple on the board, which will hold them two stars in the lead, even if Navi triple their next attack. Imagine getting a 99% one star. You know, that couldn't have happened to any of us, right? There's no way uh, it's you. Wait, um, but I mean, last building, town hall, very risky approach, but it pays off and gets the three star here. So well done to General X. Synchronic, all they got to do is just coast their way with more triples or even a two star. They'll be fine because of a single one star from P. Castro to start off the match. Yeah, the triple ice golem, I think that slowed down a lot in the heart of the base there for the king. Now you use the triple ice golem usually to slow down these smash type of attacks, which is i.e. the uh, root riders, yeah. which will hold everything in place whilst they take damage. He did try and help out with that free spell, but unfortunately the king died off a little bit too soon, which did make it a little bit risky there on the south, but it still paid off uh, at the end. Yeah, I was able to get a hey, three stars to three star here yep. and helping your team trying to get to that perfect war. And if you win this match here, you're going to then take on Tribe Gaming in the semifinals. And the winner of that will go to the grand finals and await the team coming from the lower bracket. And you'll have a huge advantage mm -hmm. in the upper bracket here as these teams are competing for $10,000 first place prize here in the clash of clans world warm-up there's no golden ticket or anything like that on the line this is just for the prize money here and you know kind of it's for some bragging rights to say you won the first kind of clash of clans esports tournament in 2024 yeah, definitely. And mm. they're giving us a fantastic taste of what's to come from the upcoming seasons as well. Yeah. Because honestly, Clash of Clans, the World Championship is just around the corner as well. Yep, indeed. And you know, it's going to be here before you know it. And I can't wait to see what will happen throughout this year. And whatever's happening now is going to be completely 
completely different than what we're going to see later in the end of the year because it always changes, right? So from the beginning of last year to the to the end of last year, it was completely different. It, that's what happens every single time. Metas change. You have different changes and balances, so you never know what we're going to see here. But Gaku is going with something different of Super Bowlers and a Warden Walk, and they know that, hey, time's not a factor, so don't worry about the Rue Riders. Let's go with a different attack that's going to get us to three-star. Now, Super Bowlers are quite nice because they do some additional damage further on from the defense that they're targeting. At this moment, Gaku is just being very patient. He's using some additional healers. That last one deployed there just to make sure that that Warden doesn't go to ability too soon. And it, combining the Warden with the Rage Gem with these Super Bowls is going to be huge. Now, it will not speed them up, but it will make sure that they are enraged, doing some additional damage. And he's seen that there is an early single Inferno, so that Ice Golems will be coming in and freezing it and tanking it for the bowlers, jumping over these walls into the core of Philip's base. And here with the Ice Combs coming out, popping that Warden Internal Tome to help protect everything, making his way to that Town Hall. The Super Bowlers are going to take the jump, get those bounces, skipping on through, as we have those balloons that were trying to path their way into the core to help pull some red air bombs, which is probably littered everywhere around the Town Hall to help protect the healers, as the Double Pekkas are now moving their way on the outside. Yeah, we got that skeleton spell to distract the monolith that is on the back end of this base. The bowlers are still alive in this compartment with the healers now, which will help push them even further, keep them alive up against that damage. The scatter shot will be going down. He's freezing, I think, the enemy queen there, which is really nice. So he'll be able to get some additional buildings down. Oh, is it going to be enough? Uh -oh. We have two freezes still left, though, and the royal champion ability. Oh, boy, the enemy queen still is up. The king has got a lot of health. The RC goes invisible with two freezes and the monolith up. The healers have transferred to some Pekkas, luckily distracting the defensive king and taking him down. The RC now goes to the enemy queen, one shots her with the RC ability and a freeze. He should be able to get this. Yeah, there goes the freeze. There is a bomb tower though, which is not very hog rider friendly. But the Royal Champion gains some health. She's speeding up there. The last few, uh, the last freeze coming in there as well, just to stop that incoming damage. It's not enough. Gaku has recovered from his previous attack and he's got another triple on the board. And what a beautiful one as well. Nice that we get to see some Super Bowlers in this tournament as well. It's always nice to see different metas, different attacks coming through here and not always being Root Riders and Valkyries. There we go with some different of Super Bowlers. And once the war they know is not going to come down to time, they don't need to bring the Root Riders and Valkyries anymore. They can bring what they're more comfortable with. And that's the thing is a lot of these pro pl players are not really experienced with the Root Rider Valks. Yeah, they might have been doing for the last week maybe the last two weeks or so really practicing it trying to test their bases against it for sure but if something goes wrong in the attack they're more likely not going to be able to recover as quick of course they can recover they're pros they know how to do it but an attack like this let's say super bowlers gaku's done so many more times he can then adjust on the fly to help save and get that three star yeah, comfort is definitely where they have to focus on, especially in this match at the moment. And honestly, I don't know if I'd recommend that as well to do the same thing on the next few matches as well. Because as you said before, they are slipping up in trying to get those fast attacks done. So being comfortable with what you're attacking with might be the key to success at the moment. Einstein is bringing in, might be a queen charge, Lala. I think this might be, is this the second one we've seen today now? I think so, yeah. Rigator has brought one uh, earlier with early attacks. Now Einstein wants to bring his own. And so I guess the only way we can see different attacks at the moment is if one of the attacks fails, so then they start changing up the attack. It's not going to be always Root Riders. As you can see, once they know that the result of the war can be something completely different, they're now switching it up with a whole different mindset. So they all have that idea of time is playing a critical role as the queen's ability is almost forced but he's okay oh she's taking quite a bit of damage good thing the the unicorn is also still alive a rage spell will help regain health there 
also help her get the enemy queen down. Now, he beautifully distracted the mortar on that left-hand side because mortars are not the flame flinger's friend. So he can get that flame flinger to do some additional damage. There is an expo still present there, so it will start to approach it. We'll see how much uh, that he's able to distract it with his queen already going in here. The second wall breaker coming in as well will open up the walls for his queen. She's still struggling a little bit low on health. Good thing she's getting those clan castle troops down and will be able to push forward into this compartment now with these beautiful loons coming in here as well to test for any traps. As that king ability went off, trying to take out the enemy queen. And yes, he does in just a matter of two hits as the queen he perfectly freezes that single target inferno rages the queen up and now he uses a third wall breaker to give queen access to that town hall again some fantastic value is he gonna have to freeze yet again and he does and notice what he didn't do is freeze that ground expo as it is locked onto the queen you don't want to freeze the expo so it stops hitting the queen and then once it on frozen it would have went to the flame flinger which could definitely be very bad so keeping the have the queen tank it as the warden now is moving with the lalo and popping the ability to path towards the mile but the queen needs to grab this town all oh invisibility coming in clutch there keeping that queen alive she still has her ability in the final free spell coming in from einstein on the scatter shot and the town hall which stops the loons taking some damage there on the right hand side however the double uh, multi beams coming in there from the town hall and the inferno on the north hand side at the moment the queen's walking for cleanup on the top hand side of the base she should be able to retrag back into the town hall compartment with the royal champion and get that town hall down and what a beautiful queen charge low a lot of multitasking was needed on this one but he gets it done another triple on the board for synchronic three four three they're looking to get two more triples here and they don't they don't care what navi will do for the rest of their attacks they can even just get a triple and a two star and they will be fine in this match to think that that's all you need against a team like navi is crazy because of a one star that came in from p castro with that very first attack which was a one star 88 percent and if we do take a look and you know if we have time on our mind granted they are not going for time anymore. They're at 5 minutes, 20 seconds with three attacks. You know, that's still relatively pretty quick, even having a Queen Charge Lalo in the mix there. Yeah, well, time doesn't really make a difference unless they get a 1-star 88. Now, the odds of that happening is a bit <laughs> low, but it is nice yeah. to see that they're still consistently getting some quicker attacks in there than we saw in the previous seasons. Town Hall 15 was definitely not a race of time. If anything, yeah. we saw a lot of time fails at Town Hall 15. Yeah, we did, and they were always going for the... Th obviously going for the 3-stars, and when they got the 3-stars, it was so rewarding. This one, it is rewarding if you are, you know, if you're comfortably getting the three star. It's very nerve wracking if you're forgetting the town hall, overgrowthing it, running around, and then finishing on it. And hey, it can pay off, it can get it done, but it can be very risky as well. So the next attacker we still have for Navi Stars, Klaus, and Kazuma. I'm thinking yeah. Kazuma's probably gonna be next because recently Klaus has always been attacking last. And the stars may come second to last. They do switch it up sometimes here. But typically, a lot of these times, these pro players and these teams tend to stick with a certain order that the players come in. So that they're always comfortable. They're like, okay, I always know I go first, so I'm going to go first. I always know I come third, I'm going to go third. So they don't have to be like, oh, no, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So then they're kind of rushing, which could cause them to make a mistake. Let's say if they're trying to get their army prepped and ready to go at the very last moment. Yeah, it makes them comfortable in a specific position as well. Like if you know that you can open a war and do a triple early can also mm -hmm. help really well with your teammates uh, mindset into the remainder of the match. So putting your team in the best position possible can literally be the decider of the match because you're in the best headspace and that you're motivated to push forwards. A one star as we saw in this one can be really tough to recover from, but not just by stars, but also mentally to push forwards in the attack now as you mentioned stars is up in fact next now he's got his heroes on the left hand side and he's combining the lalo with some zap quakes and he actually has one bat spell in the combination here too yeah with the early warden ability protecting this blimp flying across for the town hall and sometimes that one bat spell can be used like as a distraction for a stone slammer to help protect as it moves around but 
Obviously, he went with that blimp to help secure the town hall as the invisibility spell also goes off. As Stars is trying to fly the balloons around from the right side with the Raw Champion going in through the enemy RC to the top side as he's distracting the Monolith to help protect these balloons pathing their way around. Yeah, we've also got the Diggy in there. Really nice value to get the Diggy. Always important to have the Diggy, I feel like, in the combination on these heroes, which helped stun that Monolith as well. We're pathing towards the single Inferno, which is not going to be able to get all of these loons down. The Eagle Artillery is one of the final buildings down, interestingly enough, and we have quite a quick Lalo coming in here. We just reached over that one-minute mark. The amount of loons still up, as well as cleanup. Stars is being really quick with his attack today indeed 61 seconds in the first one this one was like about 70 seconds really quick here for stars getting a three star and not even using the root riders and Velks coming in with a lalo and the only way to be quick with a lalo if you want to get it towards 60 seconds is you got to have everything come in in different compartments of the base and you can't come in with any queen charges no warden walks you got to start right away with the troops and then you have to think about spells coming down at the same time as the troops are down if you want to be quick yeah i mean we mentioned the bat spell now usually we see a lot of skeleton spells to distract why don't you tell us a little bit why that we have a bat spell instead of a skeleton spell to distract the defenses well if he's going air anyways the bat spell would just be an aid to the air if he had skeleton spells Anything that is ground in the area will target the skeleton. So, for example, if there are ground expos, then the skeletons are going to get taken down even quicker due to the ground expo. So you might as well just go with something that already is in air and only air stuff will target it to help protect your air troops. So as Philip is going to come in with Root Riders and Valkyries, and he initially drops this jump to send this king right on in through and get some fantastic value here. Yeah, he's getting really nice value with his king pathing into here. Ability goes off and he can actually clear up multiple defenses at the same time. Now the scatter shots are enraged. He will have to go to revive here from the Phoenix before going for the scatter shots, which will actually help push away those clan castle troops from him so he can continue doing some damage before he goes down. Now the Root Riders with an additional heal through that bomb tower so that he can hold on to the Warden ability just a little bit longer. As Valkyrie's super minions coming out of the siege barracks. Pekka's are running their way up to the top side. And now he path in his way to the town hall with a Warden Eternal Tome and the Healing Tome to try to help bring them back up. And using a freeze early enough so the defensive raid spell tower does not get activated as the Royal Champ is also now coming down to the bottom side, trying to distract the monolith with a skeleton spell. Yeah, Royal Champion can get some really nice value if she doesn't take too much damage. As you can see, the skeletons are also, they're just building up around that uh, monolith as well. A few of them do go down to the multi-inferno though, finally, but the Royal Champion gets it done. She still has the fox, which is making her go invisible over and over again, which helps protect her. The ability goes off, speeding her up and the amount of damage that she's doing. And it's all about cleanup. He's got it done. Another triple on the board for Synchronic. Now, dare I say it, what's going to happen with the final attack from them? Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark my words. <laughs> what will he do? Will it be able to be a three star or will it not get a perfect war? Perfect war. I mean, uh, hmm. I'm really thinking, how strong is this Jinxing power? How strong oh, no. is this? Okay, hold on. Mark, you will indeed get the second perfect war here for Skronik. You got it. There you go. I believe. Oh, I believe. There's the jinx. I believe. No, what do you mean? I believe in Mark. There's the jinx. I'm you jinxed before. My belief. You jinxed before. You know, don't worry. It's, it's the past. Don't worry about that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not going to repeat itself. No shot. No. Of, of Mark, course Mark, not. Mark's going to do it. I believe. I'm, I'm a believer in well, Mark. We'll see. As long as it's not a one star 88, they okay, will take there's the no victory. Way. There's no way it's a one star 88. There's, there's no chance. There's no chance Mark pulls that off. But of course, we have now Kazuma and Klaus still to come in for Navi. So probably Kazuma's going to be next. And then Klaus usually will close it out. 
of this war, but they do have the one star that is from P. Castro. Obviously, once you see a one star, it's very demoralizing as a player when you see that on your own team. But at that point, you still know, I gotta bring three stars and still gotta do my best. It could be a practice moment, you never know, right? Against these bases. And when these bases are specifically designed to try their best, they know it's really difficult, but try their best to stop those Root Rider Valkyrie attacks. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they're not going home just yet. As we mentioned many times before, for those who just tuned in, yeah. it is double elimination. So even if Navi get perfected, they're not going home. They'll just be yeah. jumping down to the lower bracket. There are already some amazing teams down there. Yeah. It is looking like a very feisty lower bracket. So I wouldn't want to be even in the lower bracket in this tournament. So they can yeah. still have a chance they just have to put in a little bit more effort to make it all the way to that grand finals yeah no team has been eliminated yet right we will though eliminate two teams later today so we have two more matches after this one and both of those next matches will be elimination matches meaning that if you lose that one you are officially out of the tournament and you don't have a chance of making it to tomorrow yeah Exactly. That's, nobody wants to go home at this point. There's a lot on the line. $30,000 total and first place $10,000. So every attack matters. And Kazuma is in with another attack. And we have more Root Riders combined with the Super Barbarians and the Valkyries. We're starting off on the right hand side. He's also got some Zap Quakes. Where is the most value to get these down? Hmm. Well, let's see. We have a multi... No, we're not going with multi. Going for the multi-archer tower. That's what I was trying to say. You know, multi? Not the Inferno. Of course, of course. As he's pathing his way to the Eagle Artillery. Going to lure out typically Ice Golems, which are really going to help try to slow down the attacking army. And many people probably don't realize or didn't take notice that remember Lava Hounds used to be meta into the defense of Clan Castle. Well, in the recent update, Lava Hounds got weaker on the defensive side only. Because when a Lava Hound now pops, it pops with less Lava Pups than before. So that's why a lot of these teams also are starting to pick Ice Golems instead because of that change too. Yeah, it's interesting that he actually brought the Log Launcher in here as well. It's almost as if he knew that his Root Riders wouldn't be opening them up all the way on that right-hand side. There is still one present on that Monolith, but will be dying out slowly here. Now he has got a bunch of Freezes still remaining, and Kazuma uses them on the Town Hall to protect a lot of these troops that are still remaining. Those Hogs from the Royal Champion, the Queen's trying to break through these walls for cleanup. And as you can see on that left, he used that Skeleton Spell for the Headhunter to get the Enemy King down. Very nicely done. Navi with yet another triple on their board. They are really trying to recover from that one star that they had earlier on as the opener of this match. Well done to you, Kazuma. Getting it done now. They're down two stars, though, 12 to 10, as Sikronik is looking to finish it off with one more attack here. And they do it. Mark up to you to get the second perfect war here this today in the competition. And then we'll have Klaus to close it off for Navi with one final attack. And he's come in with a Lalo attack before, so we'll see if he does that again. But well, Mark, 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 will it be the Root Riders and Valks? Or are you going to stick to something that is more likely or kind of more comfortable for you to come in with a three star? Well, he needs a safe two star for the win. Yeah, so how safe is he going to play is going to be the decider of what he's mm -hmm. going to bring. Maybe Root Riders and his plan is key. Maybe that's exactly what he's going to stick with because that's what his thought out plan is. Because sometimes if you change your plan midway through war, even if you have the lead, if you play it in a different direction, it could still cost you the attack. So let's yep. see what he's got. Oh, oh, Electro Titans, probably combining it with a water walk, which will help push these Electro Titans into the middle of this base. As you can see, he's getting that going there on the right hand side. A few loons as well in this comp to make sure that he can test for any potential traps. And he's also starting to clear out on the south hand side. Now, this is a very favorite strategy from Town Hall 15. With these Electro Titans, five of them, as that 
Flameflinger is going to try to grab the Ricochet Cannon from the bottom side. The Electro Titans are down with a jump as well to give him access straight into the Monolith compartment. The Town Hall as he's going to lure out the Clan Castle as well as he has a handful of balloons moving in to test for Seeking Air Mines to really protect the healers. They still hanging on to this Warden Eternal Tome to really protect everything as they try to make their way closer to this Town Hall with double poison spell towers. Now, as you see, the Clan Castle troops have emerged. He did not bring a poison spell, and the reason for this is that the aura from these Electro Titans do some additional damage on nearby traps, but also those Clan Castle troops. Now, we've got them in range of that Town Hall. The healers are also taking some damage from this multi Inferno, so it's a perfect time for Mark to use that Warden ability to protect all these electro titans and the healers as well now unfortunately this multi inferno is still standing which will be doing a lot of damage on these healers yeah as that queen is trying to path her way around does have her no no more the queen is gone flame fling is probably going to be opening up here soon as the king ability goes off with that giant gauntlet with one more rage and a freeze the rush champion still has her ability and she's making her way to the top side goes invisible with that spirit fox and then she passed, not to the multi, but to the cannon to try to get towards that Tesla farm now. Yeah, this is just going to be a little bit slow on the end here. Royal Champion does have her ability. The Fox is still alive as well, which was making her invisible. It's not going to be up for much longer, though. One final invisible uh, four seconds, I think it is, for the Royal Champion there, which before she uses her Royal Champion ability, which chains from defense to defense. She's a little bit distracted by some traps, but it's not going to be enough to slow this attack down. And Mark has come in with not only just a triple, but is finalizing the stats and getting a perfect war down for Synchronic against not any team. They're facing Na'Vi as well, which is a very consistent team. Well done. The perfect war and Mark did get it done well done to you hey there's no jinxing over here i knew it right i knew it all along well done and that's our second perfect war that we are seeing here today and we'll probably be seeing more either later or tomorrow for this day two of the playoffs and we still have two more matches to come after this one so you don't want to go anywhere because those have even more on the line because those are elimination matches you lose those, you are officially eliminated, and you are going home, and you don't have a chance to try to make your way back and try to get into the Grand Finals, even though a run from the lower bracket after losing your very first match is very difficult. So we're going to see now Klaus to come in to close it off here for Navi, and my guess is probably going to be some sort of Lalo attack. Oh, we'll wait and see. Sometimes he switches it up at the end, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends what they're in the mood for, since at the moment this doesn't really matter. It might affect his stats though, since we have got some win streaks which we may or may not have ruined. <laughs> so we'll just wait and see, but again, I'm very excited to see, because we had Synchronic, they had some really fast attacks. This one they did slow down a little bit because they did have the advantage, maybe that played a role in some of these slower attacks, but in the past they have done some really fast attacks and they're going to be facing tribe in the next round so i'm wondering how uh, that match is going to turn out yeah with the queen now placed has one healer on her probably the healer puppet if he pops anymore is this going to be a queen charge a lalo as we got an early early warden with the balloons and the blimp the fly cross warden ability goes to protect the blimp flying towards this town hall as the king ability also is taking out that eagle with ease yeah, we've got that ward ability protecting these loons on that right hand side. It does wear off though. So we'll have to wait and see how that continues. We've got freezes coming in very nicely, freezing some of that splash damage. We have more loons that cleared out that north hand side compartment before pathing towards the left. There's a lot of loons scattered around the base. There is that super dragon, which is doing quite a bit of damage in the middle of this base, but with three freezes and the haste still remaining, is it going to be enough? to slow this one down i don't think so klaus getting it done of course klaus is delivering a three star and unfortunately that one attack that was the second attack in this match from pete castro being a one star is all the different difference three star three star three star three star and then a perfect war from Sokranic. 
all across the board. And the only one difference, unfortunately, for Pete Castro, not able to get it done. And that is very out of character, you know, from Pete Castro. You expect the three stars. And this one, if he didn't get that one star, then it could have come down to time. And in terms of time, it was actually Navi with the time advantage. But you have to take into account Sacronic after that one star, they weren't even thinking about time. Yeah, look at these attacks from uh, Navi. We have them just above that one minute mark on some of them. One eleven twice from Klaus and Stars. They did some really quick attacks previously. And as you can see, they are a bit slower on this one. But I don't think that's what they were going for for this one. They are able to still keep up with those quick attacks, as you can see. We have uh, Simon over there on that right-hand side with one minute 13. There are other attacks, they just changed it up a little bit. That's why we even had those Electro Titans in there, which was really nice to see a strategy from Town Hall uh, 15 be used at Town Hall 16 as well, when time was not going to be the decider. Oh, absolutely. But let's go and welcome back Itsu here now. Itsu, what did you think of that match with a one star, which was the only difference there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, those one stars just keep happening. It's it's kind of crazy. Uh, they're just slipping in every single every single time. But what I'm really excited for is then the match tomorrow between Tribe and Synchronic because that's the only two teams so far in the playoff stage which were able to get 15 stars. And that's then going to be an, an epic match, an epic showdown to really find out if they can keep that and perform and again under pressure. Yeah, and they had the previous match that we saw it was not a perfect war from Synchronic. But the final attack, again, only had to be a safe two-star, which is why I think they brought in those dragons at the very end. So maybe it was on the board to maybe even have that double perfect, but they just went for the safe two-star to make sure that they did get the victory at the end of the day. Yeah, I got the three-star, and, you know, you, you're able to advance and move on. And now their next focus is Tribe. They're not going to play the rest of the today. They're done, and they're going to be playing tomorrow in the upper bracket. So let's take a look at where we currently stand. With Tribe Gaming and Sacronic, the only two teams left in the upper bracket to then try to make it to the grand finals. But then we have some amazing matches still to come in the lower bracket. With the first one, VA Esports taking on Psycho Esports. And then VM Legacy versus Imperium Titans. But still, Navi and Early Attacks are both in the lower bracket now here. It's They are both there, that's for sure. Might be surprised as well, because I feel like a lot of people had Navi as one of the favorites. But Synchronic yeah. looked really, really strong in their matches. We're really nice to see the transition from, okay... We have to go like really quick with, with some of the attacks to playing way more relaxed, way more controlled. And that really showed in their attacks with getting that 15 score in the end. Navi, well, with the first attack already, I feel like that's already one of the worst feeling um, for the team overall as well. With like having a fail in the first attack, like one star, two star, fail in general. Um, because in the current meta, you do not want to have a start like that. It really, really is hard to come back from for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say. The meta, you can see that sometimes they're really not enjoying it at times, but then you can see that some of the big name teams are still above everyone else. This is why the, the teams that we're watching today, these are some of the teams that we've been watching consistently across multiple different town halls. They're very consistent. And the next match is going to be con like, we have teams that have been established, players as well. Uh, VM, they are a very strong team at the moment. And Psycho, they're actually a team of... Uh, a bunch of different players from multiple different teams. So I wonder if that's actually making a difference in their performance or not, because they are friends, but they might have not played many tournaments together. Yeah, indeed. But we're getting ready for the next match here, which is the first match of the lower brackets. Let's see who's able to avoid elimination and keep their hopes alive. That's right. This match is for staying alive in this tournament. We have Psycho with Burger Buzz. Coming in first, we have the Root Riders. And I guess we will see a lot of them again in this match until and if we see a fail happening in this matchup. Yeah, the Root Riders going directly into that single Inferno as well as pathing over that Poison. Or was that his Poison, actually? Uh, 
since we've got that poison spell on that right hand side, which helped get those clan castle troops down. Queen is clearing up pretty nicely around the outside. She might not go into this town hall. She might go. I oh know she does. She will go into this town hall compartment, do some uh, support with those root riders going in here. However, the invisibility spell tower will make the town hall invisible, and they'll take quite a bit of damage in here if he doesn't freeze. Oh, and he missed that freeze on the town hall. Oh, the freeze. But is it really important for the back end? Because, especially with the king ability, it seems like. Nothing is holding him back. He's just going through the last couple of defense like it's nothing. And there's only some storages alive at this point. It's going to be around 1 minute 30 attack. And the last defense should go down with one Fraser left to deploy. And that's... Wait. Actually, there's another building at the bottom. So I didn't see it behind the scroll bar. There's a barracks, I believe. Which means it's going to be 1 minute and something like 40 seconds. Yeah, a little bit on the slower side on that one. I think VM, uh, VA also have some really quick attackers in here as well. So we'll see if they're able to counter that with those uh, quick attacks coming in there as well. But first hit, first triple from Burger Boss, getting Psycho Esports at the best position possible. Yes, giving his team a nice position to start this match into, especially with having like already seen the last minute, right, with Navi with their first attack. Like, you never want to have that happen. But now we have VA Esports, and they are coming in next. I think, if I remember correctly as well, they had one of those um, fails, like bigger fails earlier today. So we hope that they were able to recover um, with, with their team and going to this match then with their head held high and a good momentum. Yeah, I mean, it, Psycho in a very good position now. They're just bouncing the ball into VA's uh, court. They have to triple now as well if they want to call it even. They have done some really cool attacks. I think Dobbs is on this team as well, if I'm correct. And Dobbs has done some really quick attacks previously, I think with Electro Dragon. So I wonder if we'll be seeing a bit of a, a mixture between what we'll see on these bases. Obviously, Root Riders is a very favorite as well as the Lalo. Super Dragons are quite a favorite. We haven't been seeing too many Electro Dragons, but they are still an occasional uh, choice. Yes, but it's back to the Root Riders on this one with the Seize Barracks, which is just so much more powerful with the latest level with the extra P.E.K.K.A. which you gain from that. We have as well the Root Riders now getting pushed into the first Rage Tower. And there is again this one big spell which I'm scared of because that is the Overgrowth spell. Yeah, the overgrowth spell makes sure that, that these Root Riders go for the other defenses first. As you can see, there it comes, freezing that Town Hall, making it frozen in place. Won't be doing damage, but also these troops will not see it as a defense at the moment. They will go all the way around it before coming back to get that Town Hall down. Now, we left the uh, Monolith out of this spell. So the Royal Champion actually went and got it down and she still has her ability while she's clearing up with the troops on the right hand side. Now we have seen this be the reason why some of these attacks have been getting some one stars. However, this one is looking pretty promising, making sure that that Monolith went down uh, before that Town Hall was back on the board, I think is really crucial. Royal Champion gets that Town Hall down. This one is a really quick attack here as well. 1 minute 48 seconds, I think, was remaining on this one. And Max is coming in, responding to Psycho's uh, triple and getting another one on the board here. Yes, a nice three star with the Overgrowth spell. Nice to see that that's uh, possible out of the latest couple of attacks. Well, we have seen some players struggle quite a bit, but overall we have seen a huge variety of like spell combinations with the Root Riders. We have seen a heavy um, Skeleton spell support when we see Signal Front Towers, for example. But as well, we have seen the Overgrowth combination as the Jump spell from Synchronic earlier. So overall, kind of like a variety inside this mass Root Rider approach. But I feel like the troops most of the time are somewhat the same. Yeah. I mean, we are always looking at how quick the attacks are, but again, I've said it before, these we've not had to go based off of time just yet. So hopefully we see a bit of a shift in the attacks because at the moment they are strong and they are safe. But if one of these players is not 100% sure about the attack, is it, how is it going to go? It might be more valuable to go for that safe triple rather than going for the quick one. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. I mean, we have seen some of the matches where 
early on we had like a solid defense or something where the teams have switched up their approaches the strategies to approach those different bases with super bowlers from gaku like uh, for example and, and other different type of attacks which we have seen not that often compared to the root riders um so you kind of have to hope for some type of a defense for one of those teams to really make sure that well we see some more variety then within the attack combinations and troop combinations yeah i think it just leaves a lot more room for error because you've sent everything in and there's no room to try and recover when you've already sent in all your troops and all your heroes so we'll see what happens spiz is up with the next attack for psycho and he's starting with the siege on the south hand side and we've got all of these root riders they're storming the base from the left of course with the warden and the king in there as well as a few headhunters to help get the enemy queen down Yes, we have a nice spread so far of those different troops. We have the non-defense building right in front of the cannon, so everything is kind of going around it, giving the cannon a little bit more time to actually uh, deal some damage. The single phone tower locked onto one of those root riders, so the first one is for sure going down. But is it enough damage with the huge lightning value which he invested earlier into the attack? Yeah, everything just went really slowly into this multi-inferno compartment and everything's trailing a little bit around the outside now. And as we said, not a lot of recovery still up. The king is pathing into that town hall compartment. There is a wall still separating him. However, with his ability, he might be able to do some damage, but he's going for the defenses on the outside of the base, Itsu. Oh, uh, whenever the town hall is like staying up like this, later in the attack, I'm really scared with like what we had happen over the day so far root rider opening up the next compartment he has the queen ability and he has one more phrase but is that going to be enough the king is tanking the queen is going for this expo next is she then in range of the town hall she is not that is massive for him the town hall should go to wait this queen he's controlling this queen with the controller that is just perfect pathing from her yeah, good thing that Monolith was already low. That final freeze is beautiful here on the Town Hall and the Expo. Queen uses her ability, goes invisible, gains some healers here as well. King's on revive, trying to go for that building there on the north hand side. And Queen gets the Expo down. We were worried for a second there, but his Queen came in clutch. And Spiz has yet another triple on the board. He did not fall short on that one we were worried not another one star i'm always scared when i see a town hall up specifically when the monolith is still there as well yeah i mean that's it's always a little bit uh, nerve-wracking when such things happen but the root rider the one last root rider opening up those compartments for the queen was the game changer on this one i feel like if this did not happen we could have seen another fail which uh, would have not been optimal for those teams so he was safe getting that three star on this one and they are still so far perfect, especially with knowing how Psycho has performed in the tournament so far. They were not one of the strongest offensive uh, teams, so they really have to make sure that they're using their last life now in this tournament to really make it count. Yeah, I mean, they're good attackers as an individual. I've seen them play in a variety of different tournaments. But as I said, I think this is a newer team that they put together. They're playing for fun, and you can see that the fun is actually really helping them. They made it, I think, through the first qualifier as well, and they just qualified straight away. Through the group stage, they played pretty nicely as well, made it through to the playoffs, and here they are still outperforming um, at times as well. We've got Dobbs with the Electro Dragons. Now he's previously done some really quick attacks. So this might, I don't know if this is one of his favorite attack strategies, but everything's coming in from the left hand side. Warden ability active to get the blimp into the town hall compartment. And as you can see, he's frozen the invisibility spell tower beautifully. And will go off here as it gets destroyed, but the town hall is down. Yeah, channel is down, but can the spread now be good enough off those dragons? The chains should be great as soon as the electric dragons are reaching actually the last couple of storages, but they're splitting away into the wrong direction. Everything now is relying on his heroes, which are around the eagle, but take a look at the last couple of chains dealing a ton of damage to the multi inferno tower, to the cannon, to the expo as well. But the expo staying alive with little hit points. Sending the Royal Champion now in to make sure this expo is going down. 
Yeah, that queen needs to stay alive. She has ability and the unicorn still available to make sure she gets as much health back as possible. Oh, there goes that queen ability with the additional healers. We'll be able to keep her alive a little bit longer. World Champion did her job very nicely. Going in, gets that expo down. The warden at the moment is cleaning up solo with a few archers on that right-hand side. World Champion, though, with her ability. Haste Vile going off, speeding her up, getting those last few defenses down. He has a freeze still left and he does it even need it now this is not his quickest attacks on the book but it is a triple and a triple is what matters at the moment nicely done for sure the freeze is again the last spell not getting used but the time is quite long as well i think we can quickly check what the times the average times are looking like and i think so far with the first attack which we have seen from uh, via esports, the first attack was just so quick that this a little bit longer attack, like slower attack, is not the biggest difference. So right now we have the average time about one minute thirty seconds for via esports and one minute forty six seconds for Psycho esports, which means the advantage is on via esports side. Oh, it's getting close. Six stars each. Oh, sometimes it is a game of who's the first one to slip up. And as you mentioned before, it might just be just the funding is not done correctly or there are any potential traps which does stop down the, the amount of funding that you can do. And that could be the hit or miss in some of these matches. So we'll have to just wait and see what they bring next. It could be anybody's war still, though, since it is completely even on stars and percent. Yeah, it's so far a really close one, only time being the difference maker. And there's still plenty of attacks to do, and as we have said earlier, so far we had not a single match which did come down to time. And, well, we have now with the next attack again, Psycho Esports coming in. Tom is the attacker with the Root Rider combination again. Is he going to go into the town, or is there another plan with the Lightnings this time? We don't see an Overgrowth spell. Yeah, we got that one baby dragon already working around that town hall compartment. A few, uh, one root rider with some Valkyries clearing up for the queen, which will give the funneling for these root riders into the scattershot compartment. The, is the enemy queen there? The Zapquakes coming in, gets the monolith and the invisibility spell tower down. So he doesn't have to worry about it going invisible. I'm assuming he still wants his queen to go in to get that town hall compartment though. Yeah, the queen. Again, we have the one magical root rider opening up the compartment. Again, for the queen, she should be able to reach that tunnel really easily now. But the core troops are getting slowly stuck. There is some rocket loons actually on top of those root riders doing a ton of damage. There is a couple of wizards taking it finally down. And now it's all about the back end. Can he and push through the expo, scatter, inferno tower? All of that splash and heavy hitting defenses. Yeah, there's still quite a lot remaining. There goes the final free spell as well for the Royal Champion. We've got the Fox, uh, which we want to keep alive. That Ricochet Cannon was bouncing off of these Royal Champion. The Rocks just, just about to stay alive there. But Royal Champion goes to ability. Will speed her up towards that northern side with the Haste Val. King is also still alive, which will be able to tank as well for those last few defenses. We have got that Troll Hidden Tesla Farm at that northern side still standing there. But with the amount of heroes still left, the amount of power will be able to clear that off of Dobbs' base. Tom with yet another triple in here as well. Yeah, but the Tessa farm is taking some time to clear, but the three star is there anyways. It's one minute and around 45 seconds-ish around. So we have to wait then for the VA Esports site, what they can bring to the table and what they can, uh, well get in their next attack because they are up next and so far this match is looking really really solid surprised by the stars by the results so far that this is a lower bracket match because remember whoever is going to lose this is dropping out of this playoff bracket out of this entire tournament yep we're gonna be saying goodbye to one of these teams they're gonna be the first ones to leave that's so sad we never want to be saying goodbye to some of these teams however we will need to crown a champion at the end of the weekend so there's a lot of big matches coming unfortunately for one of these teams it will be the end of their story though in the world warm-ups for this season yes that's right well I'm just excited for the next attack to see if it's again the Root Riders, which I would highly expect, to be honest. Or is it something different? No, it's back to the Root Riders. 
It's again a core town hall compartment, to, uh, core town hall setup with the rage towers. We see a huge variety by now with different spell towers and everything. Not only rage towers, not only poison towers. I think still the majority of rage towers. That would be my, my speculation. Um, which is kind of crazy, even though they got nerfed quite a bit. They are still just so, so popular and so strong. But we see the overgrowth spell again. Yeah, we got the Overgrowth spell stopping the Town Hall and the Eagle Artillery. Some extra defenses in there. I think we got that uh, scatter shot in there, which is also nice. So all these route Riders will go for that Monolith before continuing on the right-hand side. Queen at the moment, she's clearing up around the outside. And as you can see, there is the Royal Champion. Now, she's on the left. She's dealing with that Hound, which is actually going to be really nice for the uh, Royal Champion to deal with, though, to try and get a defense. She's going to be slowed down by picking off all of these pups one by one as she takes some damage in here. He does see that, freezes the Town Hall and the Multi-Archer Tower to try and keep that Royal Champion alive. Yeah, the Royal Champion, with her ability at the freeze, should for sure get that Town Hall down without any problems whatsoever. But the cannon out of reach right now for Queen and King might be a problem. Again, it's one Root Rider opening up the compartment, being super beneficial. And we have the Royal Champion ability now with that shield and the haste spell, finishing things off and getting another three star. And that's like interesting that we see the shield with the haste spell, which is a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, but I feel like power-wise, you have literally zero health recovery which um, can cost you quite a bit. Yeah. And now we haven't really been seeing much of a time difference, but now we are three attacks in, three perfect attacks down. What do the times look like? Are you able to tell me them? Let me double check the time. So far, we are on 1 minute 31 seconds for VA Esports, and we are on 1 minute 46 seconds for Psycho Esports. So a huge advantage for VA Esports with their attacks with the time uh for now but well it's four attacks total to go uh so many things can happen but so far mm -hmm. this match is only with three stars yeah i mean we're just over halfway now and uh so far only perfect triples in so i was curious to see what we're exactly at because i think this is the first one that made it this far without having a fail on the board yeah i think so i'm trying to remember what the record was so far regarding a streak in a match with perfect attacks. But I think this one might be um, the first one going now and crossing the halftime line um, with attacks and still being only three stars. So, well, we have then Team Psycho Esports going up next again. They have to kind of speed things up a little bit if they are expecting more three stars in this match, um, which I guess they will just keep going for safer options three stars because we have seen so many uh defenses regarding every single match at least that was already always one uh minimum which for the current meta i think could be considered a lot but we see the troll tesla which is not the biggest deal especially if you're bringing valkyries and stuff and it's going to be a far side entry but no overgrowth spell yeah, Zapquake instead clears off a ricochet cannon. It looks like a rage spell tower, which is always nice to get down because that means there's less damage coming in from those defenses and, of course, that multi uh, inferno as well. Now, the Eagle Artillery is already up and doing some damage, and here go those clan castle troops, which are trying to slow down these uh, root riders from that right hand side. Anthony uses his royal, uh, his warden ability to protect these root riders through this multi uh, damage as well as that ricochet because it bounces from not one, not two, but three uh, troops. Yeah, that's it can be really deadly, especially versus the combination of the royal gem with the fox, which is just so good. And the ricochet cannon is kind of like the clear perfect counter for that which sometimes is really, really demotivating as an attacker. But I guess it's uh, it's just fair with how much power this uh, pet and the hero together have. On this one, we have a lot of power as well on the back end because there's just so many root rides left alive. The Royal Champion with some healers taking care of the back end. Town Hall, though, should go down, question oh. mark. Oh, no. There's only one root rider. Was it two root riders? But they are on the south hand side. Good thing he does still have that Royal Champion ability. I think he brought the OG abilities, though. So I think he has the Life Gem and the Seeking Shield. Town Hall is already low. The Diggy is 
still up, stunning the town hall. There goes the Seeking Shield, and Anthony has done it. Another triple on the board. But as you said, their Psycho's attacks, their triples, they're just a little bit slower than those coming in from VA Esports. Yes, again, um, so far, time-wise, they were not really changing their average time with the last attack, right? It was right in their average time frame. And now it's back to VA Esports um, getting their next attack in. They're still, just based on the first three attacks, uh, on average, 15 seconds faster, which is quite a bit considering that there were three attacks. So it's like um, 45 seconds something, right? If I'm not completely mistaken right now. But with the next attack, they could either improve this or maybe give uh, Psycho Esports a chance of coming back. Yeah, I mean, 15 seconds. We saw it in previous matches. Sometimes 15 seconds is just the time needed to deploy everything. So if maybe they just try and save a few seconds here or a few seconds there, that could be the decider of some matches. Some people don't realize how much time that they're actually slowing down their attacks by, by just taking a few seconds here and there. It all adds up at the end of the day. Now, if it does come down to time, VA Esports are in a promising position. If they keep it up, it just has to be quicker than the attacks coming in from Cyclops. Go. Yes, they have to, to for sure stay somehow close, but that's always the thing we were talking about, right? A lot of people are saying that a lot of fails are coming from this pressure of like always trying to perform faster and faster and faster to like then maybe take some certain risks, deploy things even too fast, I guess, that the funnel is not set up, that a building still alive, which then causes that route wise to go in the wrong direction and things like that. Um, so that is for sure always on the table. But so far, both teams looking strong. VA Esports up next. They should hopefully go in any second. And then I guess another route rider variation uh, with, with different spell compositions, which we have seen so far. I would, I, I, I guess, and I hope that we don't see an overgrowth combination because this so far has been the highest chance then of actually resulting in a fail and even a one star. Yeah, I mean, Lalo it has been a favorite, not only in this tournament, but also a few other ones as well. However, Root Rider does seem to be dominating over Lalo still, but you can see Stars did a really, really quick and a really nice uh, Lalo earlier. Also, the base, it was perfectly broken apart, though. He knew how to get all of his loons into the middle of the base as quickly as possible. So it just depends on how these players are able to break down those bases to try and get it done as quickly and as best as possible. Possible. That's, uh, I mean, for sure a good point. Wondering when the next attack will happen for VA Esports as we're waiting for this one um, for them to go in. But that should happen then anytime soon. As well, something which I feel like is kind of unfortunate with a lot of times seeing the same strategies. We see a lot of times as well the same equipment because I feel like equipments overall they're relying so much on the strategy. We're seeing a lot of like I don't know, guides or, or tier lists or whatever. But I feel like as long as you don't do that based on, on strategies, it is just so, so different. Like, for example, for some strategies, the Healing Tome is kind of useless. Well, for them, some other strategies, the Rage Aura for the Warden is great. The same thing pretty much happens for most of the equipments out there. I think the only exception might be Barbarian King with the Giant Gauntlet and the Rage Vial. But otherwise, those equipments for... Uh, are like different for so many different strategies it would be so cool then to like see a different and more variety in the meta itself yeah i mean there's multiple different creative tournaments going on and i think that's why we see quite a lot of variety in those different matches however when you need to be consistent and be as precise as this and don't have a lot of freedom i feel like it does get a bit limiting as you mentioned the king on that is just a favorite i'm pretty sure we saw Pretty much on almost every single one of them, the Gauntlet was present and Leo has brought it in again now. Next attack for VA Esports, again, those Root Riders, and they're going directly into the Town Hall compartment. Yes, they're going straight into that compartment. They have the Overgrowth spell then for the back end, which I am wondering because there is a, a triple raged up multi Inferno Tower setup with two Explos in there as well. I think the... Multi Arch Tower should not get covered by that. But there goes the Overgrowth spell. I think a really important key thing is when you're using a backhand Overgrowth spell like this is to catch the Eagle because that's always a nice thing. And your Root Riders like to, a lot of times, like to group up. And that's then really nice to have the Eagle not shooting at them. 
Yeah, when they are condensed like that and take so much damage, it can be devastating. Because if they were spread out, then it wouldn't be as problematic. But as you can see, this one didn't even matter. Leo has everything going into this compartment. Now that did uh, that was whole held in place by that overgrowth spell. King goes to ability roll. Champion is in here as well under her ability. The final freeze on the outside. We have this one coming in, which is pretty quick yet again for VA Esports. We have one building that will go down there on that right hand side. He had quite a few troops there on cleanup that was still up as well as those heroes. VA Esports, they're looking pretty promising. 12 to 12 stars. Itsu, you were waiting for this moment. We'll see if you will actually get what you've been asking for. I, I am scared a little bit because Carbon Finn showed up again in the chat. So, um, Carbon, please do not jinx this. We highly appreciate this. Uh, that would be amazing. But otherwise, yes, this match looks really, really solid from both sides. Let's quickly double check again the numbers because um, so far, especially with the last attack, VA Esports even improved their average time of 1 minute and 29 seconds now compared to the 1 minute and 46 seconds on the Psycho Esports side. And to everyone who has not watched that many pro matches recently, it is always when it comes down to like deciding who is winning the match. Stars is the most important thing to take a look at. Um, but if it's a 15-15 score, stars are tied up. The same as the percentage, because both teams have the same average percentage then. And the third tiebreaker is time. That's why we're referring to that time quite a bit especially as long as both teams are still perfect in this match. Yeah, I definitely. We had one match, actually, which I've not really seen before. It went to time, and it was not a perfect war. There were defenses on both sides, and it managed to go to time, which I've never seen, I'm pretty sure, in all of these last few years that I've seen all these competitive matches. So it was very funny to see that it didn't go to time even lowered on in those uh, stars and percentages, but that is definitely not common. Yeah, it's. I mean, if it's not on a perfect from both sides, it's really uncommon. That is like going down to the third tiebreaker. That is uh, for yeah. sure kind of rare, but it's always and like, it's funny to see as a from a viewer perspective, maybe not as much for the players because like everyone is going to blame themselves. Like, ah, I could have been like one second faster or maybe like 1% more or something. Um, but either way, we have then the next tag for Psycho Esports. And so far already, as long as they're getting two stars, they're above their star average. And that's like the one thing which we have seen over the last couple of turns, a couple of times that teams are just showing up like crazy in the lower bracket like they're just turning things around i don't know if it's the pressure they need or something but they're just turning around their performance so well maybe psycho esports can do it with that next attack they're getting into this one with the root riders um no yeah yes they're getting in there with the root riders classic equipment combination it looks like with then going in from the far side from the shop side with lightnings yeah, sometimes the lower bracket is a wake-up call, seems to be by some of these teams. And at the moment, both of these teams, as you said, they're showing up and they're doing well. Triple after triple. Let's see if Ghost can get it done. Warden ability on the Root Riders coming in from the north-hand side. And at the moment, he has a cleanup around the outside. We've got the Siege coming in, which will help the Queen. But also, he had these walls open and he cleaned up beautifully to let his king into this compartment and is hoping to get the town hall down with his king. Now he's actually, actually opened up all these walls with the root riders so the king's actually trailing all the way away from this town hall compartment and the root riders are in here instead. Hey, but can they deal enough damage to take down that town hall? That's the question. With the multi Inferno tower, the builder has everything firing at them but they should have enough hit points. Eagle shot though. Wait a second. Wait a second, the town hall oh, is staying no. alive! Don't tell me that they're messing things up now with the last attack. Psycho Esports need that 3 star to force VA Esports as well to triple. But the town hall is on the back end and he has only one spell left. Oh, one freeze. Roll champion. She has the fox, which can be huge value to make it invisible. The scattershot is perfectly distracted by some more of those troops. Freeze is coming in. He had some super barbarians actually going in and sniping the town hall on his own. So he can have the royal champion clean up the last few defenses. The multi inferno is still present, which can do some damage on the fox, which was protecting the queen so far. 
the expo doing damage on the queen and her health is ticking down and it is close the king is still up though itsu oh yeah that king with the phoenix that should be no problem for him to take those buildings out it will take some time yes but he's getting that three star and since psycho esports was back or like was having um not the good time on their side anyways i don't think it matters too much it's more about like the fact that they're getting that three star and forcing VA Esports to three star as well because otherwise we are going to this third tiebreaker, going to time. But Psycho Esports getting it done. Nice job here. That was a bit of a whirlwind of emotions because the king straight away, the root riders were not enough. I got a little bit worried, but it came in clutch at the end. I didn't even see the king was still alive before he came back on screen. And he even had the phoenix still as well. So he would have been able to get a revive to get some additional damage down. And it came in clutch there. We have Psycho with a perfect war now va esports can they do the same they have to otherwise they will be going home yes they have to three star i feel like at this point if we take a look at the time overall any three star is doing the job it doesn't matter if it's like a quick attack a slow attack they just have to three star which uh based on the results so far it's easier to set than done for sure especially with this pressure now on his side getting that last attack in for his team yep triple or nothing all in or go home at this moment we have to get as many stars as possible in that last attack the pressure is on because there's a lot of money on the line for this but also they want to be the first people to make it through and imagine being able to say that you won the first official clash of clans tournament town hall 16 that will uh, that will definitely be one to bragging for i mean of course but there's a lot of money then on the line as well with the first seed getting this $10,000 prize money. But as well, take a look at that. It's a complete different style of base with an, well, more anti three star setup. And he's going in with a Lalo again with the healing tome on his warden. Now, again, time does not matter. He needs the triple on the board for this one. Because we had a previous slow attack there, which does leave a little bit of window of opportunity here. So if he does have anything that strays afar, he can try and recover pretty easily. Is why he's being a bit slow at the moment with his hero dive. Wall breaker beautifully opens up the walls to the scatter shot in here, and there's also an ice golem here, which will freeze the amount of damage going in on his king and his queen. Now those clan castle troops emerge. We have got the dragon the super dragon here he has got a poison down to try and do as much damage as possible and hopefully the queen can reach get that eagle artillery and get the uh super dragon down the blimp has made it but take a look at that the tornado trap perfectly rotating the yetis away from the town hall is the town <gasps> going to go down that's the question he's going to freeze it yeti mice took down the monolith can they take down the town hall next the town is really low oh, oh yetis yetis oh, oh. what no the town hall it's still up he has got a bunch of loons no freezes though to slow down the amount of damage coming in he has got a skeleton spell he uses on the back end world champion is still up here gets that town hall down we're gonna lose all of those loons in this compartment to the giga poison the last few loons coming in from jesus on that left hand side queen is still up world champion goes invisible and jesus has done it gets a triple on the board for va esports and if the times are correct va esports will have the advantage and will be staying in the lower bracket the first 15 15 score match we have so far and it's obviously happening in the lower bracket you cannot make this up oh no 15 15 for both of those teams incredible scores on offense but time is on the side of the esports that we had some close attacks to finish this off but both teams tripled all attacks out and well time is going to be the third tiebreaker yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We do have time that is present on the each individual attacks on that right-hand side. We'll be able to see them all back-to-back -back so we can compare them. 
VA Esports, though, they're not going home. Here we go. The time in game is the proof here. One minute 53 for Psycho. VA, one minute 33. Whole 20 second advantage there at the end. Here are Psycho Esports' stats triple after triple. What a scoreboard. What a scoreboard indeed. All the three stars, all the great attacks they could have done. The time was not on their side in the end. Ghost a little bit too slow, unfortunately, but on the other side as well, a lot of quick attacks. Leo and Max just pushing the stats of their team with their quick attacks. And this means they're going to win based on the average time. Yeah, Max had a really quick attack in there as well. One minute 12 at that point. Didn't really make too much of a difference. The average was much lower on the opponent's side. But welcome back, Carbon. What did you think about that? You were not strong enough to jinx that <laughs> one and take that perfect war away from Itsu. I knew it wasn't gonna. I knew it was gonna be a perfect war, and because I could, I could sense it. Right? It was a perfect, perfect coming, and finally, we had to get at least one of them today. Right? We finally got it out of the way, and Itsu, you finally can check off your perfect, perfect war. You finally were able to witness one as you were casting. Yeah. I mean, what what a pleasure it was. <laughs> nice to finally catch one of those. Uh, I found a unicorn to say, but overall, great attacks from both sides. And I think, yeah, with the with the time being under like being under pressure so early on um, with VA esports, especially the first attacks being so quick. I think that was then the decided factor for the pressure on the other team. And both teams kind of were pushing back and forth with the last attacks being super close. But in the end, 50-50 score was somehow perfect on this one. Yeah, I mean, being in the lower bracket was almost a wake up call for both of these teams because they had had previous fails from not just today, but also in the previous stages of this tournament. And they just shine right through the stats and they were like, look, we're going to bring us the best. We both don't want to go home. And unfortunately, we did have to say goodbye to one of them. But yeah, they did well. They really, really tried at the very end there. And we have one more match here today, which again, we will have to say goodbye to one more team because we either will either lose VM Legacy or Imperium Titans. One of those two teams is going home after this final match, which is match number eight here today, believe it or not, as we will then have all the rest of the matches tomorrow. So you don't want to miss tomorrow as well, as that is when we'll be crowning the champions of the world's warm-up where they're competing for a first place prize of $10,000, $30,000 overall for the whole tournament. And again... Tons of Root Riders will probably be seeing that as well tomorrow because they're going to be really fighting for a time. I think we may see uh, one to two more Perfect Wars, maybe. I'm getting a sense for it. Too. Yeah, are, are you smelling that in the <laughs> in the air already that we might see some more? So what are you smelling for the next match? Mm, for VM Legacy, definitely Synthy is going to come in with Giant Arrow. I, I, I have a sense for that, right? Giant Arrow for Synthy. Hogs, maybe, you know, some different, not the Root Riders from Synthy. Uh, maybe he's going to bring like 65 Hogs and has to get like a 60 second triple. Uh, that's, that's my guess. That's my guess. Do you have any uh, predictions, Coco? I mean, I do love watching Synthe use the Giant Arrow. It is mm -hmm. always a show and it's always. My jaw is always dropped whenever I watch him. It's very impressive, but it takes a lot of setup. So depending on what yeah. the opponents do, I think will be the decider of what Synthe might bring. Synthe is known for trying some fun things and doing some crazy attacks, but I think he might be a little bit limited depending on what is needed from his performance, though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. it's You never know. The giant arrow could be really good at cleanup, or, you know, if you try to drop it, usually when I use the giant arrow... The best way to use it is from the corner. It's the easiest to be able to line up a shot. You come from a side of a base. Sometimes you don't know exactly where the arrow may kind of veer off to. And if you miss an arrow, the attack really goes sideways if you're planning to take out some core defenses, for sure. It's yeah, I, I know that you're a huge fan of the arrow. I mean, <laughs> I I'm, am, yes. like, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the set where I'm saying like, okay, I don't know rework it or do some crazy 
buffs or I'd like something, but I, I just I'm I'm not sure. I'm not the biggest fan. I don't really have seen that great See, value of that equipment the, so far. This is the reason why if I always have the arrow for one reason only is in the back of my mind, I'm always like there might be a situation where I need to clean up and I need to pop the ability for the final building. And then I know I have the arrow. I just know. I just know if I don't run the arrow, that situation will come up where I don't have it. And then I time fail and I lose uh, a war or something happens. And so I'm waiting for that until that happens. You know, that's that's the kind of situation where I see. Or even, I mean, it's a you run with the fireball. There could be a situation where maybe you don't end up using the warden ability and you save it and then you need a warden ability fireball to clean up somewhere at the end of the base to fly all the way across uh, that that would be really cool to ever to ever see if that's possible i mean yeah. i can't just imagine like carofin <laughs> sitting there like playing flash for like non-stop <laughs> and like like 200 years later he's still sitting there waiting for the perfect moment for his, for his giant arrow like uh, there at this part we have town hall level 1900 uh, whatever <laughs> And he's still waiting with the, with the, hey, with you the know? equipment uh, getting its perfect moment. Uh. But talking about the perfect moment, we have the next attack live for our last match of the day. Emporium Titans versus VM Legacy. And this one is for the tournament lives. So whoever is going to make it is going to stay in this door, break it. And whoever is going to lose it is out of this competition. Yep, lots of pressure here as the E-Dragons are looking to fly their way through. Town Hall goes down with these. Also luring out and pulling the Tornado Trap, which is really useful so the E-Dragons don't get spun around. But that Monolith is doing work onto some of these E-Dragons as the Sweeper continuously tries to just push them back. As these heroes are going to loop their way around from the far left side and trying to make their way and ending towards the Monolith. Molith indeed can be a big problem on that back end. Eagle at least already went down, but there's quite a few defenses which are still left standing with the clan castle now getting lured out as well. And mm. being stuck on that Royal Champion, he cannot reach that second layer, which means the cannon, the expos are staying alive for now. Yeah, at least the RC does go invisible, but the Ice Comb is sitting there and freezes up the Royal Champion. Single locks onto the RC. RC burns ability, gonna have to get frozen again as the rc needs to hopefully keep that spear fox alive no she is not going to be able to go invisible anymore and she dies but the ricochet cannon does go down queen is gone and this king won't be able to finish this one off as there is just too much left and we got ourselves Cynthia with a defense here this match starting early with the defense you did not smell the perfect perfect this time around and your nose was correct nope. Yeah. And this means we have VM Legacy with a huge advantage and something which I always <laughs> appreciate when one of those teams, uh, well, is not getting a three star early on because this could give us some more variety with the attacks, like so some non root rider attacks over the process of this match. This means Cynthia can now use his arrow to start an attack. That's what it means, right? It, if he wants to go with an, or one of his regular attacks, he doesn't have to kind of spam for time. This now brings back the player's kind of, not necessarily creativity, but more of their armies of choice that they prefer to use uh, in these types of wars. They're kind of just forced to use the Root Riders. And if they are kind of really stubborn of not wanting to use the Root Riders, their clanmates, teammates in these competitive environments are going to really be forcing it upon them because there's no really other attack that's at that speed to give your team the best chance of winning. So in this case, when it's a fail to start a match, now you can start to bring different attacks where time is not going to play a role. Yeah, that's for sure the freedom which those players have now. Well, on the other side, of course, um, it's not about safe three stars. That's like the main mm -hmm. thing. Time is off the table. And the question though is, or like more the, I think, speculation, um that the legacy won't change their strategy for the first attack because i mean Probably, yeah. they have barely any time to react to this first defense and then yeah. we'll maybe see with a third maybe with a fourth attack or something that the strategies might change later on and they're going more for the controlled approaches yeah. lalo you have already talked about the mass hawk rider approach from Cynthia, but this all already counts on for both sides going for the safer approaches yeah. and trying to then hopefully 
get out of three stars. So I know when you were competing in tournaments, Itsu, as a pro player, you would always attack at the end of the match. So that means you would be attacking number five in the clutch moment, kind of all coming down to your attack. But when you were planning, did you watch the enemies attack your bases or were you just more in planning mode and helping your teammates plan? What was, is, did, did the enemies and attacking your bases affect you? Um, you typically have like maybe one player or someone watching the other team attack you. Uh, a lot of times it's more distracting, I guess, of watching the other team's attacks. And you really want to make sure that your own plan and the plan of your teammates are, are well, perfectly planned and calculated and everything. So, yeah, a lot of times you don't watch the, the attacks of the other team uh, over sense. one of those pro matches. Well. We're watching Fluxy here as he is now moving on through with the overgrowth towards the left. And the Queen should be able to grab this Town Hall as the Root Riders and Valks coming across through the core and dropping a Skeleton Spell. Trying to have it there so the Monolith, when it comes back active after the overgrowth, starts to get distracted on it. Yeah, this is getting back to life. The Hogs are trying their best to support that Royal Champion. Going... Crazy at those defenses. The back end is still not looking too dangerous, to be honest, especially with having so many heroes alive. The Hawks are there as well. And there's always the crazy thing about those Hawks, the Hawk Runner Puppet of the Royal Champion. It can look so, just so, so OP if there are no traps. But if you run into spring traps or giant bombs or a bomb tower, this equipment kind of looks completely useless. On this one, the Hawk Rider stayed alive, they were able to deal out of the damage necessary, and Flaxy claims the first 3 star for the M Legacy. And now, at this point, it's going to be the interesting story of teams switching their approach or staying with the Root Riders. Yeah, and Fluxy getting a 1 minute 27 second triple, which these players may want to hit about a minute 30 in their attacks, typically when they do them. But great job coming in with Root Rise and Overgrowth, but this time the Overgrowth was not used on the Town Hall, which when it was, has caused some one stars and fails from some pro players in these matches. And yes, we have seen an incredible amount of Root Riders and Valkyrie attacks, We've also seen a lot of one stars as well. So kind of you're getting both because the pro players have to be very quick. It changes their plans. But of course, now with a fail, they're going to potentially think about different armies and different strategies to bring if they want to kind of be a more reliable three star for what they're kind of used to maybe if they're doing in Legends League. But with this being an elimination match, you got to focus on getting those three stars so you don't get eliminated here. Yeah, so getting those three stars in on the same side, though, hoping for a defense for Emporium Titans because so far they have already the one fail. This means they need to now three star non stop. We have the next Mads Root Rider attack. They did not change up their plan and they're going in with this approach versus this base. We have no overgrowth spell. Instead, it's a couple of skeleton spells as a support and they're going in right in the flank, making sure that they're getting this triple. Yeah, with the troops already down, grant the scouts and spell out in front to help provide the distractions so those defenses don't necessarily get locked up right away onto the root riders. As a super dragon is coming out of the defensive clan castle, as a freeze is just connecting with a scatter shot at the moment. The tunnel is not active, so it will also stop the poison spell from coming back as quick as it continues through towards the town hall as the warden ability has already been activated. That's right, the tunnel now getting activated as well, or as it's about to get activated, there's a nice freeze. The trainer trap rotating everything away from the tunnel, but as well into the tunnel explosion again. But the backhand on this one does not look as stacked. I feel like as long as the the, the defense are not as stacked, it's not as big of a, of a threat um, to the backhand. At the same time, the troops are slowly dying out. We have still the Royal Champ ability. But depending on whatever equipment he's running, it feels like with the freeze, he should be fine. Yeah, that freeze spell can help get so much value of stopping these defenses. But he's also got the giant gauntlet of this king to move on through. There you go. Queen's continuing. She's on a wall, but the RC absolutely shreds right through that archer tower. Going to get stole up on the wizard tower. So time will slow him down, but it will still be a three star here for NYU of Emporium Titans. Giving them their... First three star of this match, putting them to five stars total. 
but they do have that one fail of an 86%. That's right. The defense is on the side of VM Legacy, but they're up next. They have to get their next attack in and have to make sure that they're, at this point, three-starring. Time won't be the deciding factor, but the question now is if they're going to switch things up or if they're staying with the Root Riders, because I feel like, yes, time is important, but Root Riders are not only getting picked because of the time. I mean, that's not how it is. They're not like yeah. getting played only because they're quick, but as well because how powerful they are and how consistent they can get those three stars for the top teams. Mm -hmm. And if we saw that Root Riders and Valkyries were not as consistent with three starring, but they were very fast possibility, then we would see Root Riders, Valkyries more in situations where it was all tied up and you had to be very quick to get a three star and in order for you to get a big advantage to try to win. But no, we're seeing it all the time because, like you mentioned, the strength of the Root Riders and how they have the ability to just move on through any walls with ease. But one thing to note is if you do have uh, one Root Rider only and not multiple, and you drop a Rage and it goes through the wall too quickly, the wall won't open because the Root Rider needs to kind of get through the wall a little bit slower. So maybe... If any of you watching at home are like, you know what, I've used one Root Rider and I never opened up the wall. Well, that could be a reason is because you've raged it up and it went too quickly. If you have multiple Root Riders, they'll both do the same, the damage and then it'll open up pretty quickly. So that's why if you bring a lot of them like this, these walls stand no chance. Yeah, as far as I know, like the rage effect just doesn't work on the destroying part of the walls of the Root Rider. And this mm -hmm. is why the rage can just beat through the wall too quick without mm -hmm. making sure that it's breaking so i guess that's yeah. uh why this interaction is there but yeah. well we have not happened that that often because i yeah. feel like a lot of people just use that many root riders that the wall always guaranteed is getting yeah. opened up yeah it's just something to note if you only bring a few so that that's why you don't want you want to be careful with your attacks it's the small details that will play a role and a lot of times these players also they're using their king to not, they're using as least amount of funneling troops as possible if they're trying to get in certain compartments. But in this meta, it's really just about getting all your troops down all together, almost on the same tile, to be honest, and where it's the king, the queen, root riders, and warden. And then that siege barracks, of course, now that you get an upgraded level, you get a one extra P.E.K.K.A. They're really using that because you can help speed it up and help clean up the outside buildings. Yeah, I feel like the Siege Barracks buff with the latest level was quite massive. That's why we yeah. see the Siege Barracks so much, or the Siege Machine that much compared to others. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like even without the Root Rides, we would see that Siege Machine a lot. I think it's really, really strong currently with having two P.E.K.K.A. I know P.E.K.K.A. not the strongest troops right now, but mm -hmm. pretty much getting a P.E.K.K.A. for free just with the latest upgrade opportunity for that Siege mm -hmm. Machine, that's a huge deal and makes this Siege Machine just so much stronger and, well... That's why I think we're going to see it in future attacks more, but not with air attacks. With air, we see the blimp a lot of times, and that's exactly what Ariam is bringing with the Super Dragons on this one. With the Seeking Shield on the Royal Champion, Ariam is looking to bounce back from his original attack earlier, which he got a one star. And unfortunately, yeah, it did cost them the match and they got sent down to the lower bracket because of it. If he didn't one star, if he tripled, then they would have gotten a perfect war and they would have won their match. And now they're gonna look to see if he can push these super dragons through the core as the balloons have made it to the town hall. They do secure the, the town hall here, and it, but do not grab that monolith due to the tornado trap. Yeah, Tornado Trap did not have the biggest impact at the end with the Monolith, though. Staying up, a great freeze catching that Inferno Tower and the Monolith to make sure that there is no more damage on his troops. The Super Dragons are just pushing through this core and Super Dragons are just so insanely powerful. And we can clearly see that in this attack right now. The Owl is taking even another Black Mount, which is perfect for him. With his Queen, though, going down kind of early, I guess. Um, well, we got an RC ability. Two, oh no, we have one more Super Dragon to the top side. Uh, so three total still left, but the one up top is very low health. As this RC ability is looking to try to get through this multi-arch tower, kind of one of the biggest threats remaining. There's the uh, shield that gets some value. 
but no hay. So this RC is trying to get through the multi arch tower with the warden trying to help protect her a little bit. But these super dragons, there's only one left, but it's got not too much health and just the wizard tower and builder hut that could take it down. Now it really depends on traps, I guess. If there's any black mines, this could end up being really bad. Uh -oh. But with having the Phoenix, the Warden, yeah. and the Super Dragon alive, I think he should be alright, even with one black mine. The Super Dragon tanking and no black mine so far, and this means it should be a three star. It's a slow one, but it doesn't matter. As long as the yeah. Legacy is three star with their attacks, they're good to go. Three stars is what they're looking for here at the end of the day, and Arium gets it well done with the super dragons bouncing back from a one star and delivering the triple here keeping their advantage as long as they get above an 86 percent two star then they will still have the lead no matter what because that is what imperium titans got with their very first attack and they failed to get that triple there so they've got a one star lead at the moment which they're looking good is looking good for sure for them, especially yeah. now with both teams having the same amount of attacks in, leading in stars. That's a solid start into the match because, let's face it, there's still plenty of attacks to do. And we have seen yeah. already matches earlier which were shifted back and forth because there are some defenses happening, especially mm -hmm. um, surprisingly when sometimes even the pressure is off, we still saw some fails, which uh, can happen on this one as well. Yeah, you never know. One small mistake can cost you the match. As we get the next attack that's going to come in from Imperium, Imperium Titans, probably going to be the Root Riders and Valkyries here. It's been the overwhelming attack, the strategy that we've been seeing here today. And it's probably going to be the same thing that we're going to be seeing from many teams tomorrow as we're getting closer and closer to crowning a champion tomorrow here in the world's warm-ups getting for an epic year at Tunnel 16 and Clash of Clans Esports. Cannot wait to see what this next, well, this next next movie riders. I, I, I'm pretty confident, pretty confident it's going to be what we're going to see next. We've seen the Knee Dragon attack, which I think is what failed, then Root Riders and Valks, and indeed it is. But no overgrowth that we've been seeing a couple times with the Skeleton Spell to start off initially here. Off to the far right side as the king might look to go grab the town hall since there are no walls kind of in front of it to kind of make it a little difficult to get the king to path to the town hall right away. Yeah, and I think Mazira is just like saying, well, guys, I have tried Lalo earlier. It has not worked. I'm <laughs> back to the root riders. I would just get that three star hopefully for my team. He's going for the town hall. Town is already down, which is a huge thing. And now the Root Riders are in as well. He is doing this kind of like back to back. Um, kind of as like normally you would do. Instead of doing everything at the same time. So he's really making sure that the funnel is created for his Root Riders. And then start with them. Because time is less likely being a factor on this one. And instead going for the safer approach. For giving his king time. Giving his king the option of funneling the Root Riders. Because so far the pathing for them is looking perfect. Yeah, making his way towards the Eagle Artillery. Those P.E.K.K.A.s got fantastic value. Moving around from that Siege Barracks as the Warden ability now protects so much in this core as he's pathing through the Eagle, gonna go through the single target Infernos, has a Rage and two Freezes still left as a Poison gets launched as the Queen cleared that enemy Super Dragon super easily as the Queen technically could go and grab the Monolith as she walks there and she does just that. She does that in, uh, indeed, especially with the frozen arrow. That's no problem whatsoever. The troops are just pushing through, and the plan of this one was just perfect. Really, really great base identification. Seeing that there is the weakness of this tunnel being somewhat exposed, and then going for that king dive, getting that tunnel out, and this is not even close. Getting that three star, and this means Emporium Titan doing right now everything they can possibly do to stay close to the M Legacy because they're up now next and they have to, well, do one thing and that's three-starring. Got to keep three-starring and that's all they can do from their end and hope and cross their fingers that some mistake comes in from VM Legacy to have a chance to try to win this match in the lower bracket. But we still have attacks that are going to come in from Ninja, from Synthi, and from Darkstar of VM Legacy. And they are all such good players. And I know for Cynthia, I'm 
probably maybe not going to see Velks because he usually, or Velks and Root Riders, he tends to bring something different. Maybe some hogs, maybe a lot of hogs paired in with a giant arrow. So I'm definitely, that is for sure one of the attacks that I am most excited to see what he's going to bring. Some maybe more hogs even. Um, especially I'm looking forward to it because I think so far he's kind of hold back with his mass hog rider attacks because he has to start the second stage the hog rider so early i think yeah. something he was really famous for on turn 15 and on the previous town level were like how he was able to utilize the flame flinger with the lightning combination stuff like that mm -hmm. setting that thing up but i feel like the flame flinger kind of disappeared at least in the pro scene because it takes time it's kind of like a slow siege machine it gets a lot of value don't get me wrong but the Siege Barracks is just so much quicker and you get the value out of it just much faster. Yeah, that Siege Barracks with those two free P.E.K.K.A.s is just so valuable and it's hard to pass up, especially when you get those free troops to be able to not only help clear up buildings, but if they ever move into the defensive range, they're tanking for other troops that are in your main army potentially. And it's just very smart to be taking that. Unless for if you want to be taking a uh, Flame Flinger, it is pretty slow. That's the one thing is time is the issue with the Flame Flinger. Uh, with the Log Launcher, you could use an Overgrowth spell and get a little Overgrowth trick to try to get out logs to hit a defense. But again, it's usually not worth it when you got attacks some with like this as Ninja's coming in with a Queen Charge, it looks like. Gonna move into Queen Charge Root Riders and no Valks in sight. Yeah, no bakeries. Instead, going, I guess, the classic option when it comes down to the um, legend style of approaching those box bases is just taking the king for the town hall, which we have just seen as well from Empor Emporium Titans. But this time, it is combined with the queen charge and not just with the mad root riders. The flame finger is getting utilized as well because. As we have said earlier, it's not getting used that much anymore, so people are not really defending it, and this is why he's been able to take advantage of that um, top compartment, taking that out completely. Yeah, with that Flame Flinger value, including a multi Inferno Tower, fantastic. As he drops a Skeleton Spell to distract the Ricochet Cannon as the Queen continues her charge from the bottom side, and she'll be able to lure out this clan castle and deal with the CC as Root Riders can potentially come in from the right side to go and grab that Eagle for it fast. But look at this, Root Riders, or not Root Riders, the Rocket Loons go straight to this Queen, which could be a big problem, especially if you're not looking. You can lose a Queen through with a Frozen Arrow. But Root Riders are down with the Warden, making their way to that Eagle. Yeah, but that Queen just so far looks amazing. I mean, just the one last wall break, getting his Queen access to the core really nicely done he has to be careful now because of a lot of damage and a single phone tower so a nice use of that invisibility spell queen is chasing the no no queen okay queen is coming back queen is back she ignored the skeletons good job queen well done as the defensive rage will go off here as he gets closer to that final compartment does have the royal champ ability Flame Flinger will open up with as the Root Riders are coming through. There's a freeze, but the Defensive Rage does get activated with that Queen ability as Rocket Loon. Yeti's coming out of the Flame Flinger. RC is hasted up, moving her way on through, and Ninja is going to be getting that three star here for VM Legacy, putting them three for three with nine stars overall. That's exactly what they have to go for. Going for the safer options. Ninch felt really safe with his Queen Charge approach. Had a good idea of what the weakness of this base might look like with this plan. And it's going to be the three star indeed. With the one defense, that's exactly what they're looking for. Keep pressuring Emporium Titans. And they have indeed out of the pressure on them. Because they somehow need to turn this around with the defense. And keep three starring on their own. Yep, got to keep those three stars coming in. And I really love the wall breakers, you know, the identification to be able to bust through the walls from the outside all the way through the core to allow that queen to continue her charge. And he was able to know how far the wall breakers were able to go in. Perfectly opens it so she could step in for the monolith and continue her way through. And he just broke his way right with the king to the town hall. And it's just the town hall, if you can... Take the town hall with your king and other buildings around it, including defenses. That's a lot of value. That's a lot of value for sure. And I feel 
kind of happy that we're seeing at least some Queen Charters. As I always have to say, I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying watching them and, and, and seeing how the pros are controlling their, their troops, especially war breaks. I feel like war breaks are sometimes very complicated to understand of what exact war they're targeting and why. Mm -hmm. And and seeing someone like Ninja showcasing what the power is looking like is really nice to see. But we see the next attack. This one is going to be, again, the Root Adder Valkyrie combination. But this one is actually bringing a couple of witches to have a couple of more power points. I'm not really sure. Yeah, with the point, with the siege barracks and this pack us off to start, and some witches actually came into the bottom side. As we're going to see the root riders moving on through across towards that town hall with an invisibility spell near it, and we've got earthquakes and the lightning spells coming in after the fact. As root riders, usually we tend to see the lightnings go first you don't mess up the attack but he goes after because the hat can help with time but that's not going to matter necessarily you have to focus on first the three stars in this match here as skeleton spells coming down popping that warden ability to really protect those root riders pathing the way finally now towards the town hall the queen is going the wrong direction so we she won't be able to reach that inferno tower in the core of the base and that might be a problem for her. She can reach the cannon, but not more. She has to go for a wall now. That's why he's popping the ability. There's actually two black mines to get rid of two of those cheaters right away. And the root riders right now are struggling quite a bit in that town of poison. Yeah, but the queen was able to secure the single target inferno. RC is moving through the defensive king, and that king ability is going to be clutching up that compartment, allowing this royal champion to try to continue her way through that scatter shots are all going to be about the RC ability. Can he get through the enemy RC here as the Queen does die off? But we have a multi arch tower. We have a ground expo. We have the enemy RC as so much is going to hurt as this world champion is hasted up trying to continue her way. But unfortunately, she won't go invisible anymore as the Spirit Fox has died. And that is looking like another defense for VM Legacy. That's already their second defense in this match. And they're looking like that they are staying strong in this lower bracket. Remember, this match is deciding about the future of those two teams for this tournament. Because the loser or is dropping out of this tournament while the winner is staying in the lower bracket. Yep, looking like VM Legacy is going to try to coast their way through. And if they get a two-star, they'll put them still a star ahead to 11, as we still have Dark Star and Synthi still to come in for VM Legacy, as this is an elimination match. So if you lose, you are out of the competition. You're going to have to try to win, because the winner of this match, if I'm not mistaken, are they taking a Na'Vi? Am I, am I am think so, yes. No, yeah. wait. They're in the bottom part of the bracket, I think. So. Mm -hmm. Or is it early attacks? It's one of them. We'll take early Let's attacks. See. Let's have a quick look. Oh, Thank you, production. Okay, okay. It's early attacks instead. So we have Navi versus VA Esports tomorrow, and early attacks is going to face the winner. Right now, it's looking like VM Legacy tomorrow as well in the lower bracket. But either way, that's going to be some insane matches. But for now, we're still in the match, so... Anything can still happen because we have seen already one source earlier today. So I feel as long as VM Legacy is not going to go with the uh, well overgrowth spell option of Matt's Root Riders, I think they're looking pretty good. And I hope that they can push all the way through so they can get this victory and face yeah. early attacks then tomorrow. Yeah, that's still the early attack. Versus either, well, VM Legacy is likely going to probably win this match up here. Uh, we'll put some more attacks, so they just have to get tripled. But Navi versus VA Esports, that's going to be a fantastic match. Five versus Chronic. Oh boy, it's, it's going to be really good. It is going to be really good for sure with those matches up tomorrow to then crown the champion for this World's Warm Up Tournament, the first big tournament in this town of 16 meta but we now have dark star and he's back to lalo and he's going with the skelly donut i really hope that we have and he has some great success with this because i feel like he likes those more strategic approaches more strategic attacks and seeing him play mates root riders always feels wrong so i'm really happy that he's back with this approach 
Yeah, as the hog puppets are on the royal achievement, Queen's gonna move her way through with that Lalo, and he's got a battle drill selected here with three freezes and as the King Billy does go off towards the Eagle Artillery, he's gonna have to make his way all the way towards this town hall here, which means if Darkstar is attacking now, that means Cynthia is gonna be closing off this match. Yes, hopefully with your uh, giant arrow <laughs> trick to rule the world and see what he can do there. But so far for Darkstar, things are looking great. He has another wall break to push even further into the base and get the queen access to the multi-inferno tower. There we go. And then the question is, can the queen go through that wall and take actually the multi-inferno tower out as well? Maybe she can just trigger the poison tower. That would be already great success as well. That would be a lot of value as the battle drill is now down here as he's going to make his way slowly off to the right as Queen Ability does go off, pulls the poison spell, and the Royal Champion is going to try to follow right behind it because the battle drill, remember, it will be stunning defenses along his way, basically kind of acting like a diggy. Ooh, the Queen walking around there. Well, that Queen is actually smart because she can reach now the multi Fern Tower and everything going around that uh, corner. My queen would have went for that wall, 100%. And because there's one non-max wall, I know my queen would have chosen the max walls. But the Lalo is in, the warning ability is great, there's no chain trap behind the town hall, and this attack is looking amazing. Yeah, absolutely crushing his way right on through. And look at how many balloons he still has left over and swagging the freezes as well does not need them and dark star absolutely destroying this base right here what an attack beautiful job yeah really nice job and that's what i like to see from him those more strategic approaches with the skeleton donut than the hero dive and he makes things look easy and this means it's another three star for vm legacy they're playing it safe right now not going for time and they have a two star lead going to the last rotation of attacks yeah it's brilliant job there it's coming down to synthy who just needs to get a one star to at least tie it if emporium titans does get a triple and two star no matter what will win it to put them to 14 stars so they're looking to just to coast their way through this match but they still will have a gauntlet to have to fight through of early attacks and then potentially because navi's also down in the lower bracket but navi still has to fight their way through va esports and that's gonna be an intense matchup plus whoever loses out of tribe gaming and sacronic will get down there so there's gonna be so many amazing matches to come and i'm assuming there will also see some perfect wars as well granted one mess up one fail that could cost you that is for sure the case. And we have another Elected Dragon attack for Emporium Titans. We have some Elected Dragons on the top side. We have the heroes on the far right. And the Elected Dragons are getting pushed right into that far side. He has playing with the Slammer. So taking all of the risk. Uh, which is not really there anymore to be honest. Because they just have to 3 star and hope for a miracle. And otherwise it's over anyways. Yeah, as the tunnel is on the complete opposite side, the goal of these E-Dragons really is not to make it all the way across to the town hall, but really to just gut the core of this base and take it down so that your heroes can then wrap all the way around and get the value. But I'm hearing the drops of some lightning spells from the death of these E-Dragons, which means that they're dying one at a time here and not getting that value. And we're still having the clan castle up, which is not good. You definitely want those E-Dragons to make their way and clear that clan castle. But it does go down from the Super Dragon, so that's okay. But the Monolith stays up with an invisibility spell near the town hall. This could be some really annoying back end. He's sending out the Royal Champion. But take a look at that double skeleton trap as he's deploying the Royal Champion into all of the damage. And the fox already took a lot of damage, I think, as well. Yes, the fox is having barely any hit points left. And it's such a crucial Ooh. patch to have alive. Warden is taking damage as well. No wall breaks for the troops to get into the tower compartment. Carbon, I think this is not looking the best. I wonder if he forgot a wall breaker, thinking that his heroes are going to run all the way around. The invisibility spell does go off, has the queen ability. King is now going to become a wall breaker and try to bust through. And he's able to do it. 
Queen's got her ability. The Warden's trying his best to help grab the Ground Expo. Queen's ability will go off very soon here. Healers are here. Town Hall is going down. Warden does not grab the Invisibility Spell Tower, but he is coming back to life with the Phoenix. The Queen steps into the poison, but he gets the three-star just with enough left here and puts them to 13 stars. But Cynthia, all he needs is a two-star for the victory. And now we're getting a hype for some hog riders, for some bacon, <laughs> or hopefully not much bacon, yes. I guess, for Cynthia to succeed with his next attack. Why well, he's going something something fancy with the giant arrow, or I guess he's always using the giant arrow. It doesn't really matter if he's like trying to set it up. He's just mm -hmm. like using it as a as a default equipment, I guess. And uh, we will wait for how he's utilizing utilizing that equipment and his hog riders. Yeah, we'll see how he does it because he loves those hogs. And what if he brings like what's the max amount of hogs you can bring? You know, is it like in the seventies now? I think it's like crazy, and he just. What is it? Did you drop all of them? I can only imagine bringing that amount of hogs and then some overgrowths and just having hogs just run their way around the base or something, you know? But, uh, hey, you just need the two stars so you can bring really almost anything he wants to secure the victory. Yeah, I think he normally has around like 40 hog riders in his army uh, camp when he has like funnel, clean up, yeah. troops to set his, his heroes up and everything. I think that's the normal combination. But you can always add up the Hog Riders from the Roy Champion equipment if you want to, which that's would be true. another 13 Hog Riders, right? So wow. you can add them up really quickly and it's getting a lot of Hog Riders in there, uh, especially <laughs> then for Cynthia to have a lot of fun. So let's hope that Man, we have some, some fun attack ahead of us. If you add a clone spell to the mix, you're going to be hitting 100 Hogs. <laughs> I didn't even think that, yeah. You could hit 100 Hogs in the... Okay, here we go. I need to see this. I need, I need to just do this now in a friendly challenge. A hundred hogs hitting a town hall 16. I didn't even think about this. If you have a maxed out. So was it 13 hogs that spawn with the RC ability when it's maxed? Yes, should be. Oh, wow. Okay. That's that's giving me some ideas for sure. <laughs> All right. Now I'm excited. What is Sydney going to do? And it's okay. It's 30 hogs. But is it going to be a giant arrow? We got a skelly donut, what it looks like to be. And no, no giant arrow for the queen here. What? What is happening? <laughs> what? Where, where did that giant arrow go? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm confused. But yeah, he's starting with a skitty donut. He has some rocket loons in his army capacity as well, which I'm wondering how he's going to use that. Maybe to take down the martyrs or something. That could be an option. But the clan castle and that monolith is down. He even triggers one of those poison towers early on. Yeah, with that poison spell being triggered there, the clan castle is gone. Don't have to worry about that at all, which is probably most likely going to be ice golems in, in there anyways. As four headers are going to join in as a jump spell to help get the king and queen more towards the core as the queen is placed to the top side. As you can then kind of path the queen to the right, break through that wall, and he's only got one wall breaker here, so... Is it, where is he gonna? Is he gonna just jump the queen on the outside and then wall break the king? It? Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Okay, Cynthia has some plans here. <laughs> I'm loving it. Give this man always some freedom to attack with whatever he wants to. That king for the town hall is looking really good as well to take down the town hall without any problems. The flame flinger having some insane value right there. The queen as well charging further into that compartment. And with the queen ability, he should be good to go to get even more value. Yeah, with that frozen arrow on the queen, slowing these defenses down, she's going to take this jump, and the ability's going to go off right about now. Perfect. Scatter shot has been removed. Ground Expo from the Rocket Loons. Tesla working through the single, and the poison getting launched as well as here comes the hogs and Warden Eternal Tome protecting them as they're moving right on through. Yeah, moving through indeed, the warden is trying to keep up with them because they're just so quick. But it seems like there is no, I mean, they, they're just going through this like it's, okay, never mind. There's now some giant bombs and everything, and they're going down somewhat quick. But he has more hog riders to reinforce. He has seven hog riders not deployed yet. And it's going to be indeed another three star for VM Legacy. They're going with the perfect result. And I feel like some of those teams are just waking up as soon as they're <laughs> dropping 
to the lower ah. bracket. And Cynthia getting that three star in with the Swag Hawks and Swag Rocket Loons. Well done to you, Cynthia. Getting it done. Perfect war. 15 stars. VM Legacy are keeping their hopes alive. And they will be moving on in the lower bracket, who they will now face early attacks. And what a match they had here. And they're going to have to try to continue this momentum through into the lower bracket. Yeah, they have to really make sure that they're staying on form like that because they are facing tomorrow early attacks and that won't be an easy match whatsoever. But huge shout out to Emporium Titans. They have done amazing over this competition, making it all the way into the top eight. But they found their match in VM Legacy and their really outstanding performance with getting a 15-star match. Absolutely. Great job. I mean, Ariam coming in from a one star in the previous match and then getting a triple here. Great bounce back for them. And they're keeping their hopes alive now in the lower bracket. Welcome back here, Coco. What was your thoughts on now VM Legacy now getting a perfect war and keep it and now advancing in the lower bracket? I mean, we said it before. Some of these teams are just doing so good in that lower bracket. And it's like, oh, if only they'd done that. Earlier on, they wouldn't be in that stage that they are now because that's just one chance less. Like, they, they don't have a lot of room for error. That's it. One more loss, and then they go home. It yeah. was some really nice attacks in there. A Dark Star saving pretty much half of his Lalo for the next attack that we're going to watch tomorrow. So I can't wait to see what they bring for us tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait either. But let's go and bring up the bracket so we can update you on where we currently stand here, Itsu. Well, we have some incredible matches lined up for tomorrow because we will play this bracket till the end, till we crown a champion and all of that just tomorrow. Tribe Gaming versus Synchronic is going to be an incredible banger of a match. I mean, both teams having really good offense and defense scores. Navi and the Esports are going to be our lower bracket match, the same as early attacks meeting VM Legacy, which we have just seen winning the lower bracket already with 15 stars. So we can tell already by the scores that the scores are getting higher and higher as we get closer to the top teams of this competition. Yeah. I'm very looking forward to the Tribe Gaming versus Synchronic because I think those teams have the quickest attackers. Mm -hmm. So if they go perfect, that one might be a very interesting one to see how that they're going to spice it up and gain an edge over each other. Yeah, and the first match that we're going to be watching tomorrow is going to be in the lower bracket. So we're going to watch both lower bracket matches first tomorrow, and then we'll move our way back up to the upper bracket, which is going to be Tribe Gaming and Synchronic. So make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow as well. Same time that we started here today, so you can catch the rest of these matches so you don't miss who is crowned the champion and wins $10,000 for first place in the Clash of Clans World Warm-Up. So is there any uh, final words here as before we close the show here for you, Itsu? I mean, I just hope that we see, it sounds very really strange, but we see some fails early into the matches <laughs> that we then see some more freedom for the players to mm -hmm. pick their strategies and go more for a safer three stars with, yeah. I don't know, crazy attack strategies like the Mass Hog Rats, which we have just seen from Cynthia. I think that's what, what I personally hope for, even though I'm not really sure how likely that is with moving forward and further into the tournament with higher scores being more and more consistent, I guess. Yeah, I understand. I understand what he's trying to say. Early <laughs> fails means that they don't have to focus on getting those quick attacks done, which means they can be more comfortable and execute those really nicely done attacks. And I agree. I think it is nice when we see some really nicely broken down bases that succeed at the very end. Now, I hope you guys don't bring any more jinxing in, though, for tomorrow. I don't think I, my heart's got it in it to do some more <laughs> jinxing. <laughs> Uh, this is, I I guarantee I won't jinx tomorrow, right? And so there's no there's no way. That's that's how it works. But either way, it was ton of fun here today, and it's gonna get even better tomorrow. And these wars are gonna be so close. So make sure you guys got your calendars, alarm set for tomorrow at 12 UTC, so we don't miss more of the epic matches to come between between these top teams in the world trying to win the first Clash of Clans esports competitive match here at this year in 2024 for the Clash of Clans World Warm-Up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at 12 UTC. Till then,
flash on.